How's it going, everyone? Today we got a story time of the strangest Minecraft kid in class. This kid is beyond strange. You might be thinking that, no, 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 I know the strangest kid in class. I have the weirdest kid in my class. Now you got to understand that your stories are not on the level of the Minecraft kid. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and uh, yeah, let's just get into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Peter. So anyways, right, this story all happened one day when Peter's in class. Got up for school, you know, groggy morning, whatever, gets on the bus. Every single morning, Peter gets on the bus, and it's real early. His mom just can't drive him into school, and the bus kind of has to go on. It has to pick up a lot of people. And Peter's one of the first people that they pick up, so they just... It's, a, it's really early. He doesn't want to be dealing with any shenanigans, right? And let me just say that the Minecraft kid also rides the bus with Peter. Minecraft Kid is known as the Minecraft Kid because he has the same green creeper hoodie that he wears every single day. I swear to God, I've gotten so many stories about kids who wear the same stinky green creeper hoodie. Dude, like, if I was in 8th grade, I'd totally, or 5th grade or whatever, I'd totally rock that hoodie. But one thing you gotta know is, like, can't wear that thing every single day. No one's gonna think that you're Steve Jobs owning seven different pairs of, or Mark Zuckerberg owning seven different pairs of the exact same creeper hoodie. They're just gonna think that you don't wash it, because in reality, you probably just don't wash it. Yeah, so anyways, right, the subscriber gets on the bus and just sits down where he normally does. Bro's barely awake, doesn't want to be up at this point, which, I mean, I can totally understand. I, di I was normally driven into school by my mom because um, she worked really close. And, but there were a few days where, like, you know, mom couldn't do it, dad was busy, so I had to, to go on the bus. And, dude, it would be, like, an hour earlier than I'd normally have to get up. So I totally understand the pain of this. Anyways, right, so the subscriber gets on the bus, eyes are barely awake, Dude just, want to put, dude, dude just wants to put it in his headphones and call it a day. And that's when uh, he gets a surprise visit, visitor. So normally, the bus has, or the bus just normally has enough seats for everyone. And today is a normal day. And once again, it has enough seats for everyone. However, like, the, I, I don't know. There wasn't unassigned assigned seats, like, in the classroom. However, it was, like, kind of strange because, like, you know, the, the subscriber saw the Minecraft kid, who he kind of knew was this kind of, like, strange guy who would just kind of be there. I don't know how else to explain it. But, uh, yeah, the Minecraft kid just kept coming closer to him. He didn't really think much of it. He thought, okay, Minecraft kid's going to either sit in front of me, sit behind me, maybe even sit next to me. Um, but he didn't expect the Minecraft kid to do what he did, which was sit right next to him on the bus seat. Each bus seat had two seats and maybe sit across from him. No, sat right next to him. Yeah, so, I don't know, this is kind of weird, um, because first of all, they're not friends. Second of all, it's not like the bus is full. Look, if every other seat was full, this is totally normal. Look, I've done this, I've sat right next to people who are, you know, I don't even know them, just because the bus is full, plane is full, whatever, right? That's expected. However, this is a very open bus, like, it's a very empty bus. It's not like it's going to be full now or later on. It, it will always be empty, or it, there will be at least 70% of the seats are totally empty. There's no reason to sit right next to someone. It's almost like uh, for all the guys watching this, you go into a public bathroom, maybe in the airport, I don't know, ton of urinals, ton of urinals. There's one guy at one urinal, and you go right up next to him. That's weird. That's real weird. If someone does that to me, I'm like, all right, well, even if I'm mid-pee, I'm wrapping this up and leaving because, dude, you have so many urinals you could go to. It's a little tough when there's, like, five urinals and three of them are being used. It's like, where exactly do I go? It's like, that's a tough situation. But same deal. So the subscriber looks up at the Minecraft kit and it's like, uh, good morning. So yeah, sure enough, right, you know, the subscriber looks over at the Minecraft kid and is kind of just like, uh, okay, like, this is, this is kind of weird, but, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. And, uh, no, he doesn't even think that, bro. He's like, why is this kid sitting next to me? But here's the thing. Subscriber is too tired to deal with this. Like, it's just kind of like, he's just too tired to deal with this nonsense at this point, which I completely understand, honestly. And he's just like, you know what? It might be a 30-minute bus ride, but you know what? I'll just turn the other way, put on my earbuds, and then just kind of chill out for the next 30 minutes. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll go back to sleep. And uh, he thinks that this can be possible for a whole 30 seconds, because that's when he feels a tap on his shoulder. And, I mean, it is the Minecraft kid giving him a tap on his shoulder. So the subscriber looks over. He's like, uh, yo. Because he's tired, man. I don't think he, even if his like best friend was on the bus, I don't think he'd want to talk to him either. I don't think he wants to talk to anyone. So yeah, anyways, the Minecraft kid is just staring at the subscriber and just is <sighs> just like breathing in his face. And remember, the subscriber's like, I don't want to be up right now. I wish I was in bed. I wish I wasn't here. And since I am here, I wish I was alone. Even if this was my best friend in the entire world, I would not want to be talking to him. And I would make it very clear because we're best friends. I just want to put on my music. 
I just want to go to sleep. I just want to try and sleep on this bus because I was ripped out of bed before I wanted to and I'm forced to be here. And now I have to deal with this kid. I don't even know who he is. He could have sat anywhere in the bus. Every seat is open. He sat next to me. And the Minecraft kid is just looking at him blankly. <sighs> He's like, do you want to play a game? And, like, the subscriber's like, oh, no, dude, no. Yeah, so anyways, right, the subscriber's kind of just sitting there like, okay, well, I was really hoping I could just have sat on this bus and not really had to deal with anything, but it seems like that will not be the case. It seems like how things will be going will be I will have to play whatever game the Minecraft kid wants us to play. So, okay, sure, this is my fate. Might as well accept it. So he's like, uh, okay, what's the game? And the Minecraft kid's like, mm, guess how many times I've showered this month? And at this point, the subscriber's like, oh, oh, no, oh, no, no. The subscriber kind of just realized this was not about to go in a good direction. He kind of just realized that this was probably going to reveal some information that he does not want to know about the Minecraft kid. Just some stuff that probably would have been better off left unsaid, if you know what I mean. So, uh, yeah, sure enough, the subscriber's like, uh, I don't know, like, um, this month? S 14 times? I mean, that's, like, every other day. It's pretty standard number. And the Minecraft kid is like, heh <laughs> zero. And then the Minecraft kid lifts up both, lifts up his arm, right? So, like, lifts his arm straight up into the air. And then pushes his armpit into the subscriber's nose, right? Okay, so remember, you guys were probably thinking like, oh, Connor's being so mean, calling him the weirdest kid ever. Okay, are you guys starting to understand where I'm coming from? Like, a little bit at least? So the subscriber didn't see this coming. Like, this was an absolute sniper, like, headshot to him. He just did not see this stuff coming. So, uh, yeah, he's not able to, like, he, he was, like, mid-inhale. When the, subs when the Minecraft kid shoved his armpit up into the subscriber's nose. And remember, this kid wasn't lying. Or I, I guess we don't know, but the subscriber tells me, because he submitted this story via Instagram, you can do the same with your own stories. The subscriber tells me that uh, maybe this kid was lying. Maybe this kid actually did shower quite often. Uh, maybe. However, uh, it seemed like the kid was telling the truth, because at least it smelled like it. So yeah, uh, the subscriber, like, one minute ago was trying to go to sleep, peacefully sitting by himself, and the next minute later, well, he had an actual stinky armpit shoved into his nose, up his nostrils, mid-inhale. It's not like he saw this coming, so he's able to hold his breath. No, he was breathing in, man, which means he got the full Minecraft kid special up his nose. He got, he got a significant whiff up his nostrils on this one. And, uh, yeah, there was a, uh, it, it was not a great moment for the, my, for the subscriber. So the subscriber's like, oh! Right, so after the subscriber kind of recoils from the stink, he looks up at the Minecraft kid and is like, dude, why would you do that? He's like, me, And they just, like, goes back to, like, sitting there quietly. So, yeah, uh, the subscriber had a pretty tough start to his morning already. Remember, he wasn't trying to be there. He didn't want to be, like, it's just, like, it's not the place he wants to be at this point in his life. Like, it, well, I mean, that's a little extreme. He just wants to be back in bed is what I'm trying to say. So he's already off to a tough start. And then on top of it, this kind of weird, stinky kid comes over and shoves his armpit up his nose. Like, just, it's just like, how does this day get worse? Well, the Minecraft kid isn't done. Because remember, this is like a 30-minute bus ride. So the subscriber at first was thinking, okay, well... I mean, I can, I can make it through this bus ride, right? You know, sure, this kid weirdly sat next to me, but we'll just say nothing to each other and it'll be fine. But after the Minecraft kid did a stink attack, like, the subscriber was like, oh, man, like, I really don't know how... I don't know if I can do this, bro. Like, I seriously am not even sure. So, yeah, the Minecraft kid looks over at him again. And the subscriber is grimacing, because he's like, the last time this kid looked over at me, it ended pretty badly. So the Minecraft kid is like, hey... <laughs> and the subscriber's like, I really shouldn't answer this. Last time I've been answering these questions, I only get myself into trouble. I shouldn't be answering this. But yeah, um, you know, the subscriber's like, uh, hello. Anyways, right, so the Minecraft kid is just looking at him and is like, so I think I can be of service. And, uh, yeah, so, I don't know, the subscriber is pretty skeptical by <laughs> what he meant of, I think I can be of service. Like, I don't, I don't know, man, I can understand how it's a little sus. So, 
My, the subscriber is really like, okay, trying to be very reserved, trying to be very kind of like wary of what was to come. And so the subscriber is looking at the Minecraft kid and the Minecraft kid is like, so do you have a crush on any girls? And like is, is the subscriber maybe had a little small feeling for some people. Maybe, 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 maybe. I don't want to spill anyone's secrets. You already know how that is. But, you know, even if he did, in theory, not saying he does, but even if he did, wink, right? He's not going to tell the Minecraft kid. Because, I don't know, man, I, I just don't think I need the Minecraft kid as my wingman to be like, Hey, like, Jennifer, this guy over here, he smells just as good as me, and goes up and, like, Minecraft kid shoves his armpits in the girl's face. See? See how bad that could be, guys? See? Anyway, so the subscriber was just like, um... No, I'm really working on myself. Most BS line ever. If anyone says I'm breaking up with you to work on yourself, cap. Cap. Anyways, um, <laughs> so yeah, sure enough, the subscriber's like, uh, not really, man. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just vibing. And the Minecraft kid's like, mm, I don't believe you. <laughs> he says it just like that. And the subscriber's like, well, you should believe me. I, because I, I don't. And there was one other person on the bus who happened to be a girl. So I think you guys can already figure out what's about to happen. So the fact that there was one other person on the bus and she just happened to be a girl. And the thing is the subscriber almost realizes his fate right before because he kind of like, I, I don't know, he just has a gut feeling that something bad is going to happen. And so the Minecraft kid gets up out of his seat, like stand, like kneels on the, like the bench seat, whatever, uh, I'm being super stupid, I forgot what it's called, but basically kind of like kneels so he can like look above and, and shouts, because there's one girl on the bus sitting a couple rows ahead, hey, you, and the, the subscriber's like, no, dude, no, and so the, the girl kind of like turns around, because if someone shouts, hey, you, like you're probably gonna pay attention, right, and the Minecraft kid's like, my friend has a crush on you. And then sits back down. <laughs> and the subscriber's like, dude, why? Like, what? what? <laughs> the thing is, too, I bet the Minecraft kid had good intentions here. I genuinely believe the Minecraft kid was like, dude, I'm going to I'm going to waste this card off of you, bro. Don't even worry about it. Dude just actually ruined this guy's chance. Like, he doesn't even know who this girl is, but she now knows who he is, and it will never be, is all I'm trying to say. So at this point, the subscriber is absolutely mortified. He's just like, no way, no way, no way this kid just did that. And this is the Minecraft kid's like, teehee, like, aren't you, like, you guys are now gonna start dating. And the subscriber's like, who are you? Did you spawn in from the depths of hell? I don't think he said that, but that's what he was thinking. And, uh, so the, the Minecraft kid is, like, looks at him, he's like, <laughs> uh, uh, I, and he looks up, he looks over, he's trying to figure out where the girl is, he's like, uh, why is she not coming over here? And the subscriber's like, dude, stop, stop, please, no, no, no. And the Minecraft kid is like, don't worry, man, I'm gonna be your Cupid. And he gets up again, he's like, hey! <laughs> he's like, hey! The girl turns around again, and... The Minecraft kid's like, I said my friend really likes you. <laughs> and then, like, sits back down again. And the kid, the subscriber's like, dude, dude, what are you doing? And the kid's like, bro, I'm just whizzing that girl up for you. Don't even worry about it, bro. And the, and the, and the, and the subscriber's like, please stop. Please. Please. Minecraft kid gets up again, looks over at the girl, yells out again, hey! And I mean, <laughs> the subscriber, like, literally pulls a Minecraft kid down. And the Minecraft kid looks over and I'm like, D dude, what are you doing? And the subscriber's like, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? Uh, also, real quick, comment Minecraft down below if you made it this far into the video. And if you're listening on Spotify, I think you can go into, like, there's, like, a comment section or something. But if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to check out the pinned comment as there's a link to the Spotify page in which I upload these every single day as well as some other stuff. So make sure to follow me on Spotify and listen on there if you use the site. And, yeah, let's get back to it. So at this point, uh, the subscriber is absolutely mortified. He is so embarrassed. And uh, so the Minecraft kid eventually is like, I'll be right back. And the subscriber's like, oh, God. Minecraft kid gets up and uh, is gone for like 10 minutes. And the subscriber's like, okay, maybe he got bored with messing with me. 
maybe someone, he went up to someone else. Maybe some people got on at the last bus stop and he's going to mess with them. He's bored of messing with me. Okay, this is real good. This is a good thing. But no, 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 no. The Minecraft kid is far from being done. So yeah, you know, the subscriber starts closing his eyes, maybe thinking he'll get like 10 minutes of shut eye or something. And that's when he's awoken by, hey, hey, bro, 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 hey, hey. And he like looks at him, he's like, oh God, what, 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 what? Turns around, it's Minecraft kid. Who's the Minecraft kid have with him this time? He has a girl from the front of the bus. So at this point, the subscriber was just a second ago about to drift off, have a little bit of nice relaxing sleep. And instead, he is uh, awoken to the sight of the Minecraft kid back again, and this time with the girl that he was yelling at. And the Minecraft kid's like, uh, you sit there right now, bro. And she, like, points to the girl, and, like, the girl kind of sits down awkwardly next to the subscriber. And then the Minecraft kid sits one row behind them, is, like, leaning in, like, <sighs> like, breathing super loud behind them. So the subscriber looks at the girl, is like, look, I'm so sorry, I have nothing to do with this. This guy's act, I don't even know this guy. He's acting on his own. And the girl's like, it's fine. He said that there, he, she's like, oh, he said that there was an emergency and I had to come back immediately or we'd all die. <laughs> and the, the subscriber's like, I'm so sorry. I have no connection to this. Like, and then you hear, kiss. Why are you guys kissing? And they both turn around and the Minecraft kid's like, just like breathing behind them super loud yelling at whispering for them to kiss and like the subscribers like dude could you not he's like what i'm trying to help you i'm trying to be helpful to you so that's when the minecraft kid starts to get really offended he's like you know what if, if you don't want my specialties and my work well then i will go somewhere else and i will give it to someone else and the subscriber's like okay and the subscriber turns to go move forward but before he can turn to move forward he gets arm pitted again the Minecraft kid decides that his revenge against the subscriber not wanting his epic Riz advice or whatever is he shoves his stinky armpit in his nose and the subscriber, once again, taken off guard, mid-inhale, just inhales the most putrid thing he's ever smelled, well, the, the most putrid thing he's ever smelled since the last time he got the Minecraft kid's armpit shoved up his nose. So, yeah, the Minecraft kid runs away and, like, you know, the subscriber is left in a coughing fit. You know, this story isn't only bad. There's some good that comes out of it. I mean, what is that good, you might ask? Well, basically, right, so that girl um, was just sitting very... Uh, the whole situation was so awkward. However, uh, since it was awkward for both of them, it, I, it honestly became un not awkward. And almost like... For s the fact that the Minecraft kid was the one making the entire thing weird, it's almost as if they had, like, something to bond over, which was kind of the funny part. It's like, they had something, they bonded over the awkwardness of the Minecraft kid. Uh, so this happened many months ago. You want to know something real funny, guys? That girl that was, like, sat down next to him, thanks to the Minecraft kid, is now the subscriber's girlfriend. I'm not even kidding you. Loki Minecraft kid, he had the ultimate riz. I, I doubt that the Minecraft kid had the 10,000 IQ, fourth dimensional chess, 10,000 move ahead play that by doing what he did was going to make them come together. But at the end of the day, the Minecraft kid said, I'm going to riz up this girl for you. And now they're dating. So they always make jokes about like, shout out Minecraft kid for bringing them together. But one thing too, the Minecraft kid, I bet still goes to their school. He has never seen him again. Kid was like a one time dude on the bus. They have no classes together. I think the subscriber saw him, the subscriber said he saw him like once in passing and like said something to him, but like they didn't make eye contact or whatever. But yeah, that is the legend of the Minecraft kid. If you want to support the channel, click on one of the videos on screen right now. Go listen on Spotify and peace. What's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. Today we have a story of the stinkiest Minecraft kid ever who smells really bad. And he thinks that his stink, his natural odor, gives him unlimited Riz ability, and he can pick up any girl ever on the face of this earth. This is quite the story. I know you'll enjoy it, so sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, limited time, by the way, and let's just jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Wallace. So anyways, Wallace was 12 at the time. This happened uh, not that long ago. Maybe Wallace is still 12. I don't know. He just told me at this time he was 12, right? And he and his boys were kind of hanging out one day when uh, Wallace's mom came down and said, hey, like, guys, and talks to Wallace and his friends. There's a new kid moving into the neighborhood. Um, I, thought it'd be cool, I thought it'd be good or cool if you guys went and talked to him. So I set something up with you and him tomorrow and then also with you and him two days from then. 
basically the plan was that Wallace and his friends were going to go over to this kid's house, get to know him a little bit, and then the next day they were all going to go to the mall together, as that was a thing that Wallace and his friends enjoyed doing. So Wallace and his friends really had no objection to this. We're just going to call his friends uh, Ben collectively. Like, I'm going to refer to them both as Ben because they don't really have any, <laughs> they don't really have any, like, qualities in the story that they need to be separated by. So we're just going to call them both Ben. But anyways, Wallace and, Wallace and, we'll say Wallace and his friends, and I'll say Ben if necessary. Wallace and his friends had no objection to this as they thought, okay, well, that's cool. New person, no, maybe he's cool. And worst case scenario, he's not, and we're just not friends with him. Like, <laughs> we'll figure it out pretty soon. So anyways, fast forward to the day where Wallace and his friends go over to this guy's house. And uh, this was the beginning of the end, man. This is where things, uh, it, they, they only went down from here. So anyways, they're driving up to the house and uh, Wallace's mom drops them off and says, doesn't plan to stay as she has to go and do things. And they're basically going to be stuck at this guy's house for two hours, which you know, that doesn't sound bad. I mean, especially if you like the guy, if you, or at least you could like the guy, that's probably a good thing because, you know, you're spending more time with your friend. However, this was about to be one of the hardest experiences of their lives. I mean, they're only 12, so it's not like they've went through that much. But anyways, yeah, so they're walking into the house, and or they walk up to the house. They knock on the door. Uh, the Minecraft kid's mom. We're going to call him the Minecraft kid, by the way. And uh, I have to use this disclaimer all the time just because people don't get it. I, I'm this, this is not dedicated towards anyone who plays Minecraft. I think it's pretty clear that I enjoy the game, or at least used to enjoy the game a lot when I was a kid, as shown by the background footage I'm using. Look, the term Minecraft kid, it isn't really even meaning you like Minecraft. It almost means the one that is someone who is embodied by Minecraft, wearing the same creeper hoodie every single day, being on Discord 24-7, and having the hygiene of a Discord mod. That is basically what I mean by Minecraft, kid. I don't mean you just like Minecraft. So just stop being mad in the comments and use your common sense for one second. So all I ask is one second. Anyways, they walk up to the house and the Minecraft kid's mom greets them at the door, lets them in. Wallace's mom leaves as soon as she sees her kids and or her kid and his friends go into the house. They enter the house and the Minecraft kid's mom says, okay, well, uh, the Minecraft kid's actually upstairs right now. He's in the middle of one of his little uh, gaming sessions. I'm sure you boys know what it's like to be in the middle of a gaming session and have your mother interrupt it. I'm sure it's the worst. They all kind of look at each other like, I guess, bro. Like, all right. Why? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know how else to respond. All right. Yeah, so she's like, well, he's actually just up there. So Wallace leads, uh, leads the other two up the stairs. And they go up the stairs. They make a left, and they go down this hallway. And immediately, something just smells wrong. Like, it doesn't necessarily smell... Okay, it does smell pretty bad. It's, like, a little pungent. It's, like, I don't know. You left something in the trash that maybe you shouldn't have left in the trash. Like, you left some, like, food in, the, in, an, in a, like an exposed trash or something, and you forgot to take the trash out for weeks. And it just, like, got stuck somewhere. And then after a while, it starts to decompose and rot and make this little smell, right? So the thing is, though, as they get closer and closer to the room where they hear creeper explosion noises and Minecraft dragon noises, the, st the smell gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And one of Wallace's friends, Ben, says, like, oh, dude, like, do you smell that? It smells awful. And Wallace is like, yeah, it's like something died in the walls, bro. Like, what? So yeah, anyways, they get closer and closer to the Minecraft kids' room, and the smell gets worse and worse. And that's when they get to the door, and they're looking at the door handle. Thankfully, right, it was a push door. You didn't have to pull it to open it, because looking at the door handle, the door handle had all this crust and grime and sludge and probably just like the, the, this Cheeto dust that's been molding because it's been there for three years. It is the most disgusting thing ever. And also the door somehow has like sludge all over it, which bro, I, I get it if you're messy. My room's not always looking the greatest. So I try and keep it as clean as possible, but we all have those days where you just forget. But dude, how does it get so bad that the door gets gross? Like how do you get to a point where the door is getting gross? So I know I've said up to this point, the hallway smelled pretty bad, but it was nothing for what they were about to experience. So uh, Alex decided, or sorry, Wallace, Alex is the name of the last guy. Wallace 
opens the door, not with his hand, he literally uses his foot to gently push open the door. And when I say jump scare warning, <laughs> there should have been a jump scare warning for Wallace and his friends because boom, he gets hit in the face. Not hit in the face with anything physical. It's not like a ball was thrown at him or shot with a Nerf gun or something. Not like the Minecraft kid was playing a prank on him. It was a wall of stink. It was a wall of stench. It was the most foul. It was the most putrid. It was the most disgusting. It was the most egregious smell they have ever smelled in their lives. They've talked about this after the fact, and they all agreed that nothing has ever smelled this bad. Not even close, right? So it's as if, like, I don't know, a, a, something died in the Minecraft kid's room, and it was just literally rotting away in the middle of the room. It was as if the Minecraft kid went to the bathroom primarily in his pillow and slept on his pillow every single night. It was as if, insert the grossest thing ever that would smell terrible, and then just apply it to the smell of this room. This room was terrible. And not only was it terrible, there was crap all over the floor. It was stink. There was flies all in the room. It was disgusting. It was the worst room they've ever, ever, ever stumbled upon. And the kid rolls around, or not rolls around, but is in his spinning chair, spins around, is like, hey guys, my name's Minecraft Kid. Actually says his real name, but we're going to use Minecraft Kid. He's like, hey guys, my name's Minecraft Kid. What are your names? And, uh, you know, the, uh, what do I call him? Wallace. Wallace is like, hey, this is Wa I'm Wallace. That's Ben. And points his other friend. That's Ben. Maybe they had different names, but for the sake of this, uh, it's nice to meet you. We're the friends in your neighborhood. Minecraft Kid's like, okay, cool. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to get back to my Minecraft game. And he literally turns around and he just goes back to, like, clicking. And, like, they're looking at his keyboard and mouse. His keyboard is basically a flat surface. It's a flat surface because there's so much gunk and crap in between the keys that it's there's almost no physical divots. It's just, like, a flat edge. It's just a flat surface. Because all the divots where the keyboards are just fill of, filled with, like, gamer gunk. And it's disgusting, right? And his mouse, too was sticky like his mouse like when you click down it like stuck a little bit which he was complaining about like man my clicks per second are actually not that high i don't know why and they just hear <laughs> that was like the mouse sound bro it was not good so yeah they walk over first of all they were just like at this point wallace was just like really proud of his friends for not projectile vomiting or just collapsing on the ground Right? He was very proud of them for not doing that, just by the, the sheer smell of the room that they entered. Very, very proud. Extremely proud, actually. So they walk in, and they see just like a thousand Monster Energy cans sitting on the desk. And I know that there's some Monster Energy fans in here. Guys, please. <laughs> it's not good for you, man. Look, live your life, and I'm about to make people mad, but bro, please limit yourself. That stuff is not good. You're basically, you're basically snorting seed oils and red dye number 40. I know those two things are not in Monster Energy, but it's the, it's the health equivalent of doing that. But you can do what you want. Just look, in general, do things in moderation. There was like a thousand Monster Energy cans, half of them spilling all over the place, right next to his game, what the Minecraft kid called his gaming battleship, aka his desk. And he was just like clicking around, and he was sitting in, like, the squatting. He was, like, very sitting very weirdly. He's sitting, like, I don't know if you guys ever saw Death Note, but you know L from Death Note. It's, like, literally the only anime I've ever watched. Anime just isn't really my thing. However, that one show, Death Note, fire. That was so sick. The rest of it, does I don't really like. But anyways, he's sitting like that, and he's like, bro, I'm not even gonna go into it. But his feet were not well manicured. That's all I'm gonna say. And I'm not trying to say that he wasn't going to, uh, a spa every single day. I wasn't trying to say that, like, I don't know, he's not adding, like, a coat. I, 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 I don't know. Let's just say that things were not looking great down there. It says, it, I don't know if you guys have ever been to the pool when, like, an 80-year-old grandpa walks over and, like, he's got his dogs out and you know that he doesn't have the ability to bend over and, like, clip them or whatever and his dogs are just the worst things you've ever seen. Like, they might be the worst things you've ever seen. Like, they're big bad. It basically, the Minecraft kid 
had the worst pair of dogs on his feet as you've ever seen, right? And it's just like, like at this point, the smell was almost accumulating in the insides of Wallace and his friends' noses. Eventually, the Minecraft kid loses his Minecraft match. He's like, drat. He turns around. He's like, hey, guys. So, what do you guys do for fun? And Wallace and his friends are like, uh, uh, well, we actually, uh, well, uh, I don't know. We'll, we go for hikes and stuff. We uh, go around, play some Frisbee. I don't know if you're into that. He's like, nope. I do not like sports or anything with physical activity. And they're all just like, all right, cool. We also like going to the mall. He's like, sigh, I know we're going there tomorrow. That's the worst. I can't play Minecraft if I'm in the wall. In, in the, <laughs> if I'm in the wall. If I'm in the mall. Yeah, I bet you wouldn't be able to play Minecraft if you were in the physical wall, bro. But anyways, right. They're kind of just looking at him. And Wallace and his friends are looking at each other. And then they look back at him, and then they look at each other. They have a feeling, a sneaking suspicion, a slight uh, inkling. They have a, they have a feeling, right, that maybe they're not going to be the closest, uh, dearest, uh, most connected friends with this guy because they have literally nothing in common, and his his room is not the easiest. It, like for example, they cannot imagine a sleepover in his room without passing away. They would have to write an, a, a letter to their parents about how much they love them before they went over to this kid's house for a sleepover, just in case they suffocated from too much stink accumulating in their lungs overnight. Who even knows? Anyways, so this kid goes on to talk about, like, they're talking about some stuff. The conversation is pretty terrible, but whatever. And that's when the Minecraft kid brings up his, like, the most interesting quote of all time. The Minecraft kid's like, guys do you guys have any Riz? And they're all like, bro, what? He's like, yeah, Riz, like charisma. Like, are you good with the ladies, bro? And like Wallace kind of was. Like Wallace isn't trying to brag or anything, but he wasn't doing too bad in that department. You know, he got it done. He wasn't like, I don't know. He wasn't some Leonardo DiCaprio, bro. He wasn't like, I, I, I look, he, but he was doing fine. He was, he was chilling. You know, he did what he needed to do, but Wallace wasn't about to be like, yeah, I got plenty of riz. Because if anyone says that, unironically, they probably don't have any. Like, let's just keep it a buck right here. But anyways, the Minecraft kid's like, so, one of my pastimes is actually investigating how to get the ladies to like me. I've been making many experiments and game plans for it. And they're all kind of looking at each other like, all right, let's take advice from this guy of how to, like, secure, like, a beautiful girlfriend. Yep. Let's, I'm, I'm all yours, man. I'm listening, bro. Uh, I'm paying attention to whatever you're saying. Go for it, man. Let's hear it. Let's hear it right now. And uh, yeah, the Minecraft kid goes on to say that he has found the Rosetta Stone. He has found the secret. He has found the fountain of youth. If youth is equal to getting the women, right? He has found the 100% guaranteed guide to getting laid 1,000% of the time. And you know what his secret was? And he was explaining to them. So, women, instinctually, very deep down, they have primal urges. And they're all like, oh, bro, why do you have to say it like that? You're so weird. They didn't say that, but they're like, bro. And he's like, yes, they have primal urges. So I was thinking about it. What is the most primal thing that you could do? Like, think about the cavemen. They're all like, uh, I don't know, hunt, um, be outside a lot. Basically the opposite of the Minecraft kid. He's like, no, 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 those were just things that they did. What about the cavemen is, stands out most to you? And, uh, you know, Wallace and his friends... They, they weren't able to figure out exactly what the Minecraft kid was looking for. Um, so the Minecraft kid eventually was like, Fine, I'll tell you. Have you ever smelled a caveman before? And they're all like, what? And he's like, well, you probably haven't because they've been extinct for a while. But think about it. Do you think the cavemen ever showered? And they're all like, uh, what, bro? He's like, yes, think about this. The cavemen never showered. The cavemen are old-fashioned women's natural instincts will bring them to want to go back to their roots. Cavemen are their roots, therefore I should not shower and I have ultimate riz because of it. At this point, Wallace was just like, bro, 
you got it. Ain't, ain't no way, bro. There is no way. There is simply no way that this is how it's going down. Real quick, if you've made it this far into the video, comment Minecraft down below. Uh, by the way, these videos will be on Spotify, and also short-form videos will be on TikTok, and all the other links to submit stories to my Instagram and Twitter. All that stuff will be in the description of the video. Finally, if you want to support the channel, the best thing to do is first finish this video all the way till the end, and then when you're done with the video, go ahead and watch another one of my story videos. A great way to do this is the story time playlist in the pinned comment down below. Anyways, let's get back to it. So anyways, Wallace and his boys are looking at each other like, did this bro really just say, did bro really just say that because he doesn't shower, that he is going to have ultimate riz and get all the ladies to love him? Yes. The Minecraft kid literally just said, oh, okay, because I don't shower and cavemen didn't shower and women have instincts, therefore... I am irresistible to the ladies, guys. You should listen to me. I know what I'm saying. Like, bro, you can't be serious right now. And yeah, Minecraft Kid was serious right now. And uh, yeah, so Wallace and his friends kind of look at each other. It's, it's basically an in real life try not to laugh challenge. Because this is, this is a pretty difficult try not to laugh challenge. Wallace is not going to lie. But he's like, uh, he's got to, Wallace got to ask the pressing question. Uh, has it ever worked before? Because here's the thing. You know you got that friend who has all the... Cra He's always given the most advice. Bro's always dishing out the most advice when it comes to the ladies. He's saying, man, you gotta do this. You gotta do that. If you're not doing this, you're an idiot. If you're not buying my How to Get the Ladies course, you're a fool, right? They're always saying the most. And then you ask them, hmm, when is the last time you've actually had a good interaction with a woman? And they're all like... Pfft. Well, so I've actually been working on my shelf recently. Dude, if they say that, that just means, like, not in the last forever. Last, last time they saw You Know What was the last time they came out one, bro. That's all I'm trying to say without getting demonetized. But anyways, right? So, sure enough, uh, Wallace is like, hey, has this ever worked? And the Minecraft kid's like, well, actually, I've been honing my stink for so long that I've not spoken to a woman in... Uh, I don't know, five years. Dude, they were like 12, by the way, bro. By the way, Riz to them meant like talking to a girl and holding her hand was like 20th base. Like 25th base was holding her hand. And they were legit scared to hold hands because they're like, bro, what if I hold her hand too hard and the stork comes with the baby, bro? Oh my God. A anyways, right? So they're just like, oh, well, we're going to the... And I Wallace is like, oh, well, dude, we're going to the mall tomorrow you should really use some of that riz because I feel like I feel like you've definitely accumulated enough stink to uh, to really have a presence. He's like, oh, really? It was like the most... It's funny because it's like Wallace just complimented the Minecraft kid in the most genuine, best compliment the Minecraft kid could have ever wanted to hear. Imagine someone says, you smell like, I don't know, dog... You smell like my dog's butt, right? And you're just like, oh my God, bro. You really mean that? Do you really mean that? Yo, that means so much to me, bro. Oh, thank you so much. I, I, thank you, bro. You don't know how much that means to me, dude. I'm tearing up right now. Yeah, so anyways, the, Wallace and his friends are there for the next like hour or so. Ben and like Ben is like has to go to the bathroom several times for a mysterious illness that may or may not because of all the stink that is accumulating in his nose. They eventually get picked up. And uh, when Wallace sits down in the car, his mom's like, oh, God, what the f- Bro, what? You all smell so bad. Like, Wallace's mom was super blatant about the fact that they smelled bad. And that's when Wallace and his friends realized that just by standing in this kid's room, they basically got sprayed by a, stunk, a skunk. They basically dove into the dumpster. They basically decided to just go to the bathroom in their pants and not even care about it at this point. So yeah, they had to explain to his mom that it wasn't them just like, I don't know, peeing their pants and letting it marinate for an hour. It was the fact that the Minecraft kid had certain behaviors and tendencies that maybe did not align with peak cleanliness, with peak, uh, I don't know, hygiene, with peak smelling not terrible. So yeah, after explaining to his mom that the Minecraft kid did not smell so good, his mom's like, oh, well... You know, boys, I can always try and make up something to get you out of the, the play date tomorrow if you're really thinking about, like, if you really don't like this kid. 
And Wallace is like, look, I don't think we're going to be friends long term. We have nothing in common. I don't really have a lot of respect for him. All he does is play video games and accumulate stinks by, I don't know, peeing his pants or something and letting it marinate for eight hours while gaming and playing League of Legends. However, he did say that he was going to pick up a girl tomorrow. And mom, I don't mean to be a jerk, but I really want to see that. His mom gives him a look like, bro, you're being mean right now. Because we all know this kid is not going to be picking up the ladies. And he's like, eventually the mom's like, okay, fine. It's going to be easier to let you guys go. Just don't be mean. And they all agreed. So anyways, the next day came around. And Wallace's mom drove Wallace, Ben, and Ben over to the mall. And they got out. And uh, Wallace's mom's like, okay, I'm going to be back in an hour. Like, I'm just going to say I have to get you guys early. But don't be too mean. I'll be back. So anyways, right, they walk in. And they sit down at, I don't know, there's this little bench or whatever in the mall. And it's a place that they normally meet. And they got the kids' uh, Snapchat or number or whatever. And they, somehow they text them, right? They're like, hey, we're at X location. And eventually, after five minutes of waiting, they see the Minecraft kid walking over in the worst outfit on planet Earth. One of the most... <laughs> it, it, is, it is so bad. And they can, first of all, not even the fact that he has a walking aroma, but it is a creep. First of all, the creeper hoodie is not bad. You know, if I, when I was 12, not bad, right? Creeper hoodie, not too terrible. However, he was walking over in the creeper hoodie that had massive stains on it. It had massive blotches of crap that he just spilled all over it and never found, like figured out to clean up. And then... He also had the strangest pants on planet Earth. They were like, <laughs> they were like anime girls with like making weird faces or something. And it was like black and white. However, those also had big splotches of crap and big yellow marks all over them. And then he literally came in slides with no socks. Look, a lot of people walk around and a lot of people I respect. They got the slides on and they don't have the socks on. And I got to talk a little quieter so that I don't offend anyone in my suite. But I just don't suggest doing that. And especially if the dogs are not well taken care of. And the Minecraft kids' dogs were very much not well taken care of. They were definitely looking like snakes, bro. They were not look. They were not dogs, bro. They were snakes. They were coming to bite. They were definitely the the, the, the dogs were venomous, bro. It was not looking good. So yeah, he comes in in the most atrocious fit on planet Earth, and he also says, "Oh, by the way, I forgot to say the cherry on top." Bro's rocking a redditor fedora. He might as well have his Discord mod kitten with him as well. His like in real life waifu. No, he guys, she's real. Anyways, right, so he walks over, and they all are just looking at him like, oh my god. And this is when Wallace spots two girls, who he kind of recognizes from living in the neighborhood, sitting at a table on the other side. And, you know, the kid sits down, and, uh, you know, he's all like, he's like, what's up, guys? How's it going? And they're all like, good. And Wallace is like, so, you ready to use your riz yet? He's like, guys, I don't really know. I'm kind of thinking about letting my stink get a little stinkier, but uh, I guess it's up to you guys. And Wallace is like, no, no, no. We need to, like, test it now just so you can adjust it. Like, if it doesn't work, you'll know that you need to smell even worse. <laughs> he's kind of being a dick there, bro. But he's like, yeah, he's like, if we need to know, like, if it doesn't work to, like, ramp up the rancidness on your stink. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I think we should do it today. And the Minecraft kids are like, <sighs> fine, you know, I could be playing Minecraft right now. They're all like, yeah, but ladies, dude. He's like, you know, I have plenty of Discord kittens, by the way. I really don't need the ladies right now, but I guess I will cheat on all my various Discord kittens. I've been told by many people I am basically the Minecraft Andrew Tate. <laughs> Dude, I'm having too much fun with this story right now. But anyways, Wallace is like, bro, what? And he's like, okay, man, um, sure, whatever. I don't know how to respond to this. Um, I, I, my brain is malfunctioning because what did you just say? But anyways, 
uh, over there. And he points to these two girls. He's like, you think you can riz them up, bro? And the Minecraft kid's like, dude. Dude. There is a 100% chance I bag both of them tonight, bro. They will both be in my crib. They will be on my bed watching me play Minecraft and being like, Oh my god, Minecraft kid, you're so good. (laughs) Sorry. Anyways, well, this is like, okay, bet. Let's see it. So the Minecraft kid's like, okay. Steps up. Starts like walking over. Walks over to the table. Looks like he's about to walk past them. It's very weird. And he walks past them. And Wallace turns to his friend and is like, bro, is this guy not, is this guy not pursuing the lit? Is he, is he dipping? Is he not going through with it? And the Minecraft kid starts, he doesn't walk past them. He walks around them. He starts circling their table. And then he starts running around their table. And then he throws his arms back and he sonic dashes around the table. It is the most insane thing that Wallace and his friends have ever seen. So, yeah, this kid is sonic dashing around the table, similar to how, like, a shark circles its prey. It is the weirdest thing ever. And eventually the Minecraft kid, who is extremely not so athletic because Minecraft and peeing his pants all day doesn't make him the big, strong athlete, right? He eventually sits down, and he's like, "Ah, Hi, guys. (laughs) And the two girls are just looking at him like, Oh my god, what? And he's like, hey guys, watch good. My name is Minecraft Kid. And, you know, at this point, Wallace and his friends are sitting close enough to overhear the whole conversation. And they're just like, um, what? Yeah, and the two girls are just not having it right now. He's like, show, I wanted to know what you thought of minecraft boys are you like into the e-boys because you could say that i'm an e-boy like that (laughs) (laughs) these two girls are just like what no he's like that's fine i was joking about being an e-boy by the way (sighs) yeah it's totally not me i'm like the opposite of that in a super sexy way and these two girls are just like, bro, what is this kid on right now? And Wallace and his friends, they're dying, bro. They were trying to, they, they just failed the try not to laugh challenge. One of, one of the Bens basically falls over in his seat, is on the ground, is on the dirty mall floor, but he doesn't care, bro. Because he's watching the craziest thing he has ever seen in his entire life go down. And he's trying to hold it together, and he's not doing a good job, which I can't blame the man. I, I wouldn't be able to hold it together well either. And Minecraft kid's like, show, with that all being said, are, which one of you girls are coming back to the crib tonight? And they both look at each other. And then one of them is like, oh. And, and look, Wallace is like, oh, no. And one of them's like, what's that? Oh, what's that? Sm- oh. It gets up. One of the girls gets up runs to the nearest trash can and literally vomits into the trash can. She must have been really faint of smell, uh, faint of stomach, right? Or she must have had a really sensitive stomach because, uh, you know, the smell was really, really bad. But to actually vomit over a smell is pretty intense. So this girl must have just happened to been had a really weak stomach or maybe really was on the cusp of vomiting anyways. But yep, she got up and she was just like puking into the trash can. So the other girl sees this as a perfect opportunity to escape the Minecraft kid. And she gets up and she's like, oh, I have to go talk to my friend. Sorry, goodbye. And Wallace walks over to the Minecraft kid. He's like, oh, no, maybe this stinks a little much right now. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, 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 no. You guys don't understand. You didn't hear what was going on. You weren't catching on. You weren't you weren't signaled into the primal vibes like I was. I was luring them in. They were feeling me so hard until the other girl just happened to be sick. It's probably like all the uh, the hormones that were going through her body when she was smelling my smell just too much for her, man. Just she just she just couldn't handle it. I think I'm actually going to increase the smell so that the hormones will be so strong that she just immediately comes back to my crib. And, uh, you know, at this point, Wallace is like, yep, no, that makes sense. Um, 100%, I back this choice. Uh, You are right. 100% right. 
Correct. I stand by what you are saying. Minecraft kid, you go. Yes. And uh, yeah, eventually Wallace's mom picked them all up. And uh, Wallace had quite the story to click tell. Click on the it. video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today we got a story of probably one of the most spoiled kids to ever live on planet Earth. I'm not even kidding. Strap in, subscribe if you like stories, and let's call today's subscriber Benson. I think that is a real name. I'm just thinking of Benson from regular show. That show is gas. But anyways, this all happens one day when Benson is chilling in class, and there's this kid in his class who we're just going to call the spoiled kid. He doesn't even deserve a name, bro. He's just getting the name spoiled kid. But anyways, right about halfway through the school year, this new girl moves into the neighborhood, and everyone's trying to impress her, like everyone thinks she's so pretty or whatever. And on her first day in, like, you know, she's like, hi guys, my name is, oh, let's call her Kate, right? Hi guys, my name is Kate, like I'm new to the neighborhood. And everyone's like, hi Kate, nice to meet you. And yeah, some of the guys are like trying to talk to her, maybe for not the like reason of like, oh, I just want to make sure you feel comfortable in the new neighborhood. Maybe because they just find, like, I don't know, maybe because they just find her pretty. But either way, they're not being weird about it. They're being pretty chill about it, which is all you need. However, there is one guy who is not being chill in the slightest, and his name is the spoiled kid. So anyways, right, on the first day that the new girl Kate is in class, in between class, right, you know, she's going to walk to her other class. And the thing is, right, Benson and Kate have the same class. Benson doesn't necessarily go and walk with her. He's just like, well, if we become friends, we become friends. But I'm just going to give her her space, like whatever. She's trying to figure things out. But Benson watches as the spoiled kid runs up to her and says, hello, my name is, you know, I'm just going to say the spoiled kid. My name is spoiled kid. Uh, welcome to the school. I basically run the school. And Benson's like, bro, everyone here hates you. What are you even saying, dude? Like, that's laughable at best. But anyways, he's like, yeah, I kind of run the school. And she's like, oh, haha, okay. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do with that information? Besides say, uh -huh, okay, man, nice, I guess. So the spoiled kid immediately says, so you're new to the area? And, you know, Kate is like, yeah, I just moved in with my family like a week ago, and this is my first day at the school here. I haven't really had the time to explore the area. And the spoiled kid's like, oh, that's awesome, so I can totally show you around. And Kate kind of understands, like, kind of what he's trying to say. He's definitely trying to, like, I don't know, like, he's definitely hitting on her right now. But Kate's kind of just like, oh, well, I appreciate the offer, um... What are the places you think I should go? And he's like, oh, I could totally take you on them, but it's got to be a date. Like, we totally got to, like, make out, too. At this point, Kate is like, no, 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 no. I'm I'm not getting pushed around like this by this obviously annoying kid. And Kate kind of realized this kid was both spoiled and also not liked by anyone. So she's like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't think I like you that way. If you have any good recommendations, though, of places that are good around town, then let me know. And the spoiled kid is like, ugh, you're ugly anyways, and storms off. And Kate, you know, Kate's a good trooper. She's just like, lol, okay? Because, look, at the end of the day, the spoiled kid obviously didn't think that she was ugly because his intentions of talking to her was, you know, because he didn't think he was, uh, she was ugly. That, that was like legit the only reason why the spoiled kid was talking to her in the first place. So obviously he just said that because he was angry. However, right, uh, uh, Benson was not a big fan of this. He was like, all right, the spoiled kid is known as a jerk, but like this girl is new and she rejected him fairly nicely. And, you know, he went on a rage and called her ugly. So as the spoiled kid was storming off, Benson's like, hey, and the spoiled kid's like, what do you want, kid? It's so funny when someone your age calls you kid, bro. Just like a little bit of a side note. I've always thought that was hilarious. But anyways, you know, Benson's like, bro, she's like, this girl is new here. I heard that you called her ugly. Like, you can't be doing that. That's mad disrespectful, and it looks bad for all of us. This girl is new. She rejected you nicely. Like, that's not cool that you called her ugly. Spoiled kid says, yeah, bro, what are you going to do about it? And the thing is, right, Benson's not going to fight him, but Benson's just like, dude, you're such a jerk and no one here likes you. So the spoiled kid doesn't like hearing that. So the spoiled kid decides, like, I'm going to, like, I'm going to own this kid. Like, I'm going to do something pretty crazy. So, like, there's a few people that are starting to gather around because they're like, oh, my God, these two kids are fighting. Let me watch. And so there's a couple kids there. And, uh, you know, the spoiled kid is like, Ow! Ow! He hit me! And Benson's like, bro, 
I didn't touch you, bro. And like everyone else watching was like, dude, he was like five feet away from you. And the spoiled kid's like, no, he punched me. And then the spoiled kid turns to Benson's like, do you know who my father is? He's a very, very rich lawyer and he will destroy you and your family. We'll take every cent from you. And Benson's like, yeah, right. And, you know, the spoiled kid's like, oh, my arm, it hurts so much. And these witnesses, they're your best friends, so of course they're going to lie. And the witnesses are like, dude, we don't even know you guys. They were like kids in the older class. And Benson's like, that's not what my father will be able to argue as he's done this before. Basically, what, ben what the spoiled kid was trying to tell Benson was that, you know, he was going to tell his dad to sue Benson for hitting him, right, for assaulting him, basically, even when there was no proof. And apparently, his dad was good enough and was able to manipulate stuff well enough that he's done this in the past for the spoiled kid. And spoiled kid's like, wow, if you don't do exactly what I say, I will sue you. And then the spoiled kid, like, is like, by the way, check your text messages in 20 minutes. And Benson is just like, what? Like, what on earth is going on? So the spoiled kid walks away and like limps away and is like, oh, I've been beaten up. Oh. So Benson's like, bro, this kid is cringe and annoying and super spoiled and entitled. I don't even care. But he gets a text message from a random number. Apparently, the spoiled kid was asking around and eventually got Benson's number. And it was a link to a case, a court case that was like on a local uh, news thing. And this case was like talking about like Benson's dad and was talking about Benson too. And was talking about another kid who allegedly like attacked Benson and there was tons of medical damages and the family was sued successfully. And Benson's starting to realize, or not attack Benson, attack the spoiled kid. And Benson's starting to realize that the spoiled kid isn't bluffing. Apparently, like, Benson didn't know because the article didn't say he faked it. The article was like, oh, he was attacked and, like, medical damages were sued and won. Apparently, right, you know, Benson was starting to realize that the spoiled kid, his dad would basically, whenever the spoiled kid hated someone or got in a fight with someone, would pretend to be attacked and then his dad, like the super magic lawyer dude, would be able to sue the family and win. Maybe it doesn't work every time, but Benson started to get pretty scared because the thing is, like, he knew that his parents couldn't take something like that, like, it was just way too expensive for them and that they would really be screwed if anything like that ever happened. So Benson was pretty scared. Real quick, comment spoiled down below if you want to hard on your comment. I'll try to hard every comment that said spoiled as spoiled is a secret word of the day. And by the way, if you're binge watching my videos, watching a ton of them, maybe putting on a playlist, maybe even going to sleep with a playlist on, wink, wink, nod, nod, let me know in the comments so I can say thank you as that is like, that boosts my channel more than you can ever believe. It'll help us hit 500k faster and I do appreciate you. But anyways, so for the next like week or so, Benson is in complete fear of the spoiled kid because the spoiled kid basically has told him, my dad will sue your parents. And the thing is, right, even if they don't necessarily win, Benson knows that like being in a prolonged court case is super expensive. Like, yeah, I guess you could have the state lawyers or whatever, but then there's a higher chance they'd lose. But if they had like better lawyers, then maybe they would like, maybe they'd still lose, but either way, they'd be very expensive. So Benson right now is in a really bad position where he feels as if that he needs to like basically take all the crap from the spoiled kid and not be able to do anything in return. It's a pretty terrible situation. And of course, the spoiled kid is taking advantage of it every chance he can get. So this like bullying starts immediately almost as the next day, you know, the bully is not the bully, but I mean, I guess he is a bully, but the spoiled kid goes up to Benson and basically says, so how does it feel to be so poor? And Benson's like, what? And the spoiled kid's like, how does it feel to be so poor? And Benson's like, you don't want to mess with me. And the spoiled kid's like, did you not see my text? And Benson just literally has to grimace. Like he's literally in such a bad position right now. He just looks at him and he just like snarls. And the spoiled kid realizing that Benson like, or not realizing, but seeing that Benson can't fight back is like, oh no, you guys are so poor and I'm so rich. This kid is legit Eric Cartman, bro. I swear to God. But now he's like, oh no, how does it feel? Oh my God, you can't do anything because you know that you'll lose all your money and you can't afford it because my dad will sue you and take everything you got for the damages you did to my little arm. Oh, he's so, so mad. And Benson was just like, he was just gritting his teeth. He was like, I just need to make it through this. 
I just basically need to power through this. Like, I, there's nothing I can do, unfortunately. Like, this is awful, but like, what am I going to do? So anyways, the next day rolls around, and sure enough, right, the spoiled kid is back. And he's like, oh, Benson, how's it going, buddy? Benson's like, hello, spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid is like, oh, wouldn't it be a shame? And because they, they're they're basically at their lockers right now. If you don't know a locker, I don't know if you don't have a locker at your school. It's where you put your backpack. It's where you put whatever. And while the locker was locked, while Benson's locker was locked, there was like a grate, basically like an air vent. I don't totally know why. Maybe just for general ventilation. And the spoiled kid's like, oh man, wouldn't it be so bad? And the spoiled kid takes this like kind of mushy banana and slams it into the grate of Benson's locker and starts rubbing it around so that all the gross banana mush would both get stuck in the vent, but also kind of seep down and also be gross on the front. He's like, oh no. No, Benson, this is so sad. Your locker's disgusting and vile now. Oh, no. And Benson is just like, I swear to God, bro. Like, you don't understand what you're doing. And, and the spoiled kid's like, oh, what are you going to do about it, Benson? Oh, no. Keeps rubbing the locker in, like the banana. And, oh, no, Benson. Oh, this is so sad. Benson is so mad at this point. So eventually, right, Benson, you know, later that day, he calls up one of his friends who goes to the school. And he's like, man, I got to talk to you. Explains the entire story I just told you. And the friend is like, oh my God, this kid is a psychopath and he legitimately needs to be stopped. And you need to be freed from this kind of cycle of hell because you're going to break and then he's going to sue you. And all of that like nonsense would have been for nothing. And so Benson and him are like, all right, we need some way to counter him. How are we going to counter him? So they think about it for the second and they're like, wait a minute, like, what if we catch him on camera doing something terrible? So the plan is now that Benson's friend will kind of follow around Benson, but kind of from afar, kind of like be, know where Benson is walking out of class. Cause like, he's not gonna follow him in class. The spoiled kid doesn't have any classes with Benson. I do believe, I'm not 100% sure. But th the idea is like, he'll follow around Benson when the spoiled kid is most likely to like taunt him or whatever. And hopefully be able to catch something incriminating on camera. So the next day rolls around and Benson's friend is watching the whole thing on camera. He's recording it and just like, it, he'll delete the footage if it doesn't like have anything valuable just to save space, but he's just trying to catch something good. So the spoiled kid comes up to him. He's like, oh, Benson. Oh, hi there, Benson. Look who's back. And the spoiled kid makes a huge mistake because he has no idea that he's being watched by Benson's friend and being recorded as a spoiled kid Pick kind of like takes Benson and slams him against the locker. He's like, oh, Benson, why did you fall into the locker like that? And then like he just balls up his fist and boom, gives him a big punch in the stomach. At this point, right, Benson is in a bit of pain, but he he's mostly in joy. He's both, mostly in euphoria right now. And you know why? Because Benson knows that he just got recorded attacking Benson, that the spoiled kid who claimed that Benson attacked him now attacked him back unprovoked. And that the spoiled kid tried to do anything, Benson would have video proof against the spoiled kid's lack of video proof. And Benson's like, oh man, you just messed up huge. And the spoiled kid's like, oh, what do you mean by that? And the spoiled kid's like, and Benson's like, you're screwed, bro. And he starts laughing. And the spoiled kid is like, bro, what do you, what, what do you mean by that, Benson? What do you mean? You know that like, my dad will sue you. Tell me, tell me, or you're getting sued. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. And Benson's like, for once, you're not going to get everything that you've ever wanted. And the spoiled kid's like, dude, what are you, you're just trying to psych me out. You have nothing on me. And that's when Benson's friend walks out. And he walks out and he starts like slow clapping. He's like, bravo, spoiled kid. You just played yourself. Spoiled kid's like, what are you talking about, man? I don't know who you are. And the guy's like, I've already uploaded the video to the cloud. So it doesn't matter if you take my photo and my camera and try and delete it. But I just took a video of you attacking my friend, slamming him against the his locker and punching him unprovoked. And I have it on video. And yes, it is very clearly you. And it is very clearly my friend. So what is your move, spoiled kid? And at this point, right, the spoiled kid had never had this situation happen before. So he's like, what? You're getting sued too. Ow, you punched me as well. And the thing is, right, uh, the, the, here's the best thing, bro. 
Benson's friend never stopped recording. So Benson's friend is like, you just played yourself again. I'm still recording. And he stops the recording, uploads it to the cloud again, and is like, I just caught you on camera attacking my friend, and I also just caught you on camera faking getting attacked. If you try and bring us to court, you're getting slammed. And the spoiled kid is like, starts like seething so hard. He's like, what? No, no, you can't do this to me. No. And the spoiled kid literally starts crying. He sits there he's like, Ugh. and Benson and Benson's friends just look at each other like, my God, the real world is going to hit this guy like a freaking train, bro. This is not even funny anymore. So basically Benson says, hey, man. We're not going to report you. We're not going to do any of this. But if you do anything, and I mean anything against me, my friend, or even if you're a jerk to anyone else, we're, 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 bringing, like, we're bringing it on. We're bringing on the heat. We're showing this to the principal. We're putting this in a police record. We're doing everything. And the spoiled kid looks at him angrily, and he's like, you'll regret this. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? Today we have a story of one of the cringiest emo kids of all time, so sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're calling today's subscriber who submitted the story, Brent. So this all happened when Brent was at soccer camp, and so Brent went to the soccer camp every single year, and it just happened that this year he encountered the emo kid at soccer camp. So anyways, this was just another summer of Brent going to soccer camp. His mom dropped him off, and once again, he was pretty excited to go. Unfortunately, some of the friends he made from the year before, they didn't show up this time, so he kind of like was kind of very proactive about finding people, you know, meeting new people, and trying to make some new friends. So anyways, in the very beginning of soccer camp, they had kind of a get-to-know-other-people type deal, and all of a sudden, right, Brent sees this girl, and she was at kind of like the girls' soccer camp, so it was kind of split up like boys' soccer camp and girls' soccer camp. However, it was all under the same umbrella of like the soccer camp program, so they would eat lunch together, do non-soccer activities, but like the morning soccer practices were kind of split up by gender like that. And so anyways, right, right away, Brent saw this girl, Emily, and he immediately kind of fell in love with her. Not actually, but was like, OMG, lol, she's cute. I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm going to try and hit. No, I'm just kidding. He's like, I don't know. He's like, he's going to soccer camp. He's not trying to hit, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. But anyways, right, so she's going to be an important character later on. But for the meantime, we don't need to think about her because someone much more important comes into the picture. So while Brent is thinking about like, oh my God, look at that girl over there. I got to start talking to her. That's crazy. He accidentally bumps into this guy and he look, turns around. This guy is like, I don't know, a little bit bigger than him, a little bit heavier than him, just like kind of a bigger guy. And he's got this like long black hair that's swooshed over. He's like, he's wearing like the standard soccer cleats, but otherwise it's like this black band heavy metal t-shirt. He's got like black painted nails. He's got like a spiky wristband on or whatever. And he turns around, he's like, yo, why did you, why did you bump into me, bro? And Brent's like, oh, my fault. Like, didn't mean to do that. And he's like, you think that I'm, you don't think that I'm an alpha? Is that what you think? Brent's like, what? He's like, I'm an alpha male, just in case you weren't aware, which I, I know that you subconsciously were because, you know, all betas instantly know when there's an alpha present. And uh, Andrew's, or Brent's, sorry, Andrew was the guy from like seven stories ago. Brent was like, uh, what? He's like, bro, do you not know what beta males and alpha males are? Well, basically, beta males are like you and lame, and alpha males are strong, powerful, and dominant in the pack. And with that, like, the emo kids does a big, like, swipe of his big, long black hair. So, like, his bangs would no longer cover his eyes. It immediately fell back in front of his face. He's like, yeah, just so you know, kid, get out of my way. And the emo kid, like, shuffles away. And this was Brent's first interaction with the emo kid. So he's like, uh, okay. <laughs> that, that's cool, man. Like, okay. See you around, buddy. Bye-bye. So anyways, let's uh, flip, fast forward a little bit. After soccer practice in the morning, Brent was actually one of the better kids there. He was pretty good at soccer. They had lunch, and in the afternoon, they had activities such as like this 
like, I don't know, like, tag, capture the flag, all kind of, like, random camp activities, and today was capture the flag, and Brent happened to be on the same team as Emily, so immediately he goes over there, he's like, hey, how's it going? Like, my name's Brent. Emily's like, hey, like, my name's Emily, nice to meet you, and Brent and Emily immediately hit it off, they're having a good time, they're talking with each other, they're enjoying each other's company, you simply love to see it, and, like, from very far away, Brent catches the, e- catches the eye of the emo kid who's on the other team and is just staring him down for some reason. Brent doesn't really think much of it, and then, like, you know, he goes back to talking to Emily. So they're playing capture the flag right now, and Brent, you know, runs over to the other side, gets the flag, right, and it starts running back to his side. If you don't know capture the flag, there's, like, this little penny on both sides or, like, a little piece of cloth or something, and while you're on the opponent's side, if they tag you, you're in, you're in jail, But what you're trying to do is you're trying to run over there, grab their flag, and run back to your side without being tagged. However, there was a stipulation that it had to be a tag. This isn't tackling. You can't push someone. You can't, like, punch them or anything. You you have to tag them if they're on your side. So, you know, Sam... Brent is running over there. Sorry, I have a list of names in front of me from other stories. Brent is running over there. He grabs the enemy team's flag and is running back to his side. And he's really close when he just, like, immediately slams into the ground. And that's when he realizes that there's a big guy on top of him. And that's when he realizes that the emo kid tackled him. So the emo kid's like, nice try, buddy. Next time, try not to fight the alpha males. (laughs) And then Camp Counselor comes over and says, Hey, hey, we said no tackling. You, you're on the sidelines, points to the emo kid. You know, he's disqualified or whatever, as this is on the sidelines. Ooh, so alpha, man. But anyways, right, so the pennies returned, but also Brent isn't in, like, jail. He goes back to the other side. And the emo kid has to sit out for the rest of Capture the Flag. And Brent continues to talk to Emily. And the entire time, the emo kid is just, like, looking over and he's like all angrily staring at Brent. So Brent is now his official enemy. Brent kind of just assumed that they were enemies because of when he bumped into him and also when he got him disqualified, which did Brent really get him disqualified or was it because he's an idiot and jumped on him? That's why he got disqualified? Who knows, man? But there was another reason why the emo kid hated Brent. There was another reason that Brent did not realize at the moment, but was very 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 potent and it's going to be very very important for later on in the story. I'm going to I'm going to give you guys a hint. It starts with an E and ends with a MLE. Did you guys get it? Starts with an E and ends with a MLE. Emily, I'm just going to tell you, yeah, is Emily the girl, so Emo Kid likes her. Anyways, so Brent and Emily talk for the rest of that capture the flying game. The entire time, the Emo Kid is staring Brent down. Brent just simply assumes, well, this kid hates me for that reason only. But let me just say that the next week of soccer camp was the craziest week that Brent has ever had. So anyways, right, his mom picks him up. He goes back home. His mom's like, hey, how was the first day? And Brent says, oh, I met this really weird kid who tackled me. And she's like, oh, my God, are you okay? He's like, yeah, actually, I have barely any scrapes on me even. But he seems to not like me, so I'll keep you updated on that. So Brent is dropped off the next day, and he walks over there. And that's when the emo kid, you know, is just staring him down. And, you know, Brent is kind of walking over because there's a little bit of like a 5, 10, 15 minute period where the kids are just standing around talking with each other, waiting for them all to be dropped off. And then the kind of the soccer camp officials or camp counselors would then split them up into groups, do soccer drills, play games, whatever, standard kind of affair. And he's just kind of waiting around. And that's when the emo kid comes up to him and says, so you're challenging my authority as the effa man. And uh, Brent is kind of just like, what? He's like, <clears throat> I'll say it again, <clears throat> just in case your little beta ears couldn't hear me. So you're challenging my authority that I, that I am the alpha male of the pack. Uh, if we were wolves, which we kind of are, and it, Brent was like, what? If we were wolves, as we kind of are, as I said, I would be the alpha male, alpha wolf, and you would be the beta wolf, and I would be banging your wife while you watch little cuck beta wolf, whoop. And Brent is looking at this kid, and this kid is like, like, no offense, but this kid is like the opposite of what a stereotypical alpha male would look like, right? One of those red pit alpha males, it just looks the complete opposite of that. But anyways, Brent's not going to get into like a, you know, a, 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 he's not going to like, he's not going to rebuttal this kid. Because like, what is there to rebuttal? Everything, man? Like, this kid has no argument. But anyways, Brent's like, 
okay. And the emo kid's like, well, you say okay, but remember yesterday when you got me kicked out of the game, which you obviously tipped off the ref? And Brent's like, bro, you tackled me. It's very clearly stated in the rule books that you're not allowed to tackle anyone. How is this on me? He's like, dude, it was so clearly on you because the ref understood that I was the alpha male and I was simply asserting my dominance, bro. And, you know, uh, Brent's just like, dude, the, the, the frick are you talking about, dude? Like, I, I, I paid him off with what? The $5 allowance I get a week? With what? My, my used smelly, stinky socks? What, what do I have? And he's like, I don't know, man. May, I, I don't know. Maybe you took his daughter on a date because his daughter's so ugly she'd never get a date. Oh. And Brent's like, was, was that a diss? Like, th- does he even have a daughter? He's like 20, bro. What? And the emo kid's like, anyways, I just wanted to let you know that I'm the F man. You're the beta man. I will do your wife when you have one. And scene. And the emo kid walks away. And Brent at this point is like, <laughs> what? Why? 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 Why is this my life? Anyway, so skip forward to the, the soccer practice. They're put into groups, and the emo kid was in group B earlier, so they basically split them up into group A and group B. So the group A is the better players, and group B is the crap pl- I'm just kidding, the players who are newer to soccer. And the emo kid apparently was on the, like, was on the cusp of uh, group A, it was, on, it was at the very top of group B, and because his performance was good enough, he was actually moved up to group A. So now... Brent, instead of having a morning to himself to focus on soccer, now had to deal with the emo kid being, you know, thrown into the mix here. So anyways, they're doing some drills with a soccer ball, and they're kind of like kicking them around cones. You had to kind of keep control of the ball while you were running. And the emo kid, like they started, they said, okay, line up into three groups. And the emo kid immediately ran behind Brent. And Brent kind of looks behind him. He's like, what? And the emo kid said, nothing, Brent. Just letting you know that I'm the F of man here. And Brent's like, okay, fine. Let's just do the drill. So the, the ref blows the whistle. Brent starts kicking the ball and moving with it. And the emo kid immediately runs up behind him and trips him. He's like, oh, sorry. And the ref's like, hey. And the emo kid's like, it was an accident, I swear. And the ref's like, all right, be careful. And Brent is starting to get really angry because, like, you know, if you, if you get an injury in soccer, like, especially if you get, like, a foot injury, he could be out for the entire week. I mean, this is, like, one of his favorite camps that he has every single summer. He loves going to it. It's one of his favorite things to do. And this emo kid, for the second time in the last 24 hours, has, you know, ca- like, has gotten really close to causing him a pretty big injury. Like, I mean, he could have jumped, like, he jumped on him yesterday, he ran behind him, knocking him over, what if he twisted an ankle? What if he, like, I don't know, fractured something in his leg? Like, it's not that hard, especially when you got a big old kid jumping on top of you every five minutes. It's difficult. It's, it's not that difficult, man. So anyways, Brent, for the next activity, waits to get into line before the emo kid does. Because he doesn't want to be in the same line as the emo kid. But it turns out that, like, everyone else lines up and it's literally just Brent and the emo kid waiting for each other to move. Because the Brent wants to go where the emo kid doesn't go and the emo kid wants to go where Brent goes. And the refs are, or not the refs, but the soccer coaches are like, come on, come on. Kind of like, guys, get in the line. And Brent's like, okay. And he sprints to the end of the line. And then the emo kid sprints to the back of that line. And the coach is like... Emo kid, says his actual name. Can you go to another line? Like, that line's too long. The emo kid's like, okay, moves over one line, and when the coach turns his head, the emo kid literally runs back into the line with Brent again. So when the coach turns around, he's like, wait, emo kid, I I said, could you go to that line? And he's like, fine. Emo kid eventually goes to that line, actually does that. So for the rest of the soccer practice, the emo kid tried to, like, bump into Brent, tried to make his life difficult, basically was just being a big butt the entire time. But um, thankfully, right, you know, that nothing really happened. He didn't bump into Brent successfully again. In fact, the emo kid, most of the time when he tried to bump into Brent, Brent would do some, like, very slick soccer move, kind of, like, break his ankles, not literally, but you know what I mean. And the emo kid would, like, fall flat on his face because he kind of, like, tried to run into Brent and then... Brent sidestepped him and completely swerved out of his way. Anyways, though, 
things start to get a little bit more interesting because throughout the next day, Bren and Emily are talking it up. It's very, it's very like, it's kind of like the known thing for the camp that like those two were kind of like the unofficial soccer camp couple. I don't know if your camps had stuff like that, but this was true for the soccer camp. And word was that like the two of them, they were going to kiss soon. Oh my God, guys, isn't that like 12th base or something? <laughs> So sure enough, right, one of, one of these days, so like a day later, Emily and Brent are just sitting with each other at lunch. They're kind of on like a quote-unquote date or whatever. And that's when a girl comes over and sits next to them. And Emily's like, oh, this is my friend Robin. And Robin's like, hey guys, like, uh, I just want to let you know, Emily, that the kid over there, and points to the emo kid, is planning to ask you out soon. And Emily's like, dude, I don't know that kid. I've never spoken to him in my life. And Brent's like, oh my god, I know exactly who that kid is. Emily's like, what? And Brent basically tells her the story that I told you guys for the last 13 minutes. And she's like, oh my god, he's the worst. And Brent's like, well, that would explain why he really hates me, too. Because, like, not just that I embarrassed him, but I've been hanging out with you the entire time. And, you know, he probably knows that we've been talking a lot. And Emily laughs a little bit. And this is when Robin says, dude, like, I'm serious, This kid is going to come over and ask you out within like the next 24 hours. He's going to do it publicly. It's going to be really embarrassing. I, everyone's told him not to do it, but he's in his own world. You got to put, you got to let, you got to let him down nicely though. And you know, Brent was like, no, no, be, no mercy, no mercy, make him suffer. Emily's like, Brent, I'm not going to make him suffer. I don't know this kid. Brent's like, make him suffer. Emily's like, okay, I'm going to be nice. When he comes over, I'm going to be firm, I'm going to be direct, but I'm going to be nice about it, I'm going to be cordial, and life is going to go back to what it was before. So sure enough, right, Brent now realizes that the emo kid has a massive crush on Emily. And Brent also starts to think about it. When Emily says no to him, and when she starts really, you know, hanging out with me more, and when word gets around that we kiss, because we totally are, this is in Brent's head, right, He's going to actually, like, ramp up the craziness even more than it already is. I think I'm screwed, boys. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment emo down below. I'm going to heart as many comments as I can that say that. That is the secret word of the day. And also, if you want to support the channel and help boost me back into the algorithm, uh, all you got to do is at some point, maybe after this video, maybe later, sit down and watch a bunch of my videos in a row. Maybe while you're playing video games or drawing or cleaning your room or maybe to help you go to sleep. I take that as a compliment now. I understand it. Uh, leave in the comment section down below how you're helping boost the channel. I will heart it. I will say thank you. And I'll even shout some people out like the person on screen right now. Thank you to this person on screen and all of you guys for all the support recently. It's really helped boost the channel. We're growing again. You'll love to see it. Let's get back to the story. So anyways, flash forward to that night, or not that night, but that afternoon. Remember when this is the, like, the mixed gender, just fun, more camp activities? They're playing dodgeball. And sure enough, you know, the emo kid and Brent actually happen to be on the same team this time. So, like, emo kid and Brent, they're picking up the dodgeballs, they're throwing them, you know, they're trying to avoid being hit by the dodgeballs. And the emo kid walks over and is like, sup, bro? And Brent's like, what? Emo kid's like... I just want to let you know that, like, I know that you and Emily, or you have been trying to flirt with Emily, and it's been failing horribly for my sources, at least. That's what my sources said. And I just want to let you know that, you know, I I let you have your fun. I let you play like the little beta little lamb you are. (laughs) But I'm actually going to come in and, as the alpha male, assert my dominance and claim what is mine. Emily shall be my girlfriend by the end of tomorrow. Mark my words, and I will watch as little tears roll down your face because you're so sad that I took your girl. Oh, little Brent, I'm so sorry. (laughs) Brent's like, dude, she's not gonna... I've talked to her. She's gonna say no. Like... I, like, don't do it. I hate you, but I know for a fact that you're going to get rejected in front of everyone. The emo kid's like, nice try, little boy. I know for a fact that my testosterone is 10 trillion and yours is zero. So based on that alone, plus a billion other factors, such as my manliness, my alpha maleness, 
my swag overall levels and a billion more things. Just she will obviously say yes to me. And even if you two are fake dating, she'll break up with you immediately to say yes to me. I just know some things that you don't know, Brent. Get over it. So the emo kid walks away. And Brent's like, well, you know, my conscience is clear because I tried to warn the kid not to do it. I tried to warn the kid, right? I'm not a bad guy. I told him not to do it. I told him. I said, I even gave him the benefit of the doubt. I said, I don't like you, but I want to help you here. He didn't listen to me. It's not my fault. Whatever happens tomorrow. Next day rolls around at soccer practice. The emo kid for the entire morning is like, Brent, Brent, better spend the last moments with Emily as you can because she's about to be my girlfriend. Oh, and Brent's like, dude, shut, shut up, dude. He's like, oh my God, am I getting to you, man? Am I, am I getting to you, man? Oh man, it was so easy to break your thin, weak, beta skin. Oh my God, my words are hurting you so much. I'm gonna lick up your little salty tears. Mm, they're so tasty and so good. And Brent's like, shut up, bro. You're gonna get embarrassed. I can't wait for the moment. She better go hard. Anyways, flash forward to lunch, the moment. So anyways, Brent is sitting with Emily and Emily's like, dude, the emo kid, I can't see him anywhere. And Brent's like, dude, he's going to ask you out. It's happening. Get over it. It's going to happen any second. She's like, he, he's going to do in the next day, which means probably now, probably now in front of everyone. And, you know, Brent's like, that's what he said he would do. And Brent was like, oh, my God. Don't turn around because Brent was looking and the emo kid was walking over. And what was he walking over with? He was walking over with a boom box. <laughs> you already know where this is going. And Brent's like, you know what? Brace yourself. Um, try and have an out-of-body experience right now so you don't have to deal with what's about to happen. Um, this is about to be bad, Emily. I'm so sorry. And Emily's like, oh my God, oh my God. And that's when you start to hear music. It's the emo kid's personal band. So it's like this heavy metal rock band. So just imagine some like heavy metal rock going in the background. And the lyrics are, Emily, yeah, yeah, yeah. Emily, why, why, why do you hang with losers like Brent? Emily, please love me. Yeah. And it's just kind of like more stuff like that in the background. And the emo kid is like rocking out by himself with an air guitar while this is all going on. It is the worst moment of Brent's life because the second hand embarrassment is so strong he's basically getting first-hand embarrassment from the whole thing everyone has stopped eating and turned around including the camp counselors they're just watching this kid bounce around with an air guitar with his like super long black bangs flying around all around the place as this boombox plays one of the sh the crappiest songs they've ever heard the wor terribly mixed the worst lyrics basically saying the brent sucks and that she should be in love with him and he's bouncing around and then after five whole excruciating minutes and everyone at this point is laughing and trying to hold themselves together after five whole long excruciating minutes of the worst music ever and some like really bad air guitar and bouncing around the song stops and the emo kid says emily it is clear who you shall choose what is your verdict? And Emily's like, I'm sorry, I don't know you. I'm not going out with you. Emo kid's like, that's hilarious. What's your actual verdict? Emily's like, dude, I don't know you. He's like, dude, that's hilarious. What's your actual verdict? And Brent's like, all right, man, that's enough. Let's, 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 let's concede while we're behind. The emo kid looks at Brent and says, this isn't over, man. And he walks away with his boombox. And Brent's like, why did he say that to me? I, I, didn't, didn't, I didn't dump him. And Emily's like, dude, that was worse than I could have ever imagined. And right, so Robin, the friend who warned them, came over again and said, look, I should have warned you about that. I didn't, I didn't think it was real. I didn't even think that that was actually going to happen. I was told earlier this morning, and I laughed. I'm so sorry. I should take, take anything that you hear about this kid seriously from this point on because, oh, my God. And Emily's like, wait. Oh, no, we still have an activity tonight, like, for the, like, this afternoon. And Brent's like, oh, my God, he said this isn't over. And sure enough, it was far from over. So they get to the activity that afternoon. So it was probably the worst possible activity that it could have been because it was small groups of charades. 
they kind of ran out. They they had something else planned, but since it started to rain, they had to go inside. So they're like, all right, we're going to break you off into small groups of three, and we're going to have you play charades with each other. And at this point, like, they're like, okay, what are the odds? Brent's like, what are the odds that I'm put with? And the person says, Brent, Emily, and Emo Kid. And Brent's like, you got to be joking, man. You got you to gotta be joking. Apparently, right, Robin tells him this, like, later on, like, once the camp is over, apparently they email because she was talking with one of the camp counselors about everything that went down. The camp counselor said that like once like it started to rain, the emo kid went up to them and asked what they were doing. Camp counselor said, "Oh, we're doing groups, small groups of trades." And the emo kid requested that his two best friends and him were put together in a group. So it wasn't just random; it was the emo kid. But Brent didn't know that at the time. So Brent looks at Emily, and Emily looks at Brent, and they're both both but they're both basically just like, "Oh boy." And they, then they both look at the emo kid, who has a massive smile on his face. So all three of them go away to a corner. And the emo kid's like, Emily, I might have came on too strong. And she's like, well, that's an understatement. But he's like, I will show you the truth. Brent, I challenge you to an alpha battle. Brent's just like, what's an alpha battle? Ha, you're such a beta for not knowing what, what an alpha battle is, beta. He's like, an alpha battle will be proof that I am alpha and you are a weak beta. And then Emily will choose me. And Emily's like, I'm not. And he's like, wait, your, your heart will tell you otherwise after the alpha battle. Emily's like, okay, I'm still not going to. She's like, God, stop, silence, woman. And Brent was like, whoa, chill out, dude. He's like, you silence too? We're having an alpha battle right now. So, right, this is kind of looks like they're doing really weird charades from afar, but the emo kid is like, all right, let's form our best wolf poses. Brent's like, what? He said, form your best wolf poses now. And emo kid, uh, Brent's like, all right, all right. Ooh. Emo kid's like, that is the worst wolf pose I've ever seen. You were definitely not part wolf like I am. And the emo kid does this really weird pose. He's like, oh, my God. Uh, I'm wolfing so hard right now. This is the most emo thing. I mean, the most <laughs> the most alpha thing I've ever done. Oh, my God. At this point, Emily's like, guys, you are both embarrassing yourselves. Emo kid is like, no, you will see that I'm the most alpha. I swear. Emo kid's like, all right, let's do it. Wrestle me. And, you know, Brent's like, what? Emo kid jumps on top of him, just tackles him to the ground. Because he's like 20 pounds heavier, right? And a little bit taller. And Brent was completely taken off guard. He's like, bro, stop. What are you doing? And the emo kid's like, I'm out alphaing you. That's when one of the cam counselor comes over and says, all right, guys, break it up, break it up. Tears the two of them apart. He's like, all right. So we're only doing this for 20 more minutes, but it looks like, uh, Looks like you two can't keep, you know, can't keep off of each other. So I'm going to be joining your group. Imagine how awkward this is. It is Emily and Brent, the emo kid, and a random camp counselor. So they do normal charades, right? And the entire time, the emo kid is, like, sneaking in punches to Brent's arm. He's like, ow. And when the camp counselor looks up, the emo kid puts his arms behind his back. And the emo kid is like, this isn't over, man. And then the emo kid walks over to Emily. He's like, tss, tss, Emily, tss. Emily's like, what? Do you think I'm more alpha? Shut up, kid. Emo kid's like, no. Okay, well, okay, I'll just be direct. Do you want to go out with me? No. And the camp counselor was like, guys, silence while I'm doing charades. And Emily's like, dude, I don't want to go out with you. How many times do I need to tell you this? Emo kid's like, but I'm definitely more alpha. She's like, that's not a real thing. So the next day rolls around. It's Thursday. And that afternoon, there's no real activity. It's just known as, like, the uh, soccer dance or whatever. And during the soccer dance, there's one coveted slow song where anyone who has feelings for each other might ask for, like, a slow song or something. And sure enough, let's just jump to the dance because the emo kid is, like, being a jerk to Brent all day. But that's not anything new. And sure enough, it is the dance. And they're putting on normal songs. And Emily and Robin and Brent are all together like, dude. And Robin's like, dude, the emo kid is definitely going to try and get that slow song with you. Like, Brent, you got to swoop in right away. Because at this point, Brent and Emily were, like, unofficially a thing. They're only at camp for a week. So they're not going to make, like, a a long-term relationship. Let's have kids, baby. Okay, okay, you know what I mean. But sure enough, uh, you know, the slow song comes on. 
And Brent's like, oh my God. And Emily's like, quickly. And you can see the emo kids sprinting from the other side of the room. So Emily and Brent quickly like get together in the slow song, kind of like whatever. And Emily's standing there and she feels Brent being ripped off of him. And the emo kid grabs Brent, rips him off Emily and tackles him on the ground. And this is where the camp counselors are like, oh, okay, foul play, foul play. They go in, they grab the emo kid and they like run it like they they take him off they're like all right buddy this is like your third strike and you are out so they call up the parents of the emo kid they say your kid your son can't come tomorrow he's like fighting this one kid again and again and he won't stop and so sure enough the emo kid was picked up taken away and brent and emily finished off with a slow song together the next day rolls around it is friday it is only a half day where basically the parents come and watch a little like soccer presentation that all the kids have done and by the end of it right you know most people are packing up brent and emily are gone and you remember the friend robin from the beginning one of the camp counselors and robin were like friends or whatever or like friendly and the camp counselor counselors like do you happen to know about that like emo looking kid like do you happen to know what was up with him and robin's like do I have a click story on the video on screen right now? You. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. From a kid who argues with the teacher over if the sun is real or not, yeah, the sun, to a kid who thinks sitting in chairs is offensive, these are the craziest Gen Z kids you've ever seen. Let's go. So we're going to go. <coughs> Sorry, we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted this story, Jesse. Anyways, so in Jesse's class, there is a kid, and we're just gonna call him the Gen Z kid, right? So the Gen Z kid is sitting in class, and today they were learning about space or something. I don't totally know why this happened. So this was in fifth grade. I think they were just doing like a small unit on space or something. And the teacher was saying something about like, yada yada, this planet, whatever. And then she said something about the sun. And uh, this kid uh, spent a lot of time on TikTok. And the thing is, right, TikTok, super addictive. You know, the algorithms are made to keep you on there. But also, there's a lot of misinformation that spreads on there because you see someone who says something and it blows up and it reaches a bunch of people and there's no real fact-checking or sources cited. And you kind of just take them at face value, or maybe not you, but a lot of people do. So this kid, the Gen Z kid, must have seen a TikTok in his For You page being like, guys... The sun isn't real because I have never been to the sun before, therefore it doesn't exist. Which some kind of some kind of like backwards ridiculous logic that makes no sense at all, but it's said with like ominous spooky background music number 28. So anyone who sees it's just like, oh my god, you're right. So yeah, anyways, this all happened when the teacher mentioned something about the sun. And the TikTok kid literally smirks, gives a little laugh, and says out loud, the sun. Don't tell me you guys still believe in the sun. And kind of looking around, right? So Jesse's looking at this kid who literally laughs and says, don't tell me you guys look at the sun. Or li look at the sun. Don't tell me you guys still believe in the sun. As he like looks around at all the other classmates. And uh, believe it or not, all the other classmates, instead of being in agreement, laughing a lot. I, I bet the TikTok kid imagined in his little scenario that what was actually was going to happen with all the other kids were going to be like, oh, yeah, that's so ridiculous. Don't worry, man. We also don't believe in the sun. We saw that niche, obscure, disinformation TikTok video as well. That's totally real. But no, everyone looks at the kid and the teacher stops like teaching for a second because the teacher's like, come again now? Like, what? And the spoil, not, not the spoiled kid. I'm so used to telling stories about spoiled kid. Um, the Gen Z kid looks at the teacher. He's like, wait. You guys actually still believe in the sun? And he, like, looks around all, like, confused or whatever. And it, everyone's kind of looking at him like, dude, what are you even saying right now? And the kid's like, guys, do not tell me that you guys are falling for the machine and believing that the sun is real. I saw a video on TikTok yesterday that was all like, the sun isn't real because tell me, have you ever been to the sun? No. So, and I was thinking about it. I was like, dude, my mind just opened up. It's true. I've, I've never actually been to the sun before. So it probably isn't even a thing. So you guys are really believing into the system. And, and, and Jesse's like, dude, like you can see it in the sky. And, and like, if you look at it for too long, your, your eyes hurt. And like, if you're in the sun for too long, your skin burns. Like it, it definitely is there, man. And then this, like the Gen Z kid looks at Jesse and he's like, dude, 
don't tell me you're falling for the disinformation. It's probably like a government thing. And, and Jesse's looking at this kid like, what, your, your best response to me saying you can see it and like it hurts your eyes and your skin. The best response to that, which is totally logical, is it's probably a government dot dot thing question mark. What? Like, dude, I thought you said the government, like the sun wasn't even real. And uh, so the teacher kind of steps in and is like, hey, like Gen Z kid, the sun is real. It's like, you can even see it. I, I don't know where you saw this video on TikTok or whatever that kids are on, right? But that's not true. The sun is real. <laughs> trust me. And, you know, the Gen Z kid's like, dude, why should I trust you? Like, you're definitely in bed with the government and... uh because of this teaching gig where you're making all this money to spread disinformation. And the teacher's just looking at this kid like, bro, you think I became a teacher for the money? And the teacher starts laughing because if you guys don't know, teachers do a really important job, but they're definitely not compensated that well. You do not go into teaching because you're trying to make some fat stacks. Not a single person would do that unless they had no idea unless they knew literally nothing about teaching and especially teaching compensation, would they ever go into teaching to make money, right? So the teacher's like, look, I survive, but I definitely am not making money. And I'm definitely also not paid by the government to spread disinformation. And the, the, the Gen Z kid's like, all right, guys, that's enough of this nonsense. And he stands up and he's like, okay, I, I'm, I'm calling it right now. We have a max, mass exodus from this class. Anyone who believes the sun is fake, get up right now and walk out of this class so that the truth can be heard. And the kid gets up and the Gen Z kid legitimately looks around the classroom expecting like every single kid to rise up and be like, yeah, man, you're right. The sun is not real at all, dude. I believe in you. You're saying what's right. But uh, what actually ended up happening was Every single kid, including Jesse, just stayed in their seat. It was almost as if they were sitting harder than usual, whatever that means. They were just emphasizing that they were sitting. It was like sitting with an exclamation point, not a period. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. But they were all just looking at this kid like, dude, you're freaking embarrassing yourself right now, man. Like, what are you saying, dude? And the kid's like, so you're all part of the system and believe in the sun. You know what? I'm going to take my truth with me. And, and if you realize the truth someday, well, it's too late for you. Goodbye. And the kid legitimately gets up and walks out of the classroom. So basically, uh, the teacher had to go find him outside of class and have a little discussion about him, about, you know, he can believe what he wants and he can do what, think what he wants, right? But he can't disrupt the classroom. And, you know, the teacher, like he showed the teacher the video and apparently the teacher was almost immediately able to like point out the logical fallacies. And eventually the kid's like, okay, I guess I concede that maybe the sun is real. And I guess I concede that perhaps you're not paid hundreds of millions of dollars by secret government agents to spread disinformation. Cause like the teacher showed him his car and it's like, this is not what I buy if I had a hundred billion dollars. And yeah, so eventually the kid came back to class the next day. Um, he was kind of known as the son is fake kid for a while, but eventually kind of blew over. And if you thought that that Gen Z kid was crazy, you're not even ready for the next one. Because we're going to call the subscriber who submitted that one James. So anyways, right, uh, there's a kid in James's class who is the very typical Gen Z Twitter type person where, like, I, I don't know, it's almost like a professional sport to try and become offended by everything. And let me just set the record clear. Like, there are things that people should be genuinely offended by. Like, it is totally understandable if someone does something or says something that is completely out of pocket. Like, there are instances, right? And also, maybe someone does something they don't even mean to be, like, disrespectful, right? It's better to let them know in a respectful tone that they're being disrespectful by doing X so that they don't disrespect someone else. It's good to do that, right? However, there are also people, especially Gen Z people, that almost take this like as a lifelong crusade to find a problem with everything and to minimize or to maximize every small speck and to, well, what if this and then that and then this and then that and then this and that and I may think that's offensive now. So this kid uh, kind of took that to the extreme and we're going to call this kid the Gen Z kid. So anyways, James was in class with this kid and this kid was kind of just known 
for being a little weird, for just being a little strange, right? Um, so one day he comes into class and he tells the teacher that he today is protesting the class. And the teacher looks at him and is like, dude, oh my God, what? He's a, and the, so the teacher's like, okay, um, can you at least tell me why you're protesting the class today? Like, can you let me know why you're protesting the class? Like, can you inform, can you enlighten me a little bit? And the kid was like, yeah. So you know what? I prefer to sit on the ground. I was thinking about this and I like lying on the ground when I'm at home. It is easier for me to do my homework. It's better for my digestion. I prefer to sit on the ground. And there are no options for me to do so in this classroom. All the tables have chairs on them for the people who enjoy sitting. But my preferences of laying on the ground are not being accommodated, which I find extremely offensive. So I am protesting this class until this gets fixed. And dude, like James was in class and he was just like, dude, what? So everyone was sitting there just like, bro, Twitter is a person's going crazy again. Like what's going on now? And they're listening in and like James turns to his friend. He's like, this gotta be a bit, right? Like this gotta be a big practical joke. And they check the calendar and it wasn't April 1st. They're like, oh my God. It's like August 28th or like October 24th. It's not April 1st. What's going on? Yeah, so sure enough, um, the teacher is kind of really like weirded out by this, but they're also like, okay. The teacher realizes that they can't just like snap on this kid and kind of like be realistic with them. Like they have to, they cave a little bit, but they're just trying to be, they're just trying to de-escalate the situation. So the teacher's like, okay, um, I really don't think you should uh, protest the class. Uh, I can definitely see if there's like a rug or something in the, uh, I don't know, the closet, if you really wanted to lay on it. Like you could do that if you really wanted to. Like uh, you could also just lay on the ground. And the, the Gen Z kid is like, what? Lay on the ground? And which is just like, I don't know why they were so like, 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 wow, that's insane. Cause didn't they just say that they like laying on the ground at, at home? But sure enough, they're like, I want something built for me to lay on, which is like, bro, the whole point of laying on the ground is you're laying on the ground. You're not laying on your bed. Basically what this kid ended up like, cause at this point, James is starting to realize that all this kid was saying was that they don't prefer to lay on the ground. They prefer to lay on a bed. And the fact that the school didn't have like 28 beds in a classroom for all the kids to lay on is, oh no, that's, that's bad, man. Cause, oh yeah, if kids are not allowed to lay in their beds in class, oh no, oh, good heavens, dude, they have to sit in a seat. You have to sit in a chair like everyone else. Oh no. Yeah. So the teacher starts to catch on too. And it's like, um, no, like you can lay on the ground if you want, but I can't do anything beyond that. And the kid, the Gen Z kid is like, starts laughing. And everyone in the class is like, uh, did they just like, did a screw literally just fall out of their head? Like, what's going on right now? Why is this kid laughing? So the kid's laughing. The kid's like, oh, Mr. Teacher, you just made a huge mistake. You don't know what you just did. I'm going to go to the front office and I'm going to say that you were discriminating against my preferences and you're going to get fired. And then the kid laughs again. And James, this turns to his friend, like, for a second, James is like, wait, could they actually do that? But yeah, so sure enough, the Gen Z kid storms out of class. Um, the teacher didn't look that concerned because I think the teacher realized that he probably couldn't be, probably, right? Probably, probably couldn't be fired um, because a kid uh, was mad that they didn't have a bed in class for them to lay on. Most likely that was not going to result in him getting booted from his like 10 year long position at like this. I, I don't know. Unlikely. So the, the anyways, the Gen Z kid marches up to the front office. And uh, so, I mean, James doesn't know exactly what happened, but he heard bits and pieces and can assume what happened because, you know, he wasn't like there in the office with them. But uh, anyways, um, sure enough, Gen Z, a Gen Z girl or whatever, right? Gen Z kid goes up to the front office, demands to speak with the principal, uh, has to wait like 20 minutes because like law and order, right? The principal is other thing that they need to do. Tells it to the principal about the horrors of not having a bed personally set aside for them and how that's what they want to do. 
and when the teacher didn't like uh, cave to the fact that they wanted a bed in class, that that they must be fired because that is her preference. She wants to sleep in a bed. And uh, the principal, like, I, I think the I think the principal knew that like the principal had a bit more power in this situation than a teacher does. So the principal kind of gave it to her straight and was like, "Dude, no, the real world, right?" is not going to cave to every single preference you have. It's not going to do everything you want to. If every kid has to sit in a seat, then every kid has to sit in a seat. Just, like, think logistically for a second what it would be like if we got 20 beds in a classroom. First of all, a lot of kids, like, what if they wanted to have seats? And then you'd have to have seats and beds. Also, beds are not conducive to good studying. And just a lot of stuff like that. And, yeah, the Gen Z girl had to come into class the next day completely defeated and it was a little embarrassing for her. If you thought that those Gen Z kids were bad, this final one is like the pinnacle of Gen Z. So anyways, we're gonna call a subscriber who submitted this story, Ash. Uh, you guys ca catch the pattern so far? Jesse, James, Ash, OG Pokemon people, you know what that is? I haven't watched Pokemon forever, but I used to as a kid. Anyways, so there's a kid in his class who we're gonna call the Gen Z kid. So this kid, um, he had a TikTok account and he posted a video of his dog doing something and it got like 50,000 views. And that sounds really good and 50,000 views is really cool. Um, I mean, I'd be happy if I got 50,000 on TikTok. That sounds pretty good. But at the end of the day, some stuff on TikTok will just randomly go viral and uh, it's not as if he gained like 10,000 followers who follow him because of his dog and he can make a branded account out of his dog, right? Like build a, like a brand around that because like Doug the Pug and some other, there are like legitimate brands built around dogs. Um, but no, he just had a random video, got 50K and this kid, the Gen Z kid, believed that he now was gonna become a TikTok celebrity and drop out to pursue his quote unquote passion of TikTok. Like bro, what? Real quick, comment. Gen Z if you made it this far to the video. And also check us out on Spotify. It will be in the pinned comment down below. You can listen to these as podcasts on there. And it helps me out if you do. Anyways, so sure enough, um, this kid started going around telling everyone that it was so great to get to know them. And remember, they're in sixth grade or whatever, that it was so great to get to know them that when he was rich, famous, successful, and had a six pack, 12 pack body abs, movie star type lifestyle, right? Living with his laptop on a jet, on a plane, on a boat, on a mansion, that you know what, he would, he would, he would remember them. And if they were lucky enough that they could stay at his uh, mega yacht mansion boat jet, uh, super cool Cobra sort, I, I don't even know at this point. Anyways, he was, go basically, he was going around telling people that he came to the conclusion that he was going to drop out to pursue TikTok, which, look, I'm actually not 100% against people really, like, honing in on their skills. If they, get, if they get a shot of virality on a social media platform, I don't suggest dropping out unless you have a very scalable, sustainable, six, seven-figure income from that stuff because it can go away insanely fast. But I do actually suggest if you get a short burst of attention on a social media platform, I am all for you digging in and trying to build something out of that that maybe can turn into something bigger. But that's a more serious discussion for a different platform at a different time. I do not suggest you drop out of school because one of your TikTok videos goes viral by accident and you gain no traction from it. So people were immediately telling the kid, like, oh, wait, why are you dropping out? Like, do you have an account you, we don't know about? And he's like, no, look at this. And he, like, pulls out his phone. And he shows them the video. And the video is, is, has like 52,000 views, which is cool. But dude, first of all, that's only 52,000 views, which, look, I remember the days when I'd be happy with 30 views, but we're talking about dropping out of school. 52,000 views is nothing. And second of all, it's on TikTok with short form content, which is way easier to get views on. I don't know how. I haven't been able to, and I've tried a bit, but just generally much easier too. So yeah, eventually he comes up to Ash, gives the whole steal of like, oh man, I'm gonna be so rich and I'm dropping out because I'm gonna be a TikToker. And Ash kind of like tells him straight up, like, dude, I don't think you should do that. Like, I get it. Like you had a video do well, which like you totally could have the time to, and also they're in sixth grade. It's not like you still, I think you still like legally need to be in school at that point. It's like, dude, like, first of all, I don't even know if you can drop out of school. Second of all, why can't you just do both? Like, I really, like, think you could put in the time for both doing both. Um, and also, 
look, this, this video going viral is cool and all, like, congratulations, man. But this isn't enough to really stand on alone. Like, this really isn't as impressive as maybe you may think it is. And, you know, the TikTok kid immediately when he hears this is like, dude, you're just jealous of my success on this platform. Like, you're just jealous that you're not going to be able to drop out of school and live the laptop luxury safari uh, mega jet uh, 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 victory yacht mansion lifestyle that I'm going to. And uh, Ash is like, or Ash is like, all right, bro, like, cool, live your life. And so, yeah. Actually, this kid stopped showing up to class entirely because Ash had one or two classes with them. And Ash was really surprised because he was sure that this kid, because this kid is, had been known for like telling lies a lot, telling tall tales and all this kind of time, all this type of stuff, right? But he never actually expected this kid was going to follow through with, oh, I'm going to drop out to pursue TikTok. First of all, because you can't even drop out in sixth grade. Uh, you'd have to become like homeschooled. And that's not even really dropping out. This is taking, you know, being homeschooled, right? So sure enough, this kid had told nobody, but he stopped attending classes to pursue TikTok. And in all fairness, this kid was posting a lot of videos on TikTok, right? But one thing that you'll learn when you, if you ever try to make like content or whatever, is you kind of need to stick to the same niche or maybe not the same. You need to have a, can, like a continuous theme in your content because people will follow you to get something, right? They, they want to be entertained or informed or something. If I started making random vlogs and then cooking videos in the math tutorials alongside my stories, they wouldn't perform well because people came to me for my stories, for the commentary, whatever you guys came to me for, right? So this kid was posting like 12 times a day and he was posting like random vlogs. He's like, hey guys, dropping out of school vlog, episode one. And then he'd be like, hey guys, so this is me playing video games. And they'd be like, hey guys, and, they all, like, all the views was, like, 20 views, 40 views, which is whatever, and it's fine. And if you're just doing TikTok for fun, who cares how many views you get? I don't care if you get zero views, man, like, you did something for fun. But this kid was doing it because he dropped out. Yeah, so he didn't actually drop out. All he did was he stopped attending classes. So after a couple days of not attending classes, this kid's parents got a message from the school being like, kid's about to be on probation he's not he's like dropping out of all he's not attending classes has he been home like you guys got to let us know if he's sick or he's not coming in and the parents obviously freaked out and they confronted the kid and the kid's like i was pursuing my business endeavors which posting to like 12 people on tiktok is not a business endeavor if you have like millions of people and you're able to convert that to a product or maybe convert other people to someone else's product and make a commission off of that then fair enough, that is a business, right? However, this is not a business. And his parents were like, dude, you can't just not show up to class too. Like what? So yeah, after this kid, the Gen Z kid, was talking all this smack about how he's going to live his uh, laptop luxury lifestyle to everyone. Within two days, he's back in classes. And uh, I think Ash tells me that at least most people were cool about it. Like they weren't going to taunt this kid because whatever, like, it's just not worth the energy. But apparently one kid actually did go up to him and be like, yo, dude, did you drive in today in your Lamborghini Bugatti? Like, what color is your Bugatti, bro? Like, I'm actually really excited to see it. I mean, I know you're still here, but did you, like, chart in on your super yacht or something? Like, dude, where's your Bugatti? Yeah, he was, like, messing with the kid or whatever. But other than that, it just goes to show, dude, Gen Z kids, I'm a Gen Z kid, technically. Guys, don't believe everything on the internet, for the love of God. Oh my God. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. How is it going, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a good day. Today, we got three stories of Minecraft kids that I know you will enjoy. So let's just go ahead and jump into the first one. We're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story, Peter. And by the way, all these stories are on Spotify, linked in the description. You'll probably even hear them about an hour earlier before they go up on here if you find them on Spotify. Anyways, so Pete, we're going to call the first subscriber who submitted this story, Peter. And anyways, right, Peter was in a class, and in Peter's class, there was an assignment that they all had to do. And this assignment was the, what do you want to do when you grow up assignment? And you got kids coming in being like, oh, I want do youtube oh i want to be a doctor 
oh, I want to be president of the United States. Oh, I want to do your mom. There's like a lot of things that people came in and said like, oh, this is what I want to do, right? So it was kind of like done that you had a presentation, you would uh, go home and kind of prepare a little bit and then you go up there. I think a couple of stories ago, someone else submitted something with uh, their class had a similar type thing. And I know I had something like this. So this might just be a thing that happens to everyone in like second grade. I don't know. Tell me in the comments if it's true or not. But anyways, right, so sure enough, you know, Peter wanted to be, he wanted to be a doctor, which is pretty standard, at, like pretty standard response. When I was 10, I wanted to be a doctor, and then I learned about medical school. But anyways, right, so, you know, Peter, you know, has this little thing. He wants to be a doctor or whatever. And eventually, let's just skip forward to the day of class. Let's just skip forward to the day where, you know, they're actually presenting. And, uh, you know, Peter goes up there. He has a doctor's costume he bought or whatever. And, uh, you know, sure enough, it's fine. It's whatever. That's not the interesting thing. There's a kid in Peter's class who we're going to call the Minecraft kid because all, all, all bro does is play Minecraft. Like literally every, every single day when he gets back from school, doesn't even do his homework. Screw that. Does Minecraft. In class, he's asleep so he can stay up all night to play Minecraft. This bro's life literally revolves around Minecraft. Don't get me wrong, Minecraft is a cool game. I use it for all my background footage. It has a integral place in my childhood. Like, I love Minecraft, great game, right? However, please have a life outside of it. That, that, that's all I ask, that's all I ask, man. But anyways, right, sure enough, the Minecraft kid walks up to the front of the class and uh, everyone was kind of expecting him to say like, I don't know, I wanna, uh, I don't know, work for a video game company. I want to work for Mojang. I want to be a computer pro programmer so I can make video games or whatever. Or maybe even like I want to stream on Twitch, which is like even that's a little that's a little iffy, which you don't even want me to go into the statistics of how difficult that is. Anyways, and I won't because I want watch time and good retention. So sure enough, you know, the, the Minecraft kid goes up there and Peter's kind of interested to see what he's going to say because he's kind of expecting the Minecraft kid to say something a little bit goofy. Like not too crazy, but just a little bit goofy. Just a little bit on the goofy side, right? And the Minecraft kid goes up there and says, you know, all I want to do when I grow up is just keep playing Minecraft. And he brings with him, like, you know that like fake you know, Minecraft sword, like a foam one that like you can buy for like $20 or something. I just, I just know it cause I got it for my fifth grade birthday party and I might still have it or I might have had my mom thrown it out without me knowing, which is a shame, but whatever, right? And so he brings this and he kind of swings it around. It's like, yep, all I do every day is I play Minecraft. When I go home, I go home and I play Minecraft and I stay up all night to do it. That's why I'm never paying attention in class or doing anything like that. You know, and I want to let you know that no one can tell me otherwise. All I'm going to do with my life is play Minecraft every single day. And the teacher's like, hey, I like this wasn't this project wasn't about, you know, what's your favorite hobby? What's your favorite pastime? This project was about like, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Or what do you want to do as a profession? There's a difference between, you know, choosing to do something casually and choosing to do something professionally. And the thing is, right, this wasn't even a teacher who's like, if you're not a doctor or a lawyer, then you're not a real worker. Like it wasn't one of these like old fashioned teachers who doesn't understand like new, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say, like a teacher that doesn't understand kind of the new scheme of jobs. The teacher literally let a kid say, hey, I want to be a YouTuber, but if that doesn't work, I'm going to go to college to for digital marketing or something like that. The teacher was fine with that. The teacher understands the new landscape of work. But the thing is, there's a difference between saying, between saying hey, I want to pursue playing video games online, and if that doesn't work, then I want to do X, and saying, I want to sit inside and do video games all day, specifically Minecraft all day, because, bro, let me just let you know, there's really no professional Minecraft leagues that pay you anything, right? There, I, I might be wrong. There might be, like, a professional Minecraft league that pays you, like, a couple hundred bucks if you win a tournament, but, dude, that's not enough to sustain yourself. Like, there are no, like, maybe, maybe if you wanted to say, yeah, I want to be professional, like, Counter-Strike or a game like that, maybe. But even that is a massive stretch. And sure enough, the Minecraft kid didn't even say anything like that. He just said, I want to sit inside and play Minecraft all day. So Peter's just like, oh boy, because Peter's sitting down. He's watching the teacher really just like not be cool with this. And the Minecraft kid not even like adapting on the spot. Because one might have thought that, okay, the Minecraft kid realizes that the teacher is not a fan of what he just said. And that maybe if he wants to save his grade, I don't know, adapt it a little bit. Like just switch things up a little bit. 
I, I, I don't know, man. Like, just be like, oh, haha, what I meant is I want to go and learn how to make video games. Like, sure, that's fine. Go to school for programming or something like that. But the Minecraft kid doubles down and says to the teacher, you know, what I want to do when I grow up is I just want to sit at home and do video games. I don't want to do anything else. I don't want anyone to bother me. And I just want to play Minecraft 24-7. And, you know, Peter's just like, oh, boy, this teacher's not going to be happy. And the teacher's like, like, Minecraft kid. Says his actual name, but it's like, Minecraft kid. I want you to know that, you know, I'm going to give you, you know, sit back down, step outside, and I'm going to give you 10 minutes to come up with a real job. Like, I'm going to give you 10 minutes, and I'm being very gracious right now because at the moment, you have a fail on this assignment. Not like the Minecraft kid was really caring about his grades. I mean, he handed in zero homework and basically was failing everything else. But the teacher's like, I'm going to give you 10 minutes of standing outside to come up with something new. And when you're ready, come back in and you may present again. So the Minecraft kid very angrily like walks outside. And the teacher's like, all right, who's coming up next? And the teacher's like, okay, Ben, how about you come up? And within 10 seconds, the door slams open again. And the Minecraft kid says, I'm ready. So the teacher, I don't know if the teacher was just being hopeful because, I mean, come on, he was out for like three seconds. You really think he came up with a new job? No. The teacher might have just been hopeful and was like, oh, that was fast, sure. Come on up. Like, wh what's what's the deal? Like, what's going on? And like, come tell me about your new job. So Minecraft Kid walks to the front of the class again and says, when I go get grow older or when I'm an adult, I just want to sit inside and do Minecraft all day. I said it before and I'm saying it again. Boom. The teacher's like kind of turns to the Minecraft kid and says, I was generous with you. Like, I gave you time to reconsider what you're doing. Like, to, to pr present again. Like, this isn't just what you want to do. This is like a presentation. This is an assignment for the front of the class. And at this point, the Minecraft kid says, so you're saying I can't do that? And the teacher's like, yes, I'm saying that when you're older, you're not going to be able to do that. Sure, you can play video games on, like, in, on the part. Like, you can, play, you can partially play video games. That's totally fine. But you can't entirely play video games. You've got to do other stuff with your life as well. You have to find something that's going to bring you an income. You have to do something more productive than that. And, you know, the Minecraft teacher, uh, the Minecraft teacher, sorry, I'm jumbling my words. The teacher probably would have even been fine if he said, I want to, you know, play my I want to make content around me playing Minecraft. The teacher was in tune with, you know, you can entertain like entertainment is decentralized. Almost anyone can make entertainment. Not almost ever anyone will be successful, but almost anyone can. This isn't like the 80s and 90s where really you either had to like score a really big role in TV or radio or a movie. You can just post something on your phone. It's incredible. So the, the at this point the Minecraft kid was starting to get really angry. And he's like Teacher, I'm going to give you to a count of three to take that back. And the teacher is so taken aback by the fact that the Minecraft kid just said, I'm going to give you a count of three to say to like pretend that you didn't just say what you said. But the teacher's like, are you insane? The Minecraft kid is like, three? And the teacher's like, you don't understand. They're like, I am supposed to be the one giving you a countdown. Minecraft kid's like, two? And the teacher's like, like, what is so wrong with me saying that you can't just sit around and play Minecraft all day? Like, that makes total sense. Like, you, I asked you in the presentation what you should do as a job. And you said sit around and play Minecraft. How do you expect to make any money from that? And the Minecraft kid's like, one. The teacher's like, what? What are you going to do at the end of the countdown? And the Minecraft kid steps over and just like kind of like goes down on one knee and is like bent down, is like, it starts making like weird noises He's like and the teacher's like dude what are you doing okay teacher probably didn't say dude but the teacher's like uh what are you doing and the minecraft kid jumps up springs up and is like you i will fight you in a 1v1 pvp battle and he grabs his minecraft sword and starts like swinging it around trying to be like intimidating but dude it was a foam sword you're playing minecraft you're not intimidating anyone, dude. Like, that's just not happening. And he starts swinging around. He's like, meow, 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 meow. and the teacher's like, okay, I just, uh, like, wh wh what? Why? What are you doing? Like, stop. Stop it. Get some help, bro. Like, what's going on? And he's like, you said that I could do Minecraft every single day for the rest of my life. And the teacher's like, yeah, and I, uh, I, I stand by that. Minecraft kid's swinging around his foam swords like, you're trying to, you're, you don't want me to be happy. You want me to be unhappy. And for that reason, it's you versus me in a PvP fight. 
At this point, Peter is just sitting there just trying to comprehend how everything escalated to this point. Because sure, like the Minecraft kid and the teacher were kind of fighting a bit and they weren't happy with each other. But the Minecraft kid really gave the teacher a 3 to one countdown and then entered into Minecraft PvP mode. He has his like sword out, swinging it all around. And at this point, right, you know, Peter's just like, okay, something's going like this is not going to end well. At this point, right, you know, he's like swinging around his sword. The Minecraft kid's like, I'm going to give you to another count to three to give me a 100% and tell me that I can 100% play Minecraft for the rest of my life. The teacher looks at him and says, no, I would be lying to you if I said that. And Minecraft kid is like, fine, you've chosen your fate. Minecraft kid's like, starts swinging his sword. The teacher says, if that foam sword even touches me for a second, you're failing this assignment and you're going straight to the principal's office. The Minecraft kid says, I will give you another count of three to reconsider it, everything. <laughs> the Minecraft kid is, is obviously realizing at this point that he's in way too deep and he's also not winning. So he thinks that he, if he keeps on saying, I'm going to give you till the count of three, that he is somehow going to win this whole thing. And sure enough, the Minecraft kid counts to three. The teacher's like, okay, like what? What's going to happen now? The Minecraft kid's like, I warned you. Minecraft kid takes his, like, his foam sword, swings, and, and goes, bop, makes contact with the teacher. And at this point, the teacher grabs the sword, rips out of the Minecraft kid's hand, goes over, holds on to both the Minecraft kid's shoulders, and starts walking him out the door. He's like, all right, buddy, uh, that's time to go to the principal's office for you. So the Minecraft kid and the teacher walk out the door, and everyone else is kind of just sitting there like, uh... What? Anyways, next story, we're going to call the subscriber Chris. So Chris has a cousin who we're going to call the Minecraft kid, right? And Chris doesn't really get to know his cousin that well. He doesn't see him that often. But Chris and his mom are over at his aunt's, yeah, it'd be his aunt's house. And, you know, this is the first time, you know, Chris has seen his aunt in years. And the last time Chris saw his cousin, his cousin was like four and then he was really shy and didn't want to talk that much. Now his little cousin was eight years old and was apparently a Minecraft fanatic. He liked playing it so much. He knew everything about it. He watched Minecraft YouTubers when he wasn't playing Minecraft. In his sleep, he dreamed about fighting the Ender Dragon. And, uh, you know, Chris didn't really know that that much, but Chris was kind of told by... Because Chris asked his mom, like, as they're driving there, like, what, what, what should I know? Like, I have to hang out with this kid because Chris was told, oh, you get to hang out with your cousin for a little bit. It'll be good for you. Chris is, like, 16 at this point. He's not going to get along with his cousin on a lot of things. They're not going to have a ton in common. They can't talk about girl troubles at the same level, right? They can't talk about, oh, wow, math is so difficult. Yeah, because Chris's little cousin would be like, yeah, a simple addition really sucks. <laughs> He'd be like, uh... Sure. So sure enough, you know, Chris's mom was like, yeah, okay. So all I know is he's a big fan of like that game Minecraft. And Chris is like, yeah, I've played it a little bit. And by Chris saying that he's played it, literally all he means is, yeah, he and his friends have played some like survival servers at some points. Like they'll be really into it for a week and then they'll not play it for a year. That's how a lot of people actually get into it. You get super into Minecraft servers with your friends. You play for two weeks. You literally play 12 hours a day and then you never touch the game again for week for years. It, that's just how it goes with a lot of people. So Chris and his mom got there and Chris's aunt and Chris's cousin, right? Chris's cousin's actually in a different room, but Chris's aunt greets them. They're like, oh my God, I haven't seen you so long, Chris. You're so much older now. And Chris is in his head is like, yeah, that's kind of how time works, bro. But whatever, right? Sure enough, you know, Chris's aunt was like, hey, Chris, I just want to let you know your little cousin's in the other room and he would love to see you. Did he actually love to see him? Well, I mean, we'll see him in a second. So sure enough, you know, Chris goes into the other room and there's this, the little cousin who's sitting there with an iPad and he's playing, you know, pocket edition Minecraft. And Chris is like, yo, what's up? bro, like, hey, it's me, Chris. I don't remember if you remember me, but I'm your cousin. And Chris's little cousin's like, yeah, I don't, like, hi, how are you doing? And Chris is like, oh, I heard you like Minecraft. And, you know, Chris's little cousin's like, I do. Do you like Minecraft? And Chris in his head is like, he's like, yeah, I'm going to say yes, we're going to bond, and this will be less awkward. So Chris is like, yeah, yeah, I like Minecraft. It's, it's cool. Like, I, I enjoy it. And Chris's little, bro, Chris's little uh, cousin immediately says, so you're an expert? And Chris is like, I don't know, but I played a little bit. And Chris is like, okay, well, riddle me this. So uh, well, well, when, when you kill the Ender Dragon and there's the Ender Dragon egg, how exactly are you to get it? And uh, Chris, who's 
never actually completed the game because he just plays a little bit, right? He's like, oh, you just mine it, right, with a pickaxe. The little cousin's like, meh, wrong, one strike against you. Next question. And Chris is kind of thinking, wait, what? Like, is this some kind of like, well, like, what are we doing here? And, you know, the, the little cousin's like, okay, so if you're fighting an Enderman and you have a bucket, like, what will, a bucket of what, like, what kind of liquid will Enderman not be able to, like, fight you in? And uh, Chris is like, I don't know, um, milk, because he remembered he's able to milk a cow. And Chris's little cousin's like, oh, my God, meh, 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 wrong. Water. Enderman will not fight you in water. I, two strikes, Chris, two strikes. And Chris is kind of like, oh, my God, like, this was, this was supposed to be a bonding experience. This is the opposite of of a bonding experience right now. Like, this is not a bonding experience. This is crazy. And sure enough, you know, Chris is like, okay, man, well, I can play Minecraft with you. He's like, man, final question, and I need you to answer this. And Chris is like, uh, okay. And so this little cousin's like, well, I need to think about it. I got to make it good. And, you know, you're going to suffer the consequences if you don't, like, if you don't finish, if you don't get this question correct. So the little cousin's like, okay. Who is the popular Minecraft YouTuber who has the Minecraft Manhunt series and is green? And the thing is, right, Chris kind of grew up on, you know, the old school Minecrafters. So he was like, uh, Captain Sparkles? And his little brother's like, no, it's Dream, you idiot. You aren't actually a Minecraft fan. You lied to me. And at this point, Chris is like, dude, it's not simply not that deep. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, you betrayed my trust. And the Minecraft kid runs over to him and sinks his teeth into his arm. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Minecraft down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. And I'll just, it'll help me know how many people actually made it to the end of the video. I really do appreciate it when you guys comment the secret word down below so I can see all the names and faces. And if you want to support the channel, just continue watching more videos after this one. Literally just watching more videos supports the channel more than you can ever imagine. And also, it's on Spotify. And if you do watch and listen on Spotify, please rate five stars. And if you want to submit your own stories of Karen, Spoiled Kids... Uh, I don't know, Minecraft kids, crazy things happening in high school, submit them to either my Twitter or Instagram. You can do so by following me on those platforms and then DMing me on there. Uh, by the way, join the Discord server, link in description. Use code CONNORPUGS for 10% off gamer subs. Helps you, helps me. And let's get right back into it. So Chris looks down at his little cousin who has bit him at this point. The little cousin has sunk his teeth into Chris's skin. Thankfully, he doesn't break it and draws blood or anything. And he's just looking at it. He's like, oh, my God. And, like, he shakes him off. He's like, dude. And the little cousin's like, well, that's your punishment for not actually enjoying Minecraft. You're a fraud, a phony, and a, a, a fake lover of Minecraft. You don't actually love Minecraft. You are a fraud, and that's your punishment. So Chris very angrily walks out. And, like, you know, the, the, uh, Chris's mom and his, his Chris's aunt are looking like, oh, what just happened? And Chris is like, like my, like my little cousin like just bit me because he says I'm a fraud. <laughs> fraud alert, fraud owned. But he's like, you know, he's like, he thinks I'm a fraud because I didn't understand all this like really obscure trivia about Minecraft. Like, can you believe this? Like, this is ridiculous. Oh, my God. And at this point, you know, you know, Chris's mom's like, oh, no. And Chris's aunt's like, oh, I forgot to say he's really touchy about the Minecraft subject. And Chris's mom turns to Chris's aunt and is like, you told me that's what he really liked. And Chris's aunt goes on to say, well, yeah, he really likes it, but he takes it really seriously. And if you say you like Minecraft, he assumes that you like it at his level. And he's had so many people before say that they like Minecraft but they just like it casually, that he now thinks that, well, he now thinks that anyone who says that and doesn't know all the obscure trivia that he knows is a fakester, a fraud, or a phony. At this point, you know, Chris is kind of just like, well, why didn't you tell me this before? And you could hear the little cousin screaming, get that fraud out of here, mom. I don't want to hang out with that fraud. And sure enough, Chris's aunt goes into that room and you hear her say like, you better behave yourself. This is 
unacceptable behavior. You hear me? This behavior is unacceptable, and I, I won't stand for it. I simply won't stand for this. You're, you don't see your, you only see your cousin like once a year. This is insane. And Chris is kind of just listening to this, and Chris's mom's like, Chris, I'm so sorry. I did not know. And Chris is like, it's fine. Like, how would you know? Like, I don't know anyone else who does this. Like, I, I simply could not blame you if, even if I wanted to. Like, the situation going down right now, it's just so ridiculous. Like, I, I, I just can't blame you at this point. And so Chris's aunt comes back out and it's like, once again, I am so sorry. Like, none of this was ever supposed to happen. Like, you know what? You can go back in there. And he said they just calmed down. And Chris kind of just looks at his aunt. It's like, he said that? And Chris's aunt's like, well, I mean, he implied that with his actions. Basically, just meant Chris's aunt went in there and kind of like shouted at him till he quieted down. And, uh, you know, sure enough, Chris decides, okay, I'll go back in there. And he, when Chris walks back in, he's like, hey, dude. And, you know, his cousin, the Minecraft kid, is just on the iPad. And, you know, he walks in a little bit. And uh, Chris is like, so, playing some Minecraft? And the little cousin's like, not like you would know. And Chris is like, well, okay, when I said I liked Minecraft, I literally just meant I played a little bit with my friends. I think it's a fun game. And the little cousin's like, if you thought it was a fun game, then you would have known my trivia. And uh, Chris is like, well, not necessarily. Like, just because I don't know every detail about the game doesn't necessarily mean I don't like the game. Like, that just doesn't sound fair to me. And Chris is like, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I, I enjoy playing with my friends. Doesn't mean I don't watch it on YouTube. So that trivia question about knowing that guy, like, doesn't ca like it doesn't matter. Like, I really don't understand why you bit me. And, you know, the little cousin is just, like, playing his Minecraft, but then he pauses his game. So, you know, it's about to get real serious, right? And he closes out his iPad. He's like, I bit you because you're a fraud. You're a fraud who says he likes Minecraft, but really doesn't. Little kid turns around, jumps, and bites Chris on the other arm. And Chris is like, oh, my God. Pushes him off again. Chris st storms out of that room and goes over and is like, Mom, he bit me again. And Chris's mom's like, oh, dear. And his aunt's like, oh. Chris's aunt runs back into the room, shouts at the Minecraft kid again, and shuts the door. And it's like, Chris, you know what? I haven't seen you in a while. How about you stay out here with your mom and I, and we'll just have a discussion here. You and your cousin can, um, you guys can uh, meet each other again, maybe in a couple years, when he's out of this phase. Hopefully this is a phase. I really hope this is a phase. So the final Minecraft story, Minecraft kid story, we're going to call the subscriber who submitted it Bart. Because uh, if you couldn't tell, I got Peter, Chris, and uh, Bart, you know, Family Guy, Simpsons. I'm trying to do themes with these names now. Just keep me and myself interested. Anyways, though, right? So, uh, you know, Bart was in class, and he was in third grade at the time. He was younger on the younger side for sure. I don't know exactly what grade. This could have well been second grade, but let's just say third grade for the just because. And so what they were supposed to do is they were assigned that, you know, they had they could choose any country in the world and they got to decide um, they would have to research it, make a little presentation and eventually present it in front of the entire class. So uh, there was a kid in class who we're just going to call the Minecraft kid. He wasn't even that obsessed with Minecraft. He just really enjoyed the game. And it gets interesting because the Minecraft kid, um, he chose he mixed up basically right he mixed up the nether, the nether, like in Minecraft, and the netherlands, like the place. So anyways, right, it's the day that they're presenting. Bart is sitting next to the, the, the Minecraft kid, and he leans over, and he's like, hey, dude, like, what did, what, where did you choose? And he's like, oh, the nether. And Bart's like, what? Like, you have to choose a country. And the Minecraft kid's like, yeah, it's next to, like, Sweden, Norway. It's, like, in that, of uh, that part of Europe. And Bart's like, oh. Okay, so Bart knows about the Netherlands, right? He just kind of thinks that, you know, the Minecraft kid learned like a short, like a shorthand way to call like, oh, maybe the cool people call the Netherlands the nether, and I just don't know any better. Um, the thing is, though, so Bart went up, he did his presentation, it was totally fine, but the Minecraft kid, he went up to go do his presentation, 
And um, <laughs> the thing is, right, when the Minecraft kid went to go look up, like, the Netherlands, right, he must have written down the Netherlands wrong and wrote down the nether and maybe couldn't read the rest of it. So when he typed into Google the nether, he got, like, Minecraft wiki. He got, like, w he got articles about the in-game Minecraft universe, the nether. And, and he actually ended up, because, look, he's in second or third grade, you know, reality and uh, fiction is kind of a blurred line for kids at that point. So he went up there and he did an entire presentation talking about, like, here's photos. And he literally took screenshots from, like, a really good texture pack of the nether. He's like, up here, like, this far up into Europe, he's like, it's really fiery. It's, uh, there's these floating fire monsters. There's these, like, pig creatures that come after you if you provoke them. And the entire class, like, is just looking at him like, uh, bro. And the teacher just has this smile on his face, like, okay, how are we going to handle this, boys? Like, how are we going to go about this? And, you know, the subscriber, or not the subscriber, the Minecraft kid finishes up his presentation. And, uh, you know, everyone is kind of clapping a little bit. And there's, oh, for every single person, there's a point where people can ask questions. A lot of the times, like, the kids would be like, I don't know. Like, if it's not my presentation, I don't know it. Um, but one of the kids raised his hand, and, you know, the Minecraft kid pointed on him. And, you know, he said, um, like, nice presentation, but I'm pretty sure the nether isn't real. And the Minecraft kid starts laughing. He's like, what do, what do you mean the Minecraft, the nether isn't real? And he's like, um, I, I, I don't think you, uh... I don't think you put down the name right. And the Minecraft kid is really confused, and he turns to his teacher. And the teacher is like, oh, okay, I gotta speak up. The teacher's like, yeah, so, Minecraft kid, I hate to say it, but I think you wrote down the name wrong. I, I was looking it up while you were doing your presentation, because I was pretty confused. And I looked up the nether into Google, and apparently it's a place in a video game. Uh, you were supposed to do the Netherlands. And the Minecraft kid got super embarrassed because he has this whole presentation. He was 100% confident that this place really existed. And he was kind of just told that, oh, well, actually, truth is, you just messed up the whole thing. But the teacher actually was a pretty cool dude because the teacher wanted to say, like, man, like, he's like, hey, all I asked you to do was to do a presentation, you know, on a place that, you know, I thought that, you know, to do a, pres a presentation, do the work do the research, put it together, and present it to the class. He said, hey, you did the research. I can tell you put in the work. This is a great presentation, and you presented it in front of the entire class. Yes, you didn't do exactly what I asked, but you didn't do, do so maliciously, and your intentions were good, and you put in the effort. He said, I'm going to grade you as if you did a real country. And uh, you know, the Minecraft kid was very happy to hear this because he more or less kind of like dodged a bullet there. Because I'm sure the Minecraft kid and Bart especially, like when Bart was sitting there, he was worried for his friend because he was friendly with the Minecraft kid. He was worried that he was going to get like a check minus. Basically, they had check plus check and check minus as their system. They got grades when they were older, but he was afraid he was going to get a check minus or maybe, oh, the teacher wouldn't understand and would call up his parents being like, your son isn't taking this class seriously. When you know the son was taking it seriously. He just didn't understand the instructions. He didn't get the memo, right? And it's cool to see teachers like this really come together and understand Understand that, you know, if the intention is good and the work was put in, really that's all that, you know, you're supposed to be doing in school. So the Minecraft kid sat down and he turned over and Bart turned over like, hey man, I'm sorry that I didn't say anything. I honestly thought when you said the nether, you were just doing shorthand for like the Netherlands. I thought that was a nickname or something. And the Minecraft kid's like, you're good, dude. Like, it's totally fine. Like, I should have like known that. And, you know, the, my, and Bart was like, dude, there's actually a cool presentation. Like, I kind of like Minecraft myself. And, you know, I learned a thing or two about Minecraft. Like, I, if I'm going to speed run the game, I'll think about your presentation. And, you know, the Minecraft kid took that, like, you know, pretty nicely. And he smiled back. And, you know, yeah, after that, you know, the, the Minecraft kid actually got a check plus for his presentation. Because the Minecraft kid put in a check plus worth of work. And most kids got check pluses. Some got checks if they really clearly didn't put in any work. But the majority of kids got check pluses, including the Minecraft kid, who did a presentation on the nether, which I just thought was pretty funny. But also W Teacher, 100% W Teacher. He gets it. He's the GOAT. Anyways, if you want to support the channel, keep watching videos after click this. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it.
How's it going everyone? Hope you're having a good day because today we have a pretty crazy story of this Minecraft kid who believes that after playing Minecraft that he needs to go back to his caveman roots and going back to his caveman roots literally just meant not showering I guess and he thinks that this will get him all the ladies. Let me just say that uh, that may or may not be the case but you'll have to wait and see. So anyways sit back relax subscribe to the channel if you are new and let's just jump right into this. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story out. And by the way, my Instagram is in the description. It's also Connor Pugs. Go follow me there and you can submit stories like this to me on there. I'll get to them when I get to them. And anyways, so Alex was in eighth grade and he had this kid in his class who we're going to call Ben. Yes, we're bringing back the name Ben for random secondary characters. And anyways, right, Ben was like, you know, he wasn't like super into Minecraft. Actually, he knew nothing of Minecraft until like a couple weeks before the story. And that's when he was introduced to the game by one of Alex's friends. Uh, we don't need a name, right? And anyways, right, Ben got super, super into it. Uh, Alex doesn't really know how Ben didn't know what Minecraft was. Like, it wasn't like Alex wasn't, or it wasn't like Ben wasn't on the internet. Like, I think Ben might have heard heard of it but he'd never like he didn't know what it was so when one of alex's friends introduced minecraft to him ben basically disappeared for like two weeks like he went to school and everything but he stopped being on social media disappeared as soon as he could like didn't show up to any anything he was just in his room as for as long as he could playing minecraft and i don't mean like i don't know like parkour servers like this or player versus player servers i mean he was playing like vanilla straight up your traditional minecraft that's all he was doing and he was in love with it and three weeks later he came into school one day and he's like alex buddy I, ha I need to tell you something, a revelation I've come to. And Alex is like, yeah, what's good, dude? And Ben's like, brother, we need to return to the caveman days. I was playing Minecraft a couple days ago, and I came to a realization that we need to return to our caveman roots. And I have started that already. And Alex is like, what do you mean by that? And at this time, Alex was, not was noticing quite a pungent aroma coming from Ben, right? You know, he didn't want to say anything. He didn't want to be mean. He didn't want to be, you know, cruel or anything. But let's just say that, you know, ah, Benny old boy was not smelling the greatest. He was kind of, uh, he was, uh, he had this essence, um, this odor, this aroma, some might call it, that uh, wasn't the greatest. To put it the, to put it lightly, right? So, anyways, uh, you know, uh, Alex or Ben goes on to say, "Yeah, so I've been playing Minecraft, and it just it just feels so good. It feels so natural. I mean, yeah, playing a block game feels natural, but whatever. I like Minecraft. I'm not saying it's not, but he goes on to say, and I realized that you know my failures in the lady department. The reason why women don't love me is because I, I'm too much like I'm too much. I'm not like the natural man." And when they see me as the natural caveman, they will instinctively fall in love with me. And, and Alex just looks at Ben. It's like, Ben, uh, I don't know where you're going with this, but I really don't have a good, I don't have a good feeling about this. And Ben's like, Alex, I'm here to convert you to my ways. And Alex is like, what? And he's like, are you trying to like sell me an MLM or something? Like, where are we going with this? And Ben is like, no, 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 Alex, return to the caveman. Return to the caveman, Alex. This is what Steve has taught me. And, and, and Alex is like, Ben, Ben, are you okay? Like, if you need help, like, I, I can help you get He's like, no, you need help, man. You don't understand. He said, look, I've returned to my caveman roots, but by not doing any of the, the, the showering that is in our modern day societies, you really think putting chemicals in our hair and rinsing it with fake water Alex is like, fake, fake water? What are you, he's like, I, these are details. These are details, Alex, don't question it. It's whatever, you don't understand. The natural aroma that comes from the human body has been programmed for trillions of years. And Alex is like, I don't think humans have been around for trillions of years. And Ben's like, that's not the point. The point is the aroma, the natural musk. Sure, you can buy cheap garbage from like, I don't know, Armani or Gucci, their, their fragrance is terrible. They'll destroy the, the, the brain cells. But the true caveman odor is what Steve has taught me. And uh, Alex is like, so are you going to like, I don't know, spend more time outside, get more sunlight, 
exercise, eat like not processed stuff like the caveman too. And Alex is like, whoa, or Ben is like, whoa, Alex, chill out. Let's not go crazy. Let's not go cuckoo banana mode on me. Okay, man. Okay, man. Is that good? Like, let's not go crazy. I'm, I'm not, I'm not dropping everything for this caveman thing, but I am embracing the natural musk. And Alex just looks at him and says, so Ben, you're, you're not really changing anything about what you do besides, besides not showering. That, that's the only difference. And Ben's like, well, no, no, no. It's not just not showering. It's embracing my natural musk, my natural odor. It will instinctively make women love me. And Alex is like, Ben, as your friend, I guess, I, 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 I strongly suggest you don't do this. And Ben is like, you know what, Alex? I understand that you're a hater, and that's okay. Alex is like, I don't think I'm a hater, but... And Ben's like, silence. Look, you know that girl over there, Ava? You know how, you know, the prettiest girl in our class. I've always had a crush on her, and I never had a chance. And Alex is like, well, that's also something that has not changed. And Ben's like, look, I'm going to go up to her, and you're going to see. I'm going to go up to her. I'm going to lift up my arms so my armpits are bare, let her embrace my natural aroma, my natural odor, and you will see that she will just fall in love with me. I'm going to ask her out, and she's going to say yes. It's not even going to be her saying yes. It's going to be her subconscious breaking through to the surface and convincing her that I am the true man for her. Alex is just looking at Ben. He's like, dude, did playing Minecraft make, make you think this or something? And Ben's like, no! It, it encouraged me to remember my true caveman days. And, you know, Alex is like, yeah, okay. That's cool, man. Like, I'm cool with that. Like, you're cool. That's good. Okay, you know, actually, actually, Ben, yes. Let's see it. I will, too, embrace the caveman if Ava goes out with you because you smell bad. And Ben's like, I don't smell bad. I smell natural. If that is bad to your nose, then you have a, you, you have a bad nose. And... Ben's like, or uh, 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 Alex is like, uh, uh, all right, I got bad nose. That, that's not great. Um, Ben's like, you'll see. Anyways, next day comes around and Alex is sitting with his friends and he explains like, yeah, so you know Ben, right? And they're like, yeah, we know Ben. And Alex is like, yeah, so he's, he's doing something crazy. And they're like, well, I don't know what he's been doing, but he's been smelling like, like garbage recently. And Ben, uh, Alex is like, it's actually, it's related. You're not going to believe this. He played Minecraft and then he believed he had to go back to the caveman era. Like he had to be a man again and that doesn't mean working out or, you know, reading. It just means not showering for some reason. It's kind of it's kind of ridiculous. And they're like, yeah, I mean, Ben has been smelling a little bit more musty and it kind of smells like spoiled milk at this point. But I guess uh, <laughs> I, I guess that makes sense now. And uh, Alex goes on to say, yeah, and you know, Ava. And they're like, yeah, of course we know Ava. Hoss girl in our class. Beauty, right? 10 out of 10. They're like, eh. Alex is like, yeah, so Ben is going to ask her out later today. They're like, he's going to do what? He's going to do, and, and, and Alex is like, yeah, so Ben, Ben thinks that because he smells like he does, she's going to instinctively say yes. They're like, dude, this, why did you say yes? Why did you allow him to go on with this? At this point, Alex's friends are like, bro, you're kind of being a bad friend of Ben. And Alex is like, dude, he was so confident. He was being so cocky. And they're like, dude, he's going to get rejected. And there's a chance he gets rejected really hard. And really embarrassingly in front of everyone. Do you want that for him? And look, Alex was not happy with the way that Ben went about explaining or teaching him, quote unquote, the ways of the caveman, aka no shower, no more, right? But at the end of the day, they were still friends. And Alex knew that Ava was not just going to say no, but, you know, she had developed a bit of an ego for because she did know that she was, you know, the most beautiful girl in the class and she could have any guy she wanted. She was not going to be nice about letting him down. She was going to be cruel. She was going to be mean. And she was going to crush him, dude. She was going to freaking crush him. And Alex is like, all right, I got to find Ben. I need to find him before he asks Ava out. And as Alex was saying that, he hears or he looks up and he looks at the table across because they're sitting at lunch. He looks at the table farthest away and that's where Ava and her friends were sitting and Ben was walking up to her table.
Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment uh, Minecraft down below. And if you want to support the channel, one of the best things you can do is binge watch the videos. And please let me know in the comment section what you're doing while watching these videos. And also, final thing, a bit of a new request I have. If you haven't already done so, if you have a TikTok account, go follow my TikTok. It is Connor Pugs. I have about 7,000 followers on there. Um, I'm reposting clips from here. I'm just trying to reach a new audience on TikTok and hopefully bring them to the family over on here. And if you could just, even just following me in there and occasionally watching my videos, uh, basically no one watches them on there and I need a little bit of traction from you guys to help them reach new people and I really would appreciate it. Anyways, let's get back to the story before I bore you guys. And also if you're gonna buy some gamer subs or any of their stuff, wait about a week. I have a pretty cool surprise coming for you guys. But anyways, enough of teasing that. I can't say too much right now. Anyways, right, so Alex looks over and he notices that Ben is walking to Ava's table. And he's like, oh, oh my God, no, 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 no. This can't be happening. And he goes, oh, and he starts to like walk walk over and you know the people Alex, Alex was sitting with are like Alex go go he's gonna do it don't let this happen so Alex is basically sprinting over to the table but he doesn't get there in time and he kind of stops he's like no I'm too late so Ben goes up to Ava and goes ahem Ava and Ava looks up and is like yes <laughs> oh my the next part's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard Ben goes up to her and literally lifts up both of his arms. You know how like after you run and you're like really exhausted, you'll put your arms above your heads to like make it easier to breathe, right? Or you're told to do that or whatever, right? That's basically what he did. And you could see Ava's face. Like first you saw her nose kind of twitch as she was smelling what was going on. And then you saw her eyes water, her face crunch up. And, and you could almost hear like the, oh, like it was a bad smell. It was not good. And Alex is like, oh no, oh no, oh my God. Oh my God, I'm par I'm partially responsible. Oh my God, I'm partially, resp I'm partially responsible, man. This is on me. Anyways, Ben goes on to say, so Ava, now that, you know, I've let your senses, you know, acclimate themselves and if you have any primal urges wink wink that are coming up from you know the surface that are breaking through would you like to go on a date you know what let's just skip that would you like to be my girlfriend and alex is like in his head he's like no no ben no ben no 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 and so sure enough you know ava's just looking at him blinking not even responding not laughing or anything She's just blinking because she's just so dumbfounded by the did this kid just did this kid just straight up ask me out? Because remember, Ava and Ben, they're not friends. They're not dating each other. They're not close like that. W what? And he also smells terrible. And, and Ben is like, uh, if you don't know your answer yet, maybe you'll know it in a second. And Ben literally gets closer to her and like pushes his armpit in her face. And she's like, you get away from me and kind of pushes him back he's like looks over at alex and ben's like yells over don't worry alex don't worry give it a second you'll see man you'll see it's crazy you're not gonna believe it she's gonna fall in love with me and ava looks up fall in love with you i don't know who you are i don't know who you are i just know that you're a guy who came over here and is smelling terrible and is pushing his stinky armpits in my face no i will not go out with you and like at this point everybody in the cafeteria has turned their heads Everybody has turned their heads and is looking at this because it's a scene. It's a spectacle. I mean, Ben is standing up there with his greased out armpits and Ava, known as the prettiest girl in the class, has just demolished him in front of everyone, uh, spectators of the entire class. At this point, there's an awkward silence because people have stopped speaking. Like they've stopped speaking because they want to hear what's going on. And Ben is like, I see. Let me know if you change your mind. And Ava's like, no, I will never change my mind. As I said, she's a little extra, right? And Ben just walks over to Alex. And Alex looks at him. He's like, dude, dude, I, I was trying to come over to tell you not to do it. Like, I'm sorry. This is my fault. Ben's like, bro, this is, this is not your fault. She just needs time to realize. Like, Ben goes on to say that, you know, this is totally part of the plan. He knew that there's a chance that, you know, 
her like primal senses would be stopped by her like brain but it was only a matter of time till like they break through and now that he's like broken through to the senses through like essencing out the stink or whatever that like eventually within like the next 24 hours she will come to her senses maybe privately maybe not publicly but they will be dating and alex is like dude you can't seriously think that and ben is like it's my theory like i know it's to be true you have your opinions and i have my facts i'm sorry i stole that from baskets greatest show ever rip christine baskets bro brings a tear to my eye anyways um and so sure enough next day rolls around it has been 24 hours and alex just goes up to ben he's like yo ben's like yeah what's up he's like hey did did she ask you out yet and he's like no it hasn't been 24 hours ben looks at his phone looks at the time he's like dude it's it's been like 22 hours and and ben goes on to say see you're proving my points once again my facts destroy your opinions and alex is like okay but I mean, she hasn't asked you out yet. And two hours go by, Alex goes up to him, and Ben's like, dude, I don't want to talk about it. Alex is like, that's fine, man. Like, you don't have to prove anything to me. Like, I get it. Alex is like, dude, you're good. Don't worry about it. Just please go home and take a shower. And sure enough, Ben, while he actually continued to play Minecraft, no longer believed the whole caveman philosophy of you must smell like garbage for women to like you, and uh, that was partially due to the fact that it doesn't work and he has firsthand experience in why it doesn't work. And uh, yeah, him and Ava did not ever date from that point on. Um, it was a pretty bad first impression. By the way, that was a first impression practically. I think they knew of each other beforehand, but yeah. Moral of the story is don't do that, guys. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. How's it going everyone? Hope you're having a great day today because today we have probably one of the most insane stories about a Minecraft kid to date. I mean, you do not want to miss this, so sit back, relax, uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and let's call today's subscriber who submitted this story, uh, let's call him Dave. So anyways, right, you know, Dave was in the third grade, and in the third grade, like at this time, Minecraft was huge. I mean, Minecraft was really big now, but it was like really, really big back in like 2013, 2014. Dave is quite older, but this is a story from back in his childhood. So anyways, right, you know, one thing that was starting to get pretty big, 2015, 2016, I don't totally know exactly when the story happens, was something called, you know, Minecraft PvP, where basically people would fight each other in Minecraft. And there was this kid in Dave's class who we're going to call Ben, because of course we're going to call him Ben. So anyways, right, you know, Dave and Ben, you know, they weren't necessarily best friends, but they started to get to know each other because they both were really into the whole Minecraft. Minecraft player versus player battles and so they would start to like play a little bit you know with each other after school they would go on Minecraft servers and they would fight each other and it was actually quite fun so Dave and Ben started to become friends in class and the thing is though uh, Dave was not friends with Ben after what is about to happen, which is absolutely crazy, but you'll have to wait for that one, right? So anyways, right, you know, Dave and Ben, you know, they're talking at recess. So there's out there, there's a swing set at the school's recess, uh, at the school's recess, at the school's playground. So Dave and, uh, Dave and Ben, they're both on the swings, and, uh, you know, Ben is like, man... I don't know, I really don't like Miss Davenport. So Miss Davenport's gonna be the name of their teacher for their math class. And Dave's like, dude, I know, she's the worst. And Ben's like, bro, like, I wish I could just like spend my entire day getting better in Minecraft PvP, like learning how to like be better, but instead I have to spend all this time learning my times tables, bro. I hate those. Little side note, I hated my times tables because I would be like time to be like, you have to do all these in one minute. I'm terrible under pressure. I did not like those. But anyways, Dave and Ben, you know, they were talking about how they really didn't like, you know, the Minecraft, uh, the Minecraft, the, the, the math they had to do in their class and how they thought that their teacher was like extra, extra mean, even though Dave tells me in retrospect the teacher was actually super normal like she was like honestly just trying to teach them the fundamentals of math that they would need for like the next seven years of schooling but at that time dave and ben the minecraft kid they just they just didn't get that so dave and ben decided that you know what they were going to pull a prank on their teacher to somehow get more time to play minecraft so what they were going to do is they were going to find a way to bring their, like, computers into class and to play Minecraft, like, during class so that they can... Because, like, what they were thinking is Dave and Ben, the Minecraft kid, were like, you know what? 
I hate math. When am I actually going to use it? But you know what I'm using every day? My Minecraft player versus player battle skills. Oh, yeah, baby. So, yeah, basically they were thinking to themselves, like, we got to practice in class because we're wasting all of our time doing math. This is ridiculous. So, anyways, they, they conjure up a plan. And the whole plan is that they will, like, put their backpacks on their desk because they actually had pretty big desks. And they would also sit all the way in the back of class and their backpacks would be like on the desk enough so that it would be kind of blocking their computers. Then they'd whip out their computers and, you know, they would have their mouses or whatever. And then they would play Minecraft in class and they just like attach to the school Wi-Fi. This was so far back then that like the school Wi-Fi, like people like the P the administrators in the school didn't even know about like how to do like Wi-Fi blocking. You know how like some like when you go to school Wi-Fi, you can't look up certain sites or use certain things. This was back in the day when like they didn't even know about this. They're just like, oh, Internet connection. Cool. Anyone can use it. We don't really care. Uh, I don't know if every school was like this, but at least D uh, Dave and uh, Ben's school was like this. So anyways, the next day rolls around and they bring their computers into school. And on, on the way out, Dave's mom was like, oh, honey, why do you have your computer with you? And, uh, you know, Dave was like, um, I need to think quick on the spot. He's like, uh, we need it for class. And Dave's mom's like, oh, cool. So anyways, Dave goes into school. He meets up with Ben before class. He's like, bro, are you ready? And Ben's like, yeah, dude, I got my, you know, I got my PC. I'm ready for this. So they go into class and they both sit in the back of the class. And the teacher's like, all right, class, today we'll be learning about long division. By the way, screw long division. That is the worst thing ever. But anyways, right, so Dave and Ben, you know, they're sitting in the back of class. They pull out their backpacks and they put them on their desk. And the teacher kind of looks over and doesn't think anything of it. She's like, weird but if you want if you want to have less desk space then be my guest bro like that's not on me that's on you so whatever and then dave and ben you know they pull out their computers and then they pull out their mice and they barely have enough room to fit everything on there but barely is still is still it you know they still have enough room even if it's barely enough room so anyways right they get their laptops out they connect to the wi-fi they're in, they're like, all right, this is perfect. So they go on whatever player versus player Minecraft server where they can fight each other and other people. I don't know if it was Hypixel back in the day. I don't know if it was like uh, uh, like a bad lion or whatever. I don't even know. I don't know the history that well. But they go on their server, right? And the thing about like Minecraft PvP, if you don't know, when you fight someone in Minecraft, you normally have like a sword. Normally, I mean, you can have like bow, rod, uh, lava bucket. You can have a lot of stuff. But normally it's sword fighting, and for sword fighting, you need to click. And neither of these kids have auto clickers or anything like this. So if they wanted to swing their sword, they needed to click. And the thing is, right, they didn't have some kind of, like, ghost mouse that makes no sounds when you click it, which I, I don't know even if that's a thing, because, like, why would you want that? I, 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 except for this very specific situation, which doesn't come up often. Well, actually, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm not typically in class pretending to be, like, hiding behind, like, a backpack, secretly playing Minecraft, ignoring my math schools or my, 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 like, math class or whatever. That doesn't normally happen. But anyways, right, so the thing is, for them to play, they need to be clicking. And remember, this class isn't super loud and rowdy, and no one else is on their computers, and no one else is clicking a mouse. So they don't even really think of this. They're just like, Dave and Ben are just so excited to the fact that they're able to play Minecraft during their math class. Do they legitimately just start, they get on the server and they go, actually, I have a mouse with me right now. They just start going, they just start like going crazy and they're clicking away and they're fighting people and they're doing pretty well, right? So Dave is super focused right now. He's playing this kid who's actually pretty good and they're, you know, they're really close. They're basically have the same number of hits and he hears Ben whisper, Dave, 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 Dave. And, ben, or, uh, and, and Dave's like, Ben, stop, stop. I'm in the middle of a fight. And that's when the teacher says, then he hears his name again, but he hears Dave. And sure enough, it is Miss Davenport. And he looks up and he immediately closes his computer. At this point, like Ben is like, oh my God. And Dave is like, uh, hi, Miss Davenport. Uh, how's it going, Miss Davenport? How's it going there? Ha <laughs> what's good? Miss Davenport, and sure enough, like, Miss Davenport's like, you too, you're coming with me. And they pack their bags, and they walk up to the principal's office, and they get in trouble because you're not supposed to be doing that in class. And, uh, yeah, 
And the principal, you know, ends up calling their parents. You know, when Dave gets back, Dave's mom's like, you were playing Minecraft. You were playing, like, video games. I don't know if she knew if it was Minecraft exactly. So, you were playing video games in class. You were supposed to be paying attention. Like, you know, this is foundational material for the rest of your, like, the rest of your academic career. Like, you're going to be in college, in college math class, and you're going to be thinking back, why didn't I pay attention to that long division? Bro, I've never done long division like since seventh gr- or since fourth grade, bro. Just a little tip. I mean, learn it because you need to pass, but I've never used that stuff again. Oh my god. Anyways, though, Dave is not happy, and you know Ben is also not happy. So the next day, you know, while they did get in trouble, they still had their recess privileges. So they went out back to the swing set, and they were and Ben was like, "Dude, dude, Miss Davenport is the worst." And Dave's like, "Bro, bro, 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 one hundred percent, she is the worst." Even though, like, in retrospect, Dave tells me that Ms. Davenport was literally just doing her job and that Dave back then and Ben, his friend, were just a bunch of dumb kids. But anyways, at the time, Dave and Ben were like, bro, she is the worst. We need to actually get back at her for what she did to us. Dave's like, bro, what were you thinking? And Ben's like, you know what? Last night, I was just so angry that I was sitting there and I was just trying to come up with something. I was trying to come up with an epic prank that would truly get her. So Dave and Ben end up doing something, which you guys will hear in just a little bit. That is something that I have to do a little bit of a disclaimer. Do not do this. I have personally never done it, and I actually don't know anyone who's done this. And it's also pretty illegal, and it's, it, it's, it's a jerk move, and you should never do something like this. That's just my disclaimer coming from me so I can freely tell the rest of the story. So anyways, on the swing set... Dave and Ben, since they live close to each other and they're allowed to kind of roam around, Ben's like, dude, I figured out exactly where Ms. Davenport lives last night. And Dave's like, bro, what? And and Ben's like, dude, Ms. Davenport, she lives really close to us. Like, she lives like five minutes away. And Dave's like, bro, okay, what do you want me to do with this information? And Ben's like, dude, my mom just bought eggs. And she probably, so much stuff goes in her fridge, she won't notice if she loses some eggs, right? And Ben's like, or Dave's like, bro, Ben, I don't understand what you're trying to say. And that's when Ben says, you and me, tonight, we're going to go egg our house for what she did to us. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment door down below. That's for the OGs of this channel. If you don't get it, that's all good. But if you've been around for a while, that probably that probably brought you back. But anyways, if you made it this far into the video, comment door down below, D-O-O-R, or the thing that like, you know, you enter a house with or a building with. Uh, I just want to see how many people make this far into, into the video. And also, if you want to support the channel, literally binge watch these videos. Like, sit down and watch a bunch of story videos in a row. It really helps me out more than you can ever imagine. And let me know in the comment section what you are doing while binge watching these videos. Are you playing video games? Are you doing some artwork? Are you going to sleep? Whatever you're doing, let me know. I'll heart it. And I'll even sometimes throw up your comments on screen. So here are some people. Here's a little bit of a shout out to these people. If you want a bit of a shout out in a future video, just comment how you're supporting the channel and yeah let's get back to it so anyways right at this point dave and ben you know they they kind of commit to you know doing the thing that they're going to do and after school you know they they basically have a plan to tell their parents that they're going on a night uh, like a nighttime walk at like eight and then they're gonna meet up at a certain place so anyways it's like 7 55 and dave's starting to get butterflies in his stomach Like, this is really crazy. He's starting to feel really, like, weird about this, but he's like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going through with it. So it's 8 o'clock. He walks out there, and he meets up with his friend Ben, and sure enough, Ben has four eggs in his hand. So they're not going to, like, you know, some gat... They're not going to load up a Gatling gun with a thousand eggs and completely, like, I don't know... uh, They're not going to turn her her house into an omelet or anything like that, but they're still going to egg the house, which, once again, disclaimer, do not do, do not ever do. It's not even, like, cool or anything like that. You're an idiot if you do it. Anyways, because you will get in trouble, dumbass. But anyways... Dave and Ben, they start walking over, and they're hiding the eggs, right? They, they walk over to where Ms. Davenport's house is, and they sneak around over, and then they hide in the bushes, right? And Dave turns to Ben. He's like, dude, are you sure about this? And Ben's like, don't forget what she did to us. And with that, Dave gets, Dave gets a little angry. He takes one of the eggs. He's like, on three. And then Ben takes one of his eggs. He's like, all right. And Dave's like, three, two, 
one, and then two eggs splat. And then he's like, all right, we got to fire this one quickly. They take both of them again. And sure enough, they got four eggs right across the side of the house. And this time they need to get out of there. So they don't run away, but they kind of like power walk away and they kind of sneak out of there and they watch and they hear the door open. But by that time they are out of sight. So Dave and Ben quickly like power walk away and they go out of sight, out of distance. They're like, oh my God. <sighs> oh my God, that was crazy. They're like, we totally got her. And Dave is like, we totally got her. And Ben's like, I don't know. And Dave's like, dude, we totally got her. Like, how could you want to get her more? And once again, Ben's like, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know if that was enough. And Dave's like, well, that was enough for me. So sure enough, they go back, you know, they go back home. They go to bed. You know, the next day they wake up and, you know, uh, you know, they go to school and they're sitting. And, you know, once again, they go back to their, uh, their swing set. And Dave is like, man, I don't know. I just don't feel satisfied with what happened. I feel like she deserves more. And at this point, Ben's like, bro, or Dave's like, bro, Ben, what do you mean? We got our, we got our house. We got our good. And yeah, Ben's just like, man, I don't know, Dave. Like, I just, I just don't feel like we actually did get her good. I feel like, I feel like there's still more that can be done. The right, the wrong has not been righted. And Dave's like, bro, chill out. The, the wrong has definitely been righted, which by the way, two wrongs do not equal a right, bro. But and anyways, right. So sure enough, they go back to class. And they're sitting there, and, you know, Miss Davenport calls on Ben. Ben doesn't know the answer, and it doesn't embarrass him from the whole class. But, bro, when you get called on, and you very clearly are not trying to have your hand raised because you're not trying to get called on, and the teacher calls on you in class, and everyone looks, and you turn around, and you're like, ah, ha, ha, I have no idea what you're talking about. That's embarrassing. But apparently, that was just like... That was the last straw for Ben. And as they're like, so their school is out or not school's out, but school's out for the day. They're going to, they're waiting in line to be picked up by their parents. And Ben walks up to Dave and is like, bro, I'm getting revenge on Miss Davenport for embarrassing me today. And, you know, Dave's or Dave's like, bro, what are you talking about? And Ben's like, dude, she's been crazy recently. And what we did was just like, it was a, it was a little drop in the bucket. It really means nothing. But I'm going to get her tomorrow. And I'm going to use my Minecraft skills to get her back. I'm going to you put my training to good, good use. And Dave looked at him and had literally no idea what he was going to do. So he's like, okay, man, <laughs> cool. So anyways, the next day rolls around. And once again, before class, they're at recess and they're sitting on the swings. Dave and Ben always sit on the swings together. No one else really uses the swings, so they're kind of like, it's the place they always go to. And Dave is just talking, and Ben's like, bro, you're going to want to be in class today. And Dave's like, dude, of course I'm going to be in class. Like, <laughs> what, what would I do if I skipped it? Sit in the bathroom, dude? Like, what? Because remember, they didn't really have phones then. I mean, phones were a thing, but since they were kids, they didn't really have it. But uh, anyways, uh, Ben goes on, bro, you're going to want to be there. And Dave's like, okay, like, do you want to tell me? And Ben's like, nope, it's going to be a surprise. But just know that Miss Davenport is not going to want to mess with me or anyone else, including you, after this. And Dave's like, okay, man, cool. So they get to class. And, uh, you know, they... <laughs> Dave, Dave sits next to Ben, and he looks over, and there's something's weird with Ben's bag. And, and, and that's when Dave realizes, you know those, like, fake plushy Minecraft diamond swords that you can buy online, like the little toy things? Yeah, one of those, the handle of that was sticking out of his, was sticking out of his backpack. And Dave looks at Ben and is whispering, like, yo, dude, why is there a, why is there a diamond sword in your backpack? And Ben's like, bro, you're going to see, dude. And Dave's like, okay. Uh, what? And Dave's like, bro, just wait. It's going to be crazy. And Dave's like, all right, man. I'll trust you on this one. So sure enough, right, you know, Dave, uh, Ben is kind of just waiting to be called on. And sure enough, Miss Davenport's like, all right, Ben, can you answer this? Because she was going around just asking people. And Ben's like... Miss Davenport, I did not raise my hand. And Miss Davenport's like, well, sometimes I call on people. It's just part of the class. And Ben is like, stands up. He's like, that is the last time that you disrespect me, ma'am. And he reaches into his backpack and whips out his diamond sword. And Dave is like, oh, my God, this guy's gone off the rocker. And he starts swinging it around like. 
And uh, the, Ms. Davenport's like, Ben, what is that? Like, why, why do you have, like, a little fake plastic sword or whatever? And Dave is like, you, or Ben is like, you don't understand. He starts walking towards her, swinging it. Everyone in the class is dead silent. They're like, bro, this kid's gone insane. Oh, my God. But anyways, right, so Dave, or not Dave, Ben is walking towards him with the sword. Miss Davenport's like, dude. Or she doesn't say, okay, Miss Davenport, the teacher, the 40-year-old math teacher does not say dude, but she's like, Ben, put that down immediately, and you're coming with me to the, you know, the principal's office. And Ben's like, no, you disrespected me and my brethren for too long. And he goes up, and he's like, any last words? And, you know, Miss da- Davenport's like, Ben, put that thing down immediately. You and I are going to the principal's office. Cut off mid-sentence. Why was she cut off mid-sentence? Well, because at that point, Ben had enough, and he swung with the diamond sword. However, he got too close to her. So when he swung with the diamond sword, he held the diamond sword in his fist so tightly that when he swung, he didn't hit her only with the diamond sword. He accidentally hit her with his fist that was clutching onto the diamond sword so tightly that he basically just square punched her in the face. And at this point, it was such like, I know he's just a little kid, but just like the shock and the momentum and just somehow he got it just right that he went, whoopa! And Miss Davenport stood there for like a second and then just collapsed on the floor. And everyone, their mouths were just gaping open. They were just like, oh. What? What? Huh? Oh, oh, what is going on? What is going on? What? And so, okay, so sure enough, one girl just runs out of the room immediately. And Ben is kind of just standing there, just kind of shocked with what happened. Because, bro, you're not expecting to knock out the teacher with your diamond sword. I don't care how delusional you are. Like, you were just not expecting that to happen. And, you know, Ben's just standing there. He's like, oh, my God. 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 What I do? What I do? And when the class is like, oh, my God. She, is she dead? Oh, my God. She was not dead. She's just knocked out. But within, like, five minutes, the girl that ran out actually ran out just to go get, like, help from, like, security or whatever. And sure enough, security walks in, and they look at what's happening. They see the kid with the diamond sword and the teacher slumped over, and the girl points to him and says, that's the kid. Security goes up, grabs Ben, is like, you're coming with us. And the other security officer goes and checks, like, Ms. Davenport's pulse to make sure that she wasn't, like, actually, you know, destroyed by that. And sure enough, she was fine, but, like, she was knocked out. They call an ambulance, Ambulance comes over, Miss Davenport starts coming back too, you know, she's given water, electrolytes, whatever, and Dave is just sitting there like, oh my, oh my god. So Ben actually gets up getting expelled from the school, he's not suspended, he's not in trouble, he's expelled from the school. They have like a zero tolerance for anything like that. However, you know, there was some questioning to Ben about like the recent like egging to her house because she did report it to the school. And Ben, thankful, Dave, thankful, like, thankful to Ben, Ben did not say anything. Ben kept his mouth shut, said he knew nothing of it, that that was ridiculous, and they didn't look any further into it. And Ben and Dave never really spoke that much afterwards because Dave's mom, like, I don't want you hanging out with Ben, he's a bad influence, and all that kind of stuff. And to this day, Dave and Ben have not seen each other since, and Dave does not know where Ben is. Ben might be at some other school. I, Dave thinks that, like, the parents moved because he actually walked over to see, like, if Ben was at his house because he wanted to like to see how he was doing and it was like a totally different family in that house when he went over it was kind of weird but whatever right and uh yeah to this day Dave has no idea what's happening and it was probably the craziest story of his life today I get a story time of a of another one of these Minecraft kids deciding to uh fight back against his babysitter in a quite uh, unconventional way you might say i mean i bet you can read the title right now so yeah with that being said sit back relax subscribe if you haven't already and let's call today's subscriber who submitted this story to me let's call him ryan so ryan was friends with this kid who really liked minecraft so we're calling him the minecraft kid because that always works in the title and uh, you guys like the minecraft kid stories and i like telling them but anyways right ryan was invited over to this kid who he didn't know that well 
and we're just gonna call him the Minecraft Kid. So anyways, right, Ryan was invited over to the Minecraft Kid's house to, well, you know, play Minecraft with him. The idea was he was gonna go over on a Friday night and play some Bed Wars with this kid. Honestly sounds like a pretty sick Friday night, if you know what I mean. However, he didn't really know much about this kid, and he only kind of just started to know him because Ryan's mom and the Minecraft Kid's mom became friends, like, a couple months ago when they are both volunteering for something, or maybe they just met, I, I don't know why, but Ryan's mom and the Minecraft Kid's mom became friends, and for that reason, you know, Ryan's mom's like, oh, I have a son about your son's age, they should totally hang out. And since Ryan knew nothing about the Minecraft Kid, it, at their first, like, interaction, which wasn't, like, a sleepover playday type thing, he was like, so, what do you like to do? And he's like, I like to play Minecraft. He's like, cool, do you like to play Bed Wars? And he's like, yeah, it's my favorite game. So they bonded over it. So anyways, Ryan was heading over to the Minecraft kid's house. And uh, Ryan's mom told him, hey, just so you know, uh, the Minecraft kid's mom is not going to be there. Uh, she's going to be out for something. However, they hired a babysitter, and the Minecraft kid's mom should be back by, like, 10 or 11. And Ryan was like, all right, that's totally fine. I, I don't really care. It's not like we're, we would have been hanging out with the Minecraft kid's mom and having her play in our Bed Wars trios or something, man. So it's fine. So Ryan gets over to the Minecraft kid's house, and when he gets there... No one greets him at the door. He kind of stands there for a second, and he knocks on it, and he stands there for, like, a little more time, and uh, he hears noises coming from upstairs, and it's a two-story house, and there's a, there's a window right above him, and the window is open, and he can hear noises, and you know what noises he hears? He hears block placing noises. He hears uh, golden apple eating noises. He hears bed break noises. He's like, wait a minute. Bro, the Minecraft kid is playing Bed Wars right now. And, uh, you know, Ryan was thinking that he would have yelled up to the Minecraft kid, but the door eventually opened, and presumably the babysitter, or who we thought the babysitter was, which, no, it was the babysitter. That isn't, like, the big secret of the story, but the babysitter comes and, you know, opens the door and says, hey, so sorry, uh, Minecraft kid's upstairs. I'm, you know, making dinner right now for you guys. It'll be ready in, like, 30 minutes, so make sure you're not in the middle of the game in, like, half an hour. And uh, Ryan's like, all right, that sounds pretty cool. So he goes up the stairs, he opens the door, and the Minecraft kid's like, what's good, bro? I'm in the middle of a game. Get your, like, laptop out and set your stuff up, and we'll go into, like, doubles in just a second. Uh, and so, sure enough, and by the way, guys, Bed Wars is, it's a Minecraft game where you can, like, it's fun. You should go look it up and play it, maybe. But just for context, it's a video game um, on Minecraft. But anyways, right, so he sets up his, uh, his gaming setup or whatever. He gets that all ready. And yeah, sure enough, the Minecraft kid eventually wins his game. Great work, Minecraft kid. Uh, not so great work at later the night, as you can tell by the title. But uh, yeah, anyways, Ryan and the Minecraft kid, they start playing some, uh, some Bed Wars duos. Life's pretty good. And that's until they're in the middle of a game, and it's really, really intense, right? It's getting really down to the wire. If you know a thing or two about Bed Wars, all the beds have been broken, and they're really just both of them, Ryan and the Minecraft kid, are super stacked. They have their golden apples. They have their diamond armor. Yes, they sweated to diamond armor. And the two people that were remaining were about as good as they were. And they were playing for, for all the marbles at this point, man. This was pretty intense. And that's when the babysitter yells, All right, guys, time for dinner. And the Minecraft kid's like, Well, one second yells down that and you know ryan and the minecraft kid are like all right how are we going to do this do we go in do we wait and the minecraft kid is a big fan of like camping which in a video game when you're camping that basically just means that like you're staying on defensive ground and you're waiting for the opponent to come to you which in bed wars if you're super super stacked that can kind of give you the advantage because you can always drop golems you got a hometown advantage if you have the regen thing um Camping is an okay strategy, super late game, but that also means that the game's going to be a long time. And Ryan says to the Minecraft kid, hey man, do you think we should like be aggressive and we should be the one attacking them? Because like, you know, our food is like dinner is ready. Do you think we should just go do that for the sake of doing that just so we can and we'll play another game when we come back. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, like I know that we'll win. Like we have prop four diamond. They don't. They, but if we go to them, there's a chance that they knock us off, we fall while going, they fireball us over. It's just a lot more dangerous to go over. He said, we're staying here. And Ryan, who doesn't really care, he's like, all right, man, sure, we'll stay here. And then you know, a minute later, the babysitter says, guys, you don't want dinner to get cold? 
The Minecraft kid's like, one second, which it wasn't going to be a second. Like, it was going to be probably like five, ten minutes on average remaining of the game. And uh, so, yeah, uh, Ryan and the Minecraft kid were waiting it out. And the thing was, the other team was camping too, which basically means that they were both just collecting gear and such, and they weren't attacking each other. So then the babysitter was, you know, yelled up again, like, guys, like, come on, like, I made you something, like, I told you not to be in the middle of a game. And he's like, once again, the Minecraft kid instead of saying, hey, I'm so sorry, can we be down there in five to ten minutes? Like, I apologize. He's like, one second! He just keeps yelling down one second. And the babysitter kind of did something that uh, she probably shouldn't have. Like, it just wasn't that deep, but I think the babysitter was kind of getting mad that, you know, they just were refusing to come down when, she, you know, she was sweating out some good food or whatever. So the babysitter, what she does is she goes to the Wi-Fi routum, and yes, you can probably already guess, unplugs it and replugs it, which basically, if your Wi-Fi, at least in my case, whenever my Wi-Fi is super slow or just kind of sucks, I go to the Wi-Fi rotom or router or whatever I go, rotom. What am I saying? I go to the Wi-Fi router, and I think I combine router and modem. My fault. I go to I, I go to my Wi-Fi router or box, unplug it, replug it. Wi-Fi's down for like five minutes, but then it comes back nice and fresh and clean. However, the Wi-Fi goes down. So basically, right, Ryan and the Minecraft kid are in the middle of a match, and like they start like you know they start to go to like buy something from the store, and Ryan's clicking on it, but it's not registering it. And Ryan's like, dude. Dude, 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 I, I think I'm disconnecting. And at this point, right, if you disconnect, you lose. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, no, it's not working. Why can't I place blocks? Why are things not registering? And then both at the same time, they get a message, like, ki not kicked, but like, uh, it, it disconnects from Hypixel, like, no connection. And the Minecraft kid's like, no! Started slamming his fist. And Ryan, who doesn't really care, and it looks at the Minecraft kid, and Minecraft kid was like, I was on a 99 win streak. I, w I won 99 games in a row. I was going to go to 100. I've been recording the whole thing. I was going to clip it and post it on YouTube, man. I was about to get 100. <laughs> Basically, he was pretty upset. So Ryan and the Minecraft kid, Ryan just looks at the Minecraft kid and be like, all right, man, I'm so sorry. Like, we'll grind it out tonight. We'll get you back to at least halfway, which was a lie. They were not going to play, nevertheless, win 50 games in a row. But, you know, Ryan's just trying to calm the air. And he's like, yeah, man, don't worry. We'll get back to it. So they walk down and the babysitter is waiting there. And she's like, guys, like, I asked you to come down. If you weren't going to come down, you should have at least told me. And I would have put it back in the stove. Now the food is cold. It really took me, you know, Turning off the Wi-Fi to get you guys to come down. Teenagers these days. Or not teen. I guess. It's she, she's a teenager. She's the babysitter. I guess preteens these days. And that's when Ryan is like, oh my god, she turned off the Wi-Fi. That's why we froze in the game. And Ryan looks over at the Minecraft kid, whose face, he, he just stood there. Like he's been frozen by like a, a, a spell that turns you to stone. He's just frozen there, looking at her. Her, his like jaw starts to slack a little bit, like, oh my god. Oh my god, it was you. It was you who got in between me and the 100 Bed Wars win streak. Real quick comment, Minecraft, if you made it this far into the video, is that will be the secret word of the day. And if you want to support the channel, as always, just go ahead and binge watch several videos or a bunch of videos whenever you have the time. And let me know, let me know in the comments if you do do this, because... It really does support me more than you can probably even imagine. It boosts the channel. YouTube likes watch time anyways. So right now, remember, Ryan and the Minecraft Kid just lost in a very important game for the Minecraft Kid. He almost got a 100 win win streak, which is pretty, pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. But unfortunately, the babysitter, who kind of like overreacted a little bit, got mad and unplugged the Wi-Fi, and that made them lose the game that they probably were actually going to win. And so when they walk down, they have no idea that the babysitter was the reason why they lost the game until the babysitter is like, oh, guys, like, I really had to pull the Wi-Fi plug to get you guys down here. Like, crazy how, t like, preteens are these days or kids on their phones too much. Like, when that, like, old man behavior type thing, even though this girl was, like, 17 or something. And the Minecraft kid is just so angry. He's like, you, you're the reason I lost my Minecraft game. And she's like, sorry, like, uh. Should have come down faster or should have at least told me. And she goes to sit down and Ryan is also like, all right, well, this is going to be a little awkward, but whatever. 
I'm still going down to sit down, like, whatever. Like, he's not going to react that ridiculously. Um, how do I say this? Yeah, no, he acted ridiculously. The Minecraft kid waits until the girl sits, or the babysitter, she's 17. I guess she's still, like, a girl, I guess. She is, on, I, I, guess, I don't know. She waits until the babysitter, right, sits down. And when the babysitter sits down, the Minecraft kid runs up to her, grabs a chair. St- this is like the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Grabs a chair, turns around, pulls down his pants, and rips, rips up. <laughs> Dude, I- I'm 19 years old, and I'm telling you about Minecraft kid revenge farting in someone's face. I'm doing it. I'm going through with it. I- I'm already so, I- I'm too far in the story to-, to turn around. The Minecraft kid, after getting on the chair, ripping down his pants, farts in the babysitter's face, directly her eye while it was open. If you don't know, the reason why the fart smells bad, because there's a lot of gross particles in it. And when the gross particles get into your eye, your eye can get infected, and it can be really bad. So the babysitter legitimately falls out of her chair and starts, like, screaming. Because, like, the... Because <laughs> apparently he really ripped one. He really ripped one, man. And her eye was open. And it was really close. And uh, Ryan was like, well... So this kid and I have one thing in common. We like Bed Wars. And we have nothing else in common. And this will probably be the last time I ever hang out with him. And, uh, yeah, so the babysitter's like, what did you do? Why would you do that? Like, that's so ridiculous and disgusting. Like, ah, oh, my eye, it burns. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my eye, it burns. Like, why would, why would you do that? Like, ah, oh, uh, uh. And Ryan looks at the Minecraft kid, and the Minecraft kid is literally laughing. He's like, <laughs> and Ryan's like, oh my god, this kid's ins- is because the thing was, Ryan's thinking to himself, dude, this kid must do this all the time because like you're not just gonna think to yourself, wow, I'm so angry at this person. Let me wait until they sit down, grab a chair, stand on it, turn around, pull down my pants, and fart directly point blank into their face. That's just not something that comes to you in the heat of the moment. That I, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm just built different from all you guys. I really don't know, but that definitely doesn't come to me. But uh, sure enough, right, uh, the babysitter eventually gets up, and Ryan and the Minecraft kid look at her face, and her left eye is red and swollen. And Ryan's like, oh my god, that is definitely not a coincidence. And the babysitter is like... Move out of my way. And she moves past both of them, goes and finds the home phone, because I guess her phone was an honor or something, and legitimately calls 911, an ambulance. Which, okay, that was maybe a little excessive, but maybe I wouldn't drive if my eyes were impaired and I thought that they were going to be infected and it would have been bad. And she walks back to the room, and she's, like, angry, but also very clearly in pain, right? And she's like, her hand is over her eye, and she's like, you, like, why would you do that? The Minecraft kid's like, well, I was actually on a 99 win streak, and you pulled the plug, and I lost my 99 win. She's like, and you projectiled all your stuff out of your butt. Oh, God. How can I, how can I have a straight face and tell the story? Anyway, she's like, and you probably gave me a raging infection. My eye burns, like... Uh, if I lose sight, I'm suing your fan. She was getting mad. And eventually, right, the ambulance does come. She explains the ridiculousness of the situation. The guy, uh, she, I mean, she's put, she sits in the ambulance, drives to the hospital. Um, they check her out or whatever. But remember, this is from Ryan's perspective. So we don't exactly know what the doctor says. Ryan's mom, who got really invested in the situation afterwards, said that, like, the doctor's, like, her her eye is fine now. But the doctor said that, like, it really could have gone south if she didn't go there, like, immediately, which is insane. So anyways, right, uh, Ryan and the Minecraft kid are legitimately just... In this house alone, and that's when the Minecraft kid's mom comes back early, super angry and upset, because the babysitter sent a message to, you know, his mom explaining everything and why that she, he, she had to leave the premises immediately. So the Minecraft kid's mom had to leave whatever she was doing to come back, and she was like, walks in, she's like, you, turns to the Minecraft kid, like, you did it, you pulled a... (laughs) You pulled a face fart on someone again. We've already talked about this. 
and Ryan, who is still there, he's already, by the way, he's already texted his mom to come pick him up, um, is just like, again? I mean, he had a sneaking suspicion that this was not a first-time thing, as I said. In the heat of the moment, you don't think to, you know, use your butt as a weapon. But he's like, again? This is a thing? And the Minecraft kid's like, but mom... I was on a 99 Bed Wars win streak. And she's like, that's enough. No more Bed Wars for you forever. And my grip kid's like, ma'am, no, no, mom, I promise I won't fart in anyone else's face again. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Anyways, right, so Ryan's mom comes and Ryan's mom's like, hey, so sorry, things were weird today. Like, I'm just gonna pick Ryan up. Thank you so much for having him over. Ryan, come with me now. And, you know, Ryan walks over and goes in the back seat of the car and Ryan's mom is like, so do you want to elaborate on, I need to pick you up right now. My friend farted in the babysitter's eye and now she's at the hospital. And Ryan did elaborate and it really didn't add any clarity to the situation. In fact, Ryan's mom just became more Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. Today I got a pretty crazy story for you guys. It's about a Minecraft kid that gets so angry and jealous of the subscriber that he actually smashes his computer in front of everyone to get quote-unquote revenge. Uh, don't worry, karma does get him. Uh, but anyway, subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into this. So we're going to call today's subscriber who submitted the story, Brendan. Uh, by the way, if the, if the gameplay for Bed Wars really sucks in the background, I recorded it a month ago. I'm pretty better now. But anyways, we're calling this guy Brendan who submitted this story. So anyways, Brendan was in class or was in the same grade as this kid who we're going to call the Minecraft kid because his entire identity was being a, was kind of like around being super great at Minecraft player versus player battles. He was known as the one who was so great. So anyways, right, people just called him Minecraft kid. But anyways, there's also a girl who we're going to call Haley because uh, that may or may not be the, the girl I'm trying to marry in Stardew Valley right now. I gave her the bouquet. I'm winning, guys. Anyway... Great game, by the way. I should stop getting distracted. Watch time will be bad. Anyways, there's this girl who we're going to call Haley, and both Brendan and the Minecraft kid had an interest in her. The difference was Brendan actually talked to her. Little pro tip for getting the ladies from the Connor Pugs YouTube channel. Number one dating advice YouTube channel on all of YouTube and the internet. Talk to... If you want to get to know them, talk to them. Th yes, believe it or not. Wow. But anyways, right, Brendan actually talked to Haley, and they were getting along pretty well, and the Minecraft kid literally never did. The Minecraft kid thought that his magical and powerful skills at Minecraft would literally just be so great and so wonderful and so enticing to the women, right, that uh, he, would, he wouldn't have to talk to Haley to make her fall in love with him. She would just see his epic PvP Bed Wars abilities, and she would be like, "Oh my God, I'm so I'm not I'm not thrown in that joke. Never mind. I I, I got a family friendly audience on here. I forgot." Anyways, right, so uh, Brendan, w or the Minecraft kid was aware that Brendan was probably also trying to go for Haley because Brendan was talking to her all the time. It kind of the word around the, like, kind of the word on the street was that, you know, Brendan and Haley, oh my god, they're gonna be a thing soon, dude, they're in sixth grade, like, that's, that's how it goes. Oh my god, are they gonna get the fifth base, aka holding hands? Oh my god! It, a anyways, right, so the Minecraft kid comes up to Brendan one day. And remember, Brendan and the Minecraft kid aren't necessarily boys. In fact, they don't even know each other that well. But the Minecraft kid is like, so, I see that you're trying to court Haley. And, and, and Brendan's mind, he's like, bro, this is 20-whatever, right? I think this story was a little old. I'm not sure. I actually don't know when this story happened. It was submitted to me on my Instagram. You can go follow it. You should go follow it. Anyways, Brendan's thinking to himself, did this guy just say court? Like, it's literally the 21st century. Are you serious? And then the Minecraft kid goes on to say, I offer you, like, I offer you, like, a quest, or I, 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 I ask you that we duel in Minecraft to decide who will get Haley's hand in dating. And, uh, I mean, Brendan was kind of just like, in his head, he's like, all right, well, first of all, I'm not dating her. Second of all, the winner of a Minecraft PvP battle is not going to decide who she decides, right? It's not up to them. This isn't, like, I don't know, the barbaric era of, like, oh, yeah, like, uh, 
I actually have, like, all men have control, women have no say. Like, oh, I want to marry you, so you're marrying me. And also, I don't think there ever was an era where you did PvP battles to decide who was, like, you know, who would marry the girl. I'm better at Minecraft, I get all the women. Nah, this, that's never been true. It doesn't matter what parallel universe or anything like that you go into, man. I am sorry, Minecraft sweats. I am so sorry. But Brendan, who kind of knows that, you know, he's going to be getting with Haley anyways, uh, thinks to himself, all right, well, this will be kind of funny, like, whatever, man, who cares? So Brendan says, sure, we'll do a PvP battle to decide who gets Haley's hand. Because he's kind of laughing, he's kind of goofing, but the thing is, the Minecraft kid takes it super seriously. He's like, yes, you fool, don't you know that I am super great at Minecraft? <laughs> and uh, Brendan's like, oh, chill out, bro, like... All right, all right, yeah, we'll, we'll PvP fight to, to, to decide who gets Haley's hand in marriage. Lol, like, okay. So sure enough, the Minecraft kid is like, all right, tomorrow at recess, we go to the table. Basically, at their school, there was a table where if kids wanted to bring in their computers, if they were in the sixth grade or higher, they could, and they could play on them. I, I, I know at my school, you weren't even allowed to have your phone out, but I guess each school's a little different. So basically, right, the next day rolls around, and Brendan and the Minecraft kid, they both bring their gaming setups, which I guess both of them have laptops, because I play Minecraft on a laptop, man. I don't have a, I don't have a desktop. That's I want to be able to move my thing around. But anyways, right, they both bring in their computers, and Brendan just has a kind of a crappy MacBook Air. And this is coming from someone who, uh, up to my first 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, I got all my Minecraft gameplay from my MacBook Air at like 20 frames per second. So I understand the struggle, bro. I get it. So anyways, Brendan comes in with his crappy MacBook Air, and the Minecraft kid comes in with his like, uh, I don't know, his Alienware $3,000 super gaming laptop with his uh, super fancy keyboard and it takes him like five minutes to get his setup all perfect. He's like, all right, I'm ready. And uh, so sure enough, uh, you know, they both sit down and Brendan is like, all right, so how are we doing this? And uh, the Minecraft kid is like, all right, we're going to play one game of, uh, of, of Bed Wars. Uh, yeah, Bed Wars. And, you know, Brent, at first Brendan was like, bro, how are we going to do that? But then the Minecraft kid said that he had the like MVP++ rank on Hypixel, which Hypixel is a server that lets you play Bed Wars, which is the game I was playing in the very beginning. And if you have plus like MVP++, you can make private games where it's just you and your friends. So anyways, um, the Minecraft kid, you know, sent a dual request to Brendan or a Bed Wars party, whatever. Anyways, all you got to know is they were playing Minecraft and they were playing Bed Wars and it was just them. It was just Brendan and the Minecraft kid in a game. And uh, sure enough, they enter the Bed Wars game and, you know, they, you know, they're doing the stuff you do in Bed Wars, put down the bed defense. And you know what happens? Um, uh, Brendan is at middle. He's gathering emeralds, which is a good material to get. However, you know, his bed was exposed or he wasn't at his bed. He saw a bed destroyed message, which basically means in Bed Wars, if your bed breaks, you will not respawn. So sure enough, the Minecraft kid had like, I don't know, God bridged over with his crazy 10,000 clicks per second mouse, definitely using vape or something, but whatever, man. And so sure enough, you know, the, the Minecraft kid comes to middle and Brendan and him, they show down for a PvP fight. They're going to decide who gets Haley, even though Brendan knows that one, he's not good at Minecraft and the Minecraft kid is, and two, this will not decide who gets Haley. This is hilarious. He just did it because it's funny, lol. So anyways, they enter their PvP battle, and they go in, and Brendan loses because he is just simply worse. And the Minecraft kid, after, you know, hitting, you know, Brendan enough times with a sword that he dies, is like, yes, Haley is mine! And everyone, because remember, it's recess time, because, dude, they had like, re I don't know if it's called recess, but they had like a break period. Um, so everyone was kind of around there and a bunch of kids turn around and are kind of like, uh, what, 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 huh? It, 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 are, are you okay, sir? And sure enough, the Minecraft kid is like, you fool, you should never have dueled me for Haley's hand in dating in Minecraft. You should have known by my reputation that I would have absolutely slapped you. And Brendan looks at him with his face of like, yeah, man. Ah, that sucks. Wow. That is just too bad. 
This kind of reminds me of the first season of Parks and Rec, if you saw that, where uh, this isn't really a spoiler, but uh, Andy really wants to get his girlfriend back, so he like offers like a, a pool game with this guy named Mark, who disappears after season one. I, I don't know, maybe the actor wanted to do something else, and he's kind of like, oh yeah, I'll bet Anne, the, the girlfriend of Mark at the time, on this pool game, and Andy wins. He's like, yes, she's mine, but uh, reality sits uh, kind of kicks in, and he's like, wait, Huh? But I won her fair and square. Same thing here. So the Minecraft kid is still like, I don't know, Fortnite, uh, W, like, de- doing the little dances, doing the L dance, doing the little other cringe stuff. He's like, hey, Haley is mine. I didn't even have to talk to her, and she's gonna be my girlfriend. I'm gonna go to 10th base and hold her hand. <laughs> and, and Brandon, at this point, is, like, really trying to hold back a smile. He's like, all right, this is so funny, dude. Don't blow it. Don't make it apparent. Uh, and he's like, yeah, man, you totally, oh, man, I can't do this. I, you totally won. You to- I can't do this. Man. He's, just, he's, he's really trying to do it. He's like, yeah, you totally won Haley's hand in, in dating because you beat me in Minecraft. Yep, that's totally what happened. Holding back the laughter, holding back the tears at this point. And uh, sure enough, right, Brendan's like, all right, man, go ahead. And he's like, yes. I'm I'm gonna tell everyone about my victory dance so that you know that so everyone knows that you lost to me in Minecraft and that's why Haley is mine. <laughs> the Minecraft kid runs away uh, to go tell his other okay friends. Well, I don't know about that. I think his friends are uh, his Bed Wars win streak and, and nothing else. But whatever, right? So Brendan goes over and finds Haley. Says, "Hey, um, so I just played this guy because he wanted to duel me for your hand in dating." And Haley's like what? And Brennan's like, yeah, I thought it'd be funny. So by the way, I lost the duel because obviously you can't do that, but I thought it was funny and I lost. So he's going to come over to claim his prize, I guess. And Haley's like, all right, well, this is kind of funny, but this is an awkward situation. And Brennan's like, yeah, I probably should have told you about this beforehand. If you need me to be here, I can, I can subvert. I I can come in and uh, help you with the situation. He's like, she's like, all right, well, Thanks for giving me context, I guess. So sure enough, a little while later, uh, the Minecraft kid comes around and he finds Haley. And he comes up to her and he says, So, Haley, did you hear the news? This might be the first time the Minecraft kid ever spoke to Haley in his life. He was too busy. He was too busy sweating at Minecraft to even bother with the ladies. They'll come to me, man. I got a Bed Wars win streak. Uh, Real quick, comment Bed Wars down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. If you want to help the channel out, go ahead and binge watch some more videos after this one or when you're doing something else. And let me know in the comment section if you do so, so I can say thank you. Anyways, right, so the Minecraft kid's like, so did Haley, did you hear the news? And she's like, well, I was told that you and Brendan had a little Minecraft video game session and that you won and that you now think that I'm your girlfriend. And the Minecraft kid's like, mm. That is exactly what happened. You're so observant. You'll be a great girlfriend. And Haley's like, dude, like, that's not how it works. And the Minecraft kid's like, we had an agreement. And Haley's like, yeah, well, I wasn't part of that agreement. Uh, how, do you think Brendan or you have the right to me as a girlfriend? And this is with the Minecraft kid starting to piece together that his offer to duel Brendan made literally no sense. And he's like, oh, well, um, so, so when we were playing... So, when we're playing Minecraft, I beat Brendan. Uh, can you, can, do you want to be my girl? And then eventually, like, Minecraft kid starts to realize, ah, oh, dude, he messed up, bro. He messed up big time. And he's like, wait, did, did Brent? How, wait, how, who told you? And, you know, at this point, uh, you know, she was like, Haley was like, yeah, so Brendan told me about this. And then the Minecraft kid's like, so Brendan knew the whole time? That this wasn't going to work? And Haley's like, yeah, well, anyone who is logical, middle, just gets cut off the Minecraft kid, sprints away. And Brennan walks up to Haley and is like, so, is that terrible? And Haley's like, well, he's pretty mad at you, and he ran away, so I don't know what he's cooking up. And that's when you, we heard an, or not we, that's when Brendan and Haley and everyone else in the room heard a noise. The noise was something being thrown on the ground, smashing and flying into a million pieces. And that's when Brendan walks out and Haley walks out too. Basically, everyone walks out and they see the Minecraft kid standing above a pile of disc computer parts. 
And that's when, at first, Brendan thinks, oh my god, he smashed his computer out of rage. But Brendan looked at the table to see that the Minecraft kid's computer was still there. And in fact, the only computer missing was his. And that's when he realized that the Minecraft kid obliterated his MacBook. And there was a teacher present. So the teacher is like, Brad, like Minecraft kid, like, what did you just do? And Brendan speaks up and says, uh, he just smashed my MacBook. And all of a sudden, the teacher looks at Brendan and looks at the Minecraft kid and says, you two, come with me. Sure enough, teacher brings him to the principal's office. Principal's office hears what the teacher says. She hears both sides, which the Minecraft kid literally has nothing to say. Like, what are you going to say, dude? And uh, yeah, parents were called, and uh, the Minecraft kid's mom had to reimburse Brendan's mom for the, to buy a new computer. Uh, the Minecraft kid had to write a formal apology to Brendan, and also write a formal, ap and actually both of them had to write a formal apology to Haley because Brendan had to explain the situation, and the teacher's like, dude, that's not cool. And uh, also the Minecraft kid got a week of detention for this. So moral of the story is one, if you're just playing Minecraft all day, you may not, uh, that may not be the most ideal or most optimal strategy to, uh, to get the ladies to love you. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, man. May maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Don't listen to me. I don't know. <laughs> okay. How do I introduce a story like this, man? I mean, you guys can read. You've read the title. All I can say is strap in, d uh, buckle up, because uh, this is going to be quite, quite the ride. Subscribe if you're new and you enjoy stories. And let's call today's subscriber who submitted this. Uh, let's call this guy Mason. So this all happened one day when Mason was in class. And Mason was in fourth grade when this whole thing went down. And there's a kid who, once again, kind of like wore the same Creeper shirt every single day. And it was like the Creeper hoodie. And really, that's not a big deal. They're like, if you want to wear the Creeper hoodie, I don't really care. However, the mine we're just going to call him the Minecraft kid, right? Because of the Creeper hoodie. Uh, he wore it every single day. Um, and um, maybe, maybe, right? Maybe he has a closet full of like 18 different varieties of the Creeper hoodie. Or maybe his mom does a load of laundry every single day. Or maybe he's just wearing the same Creeper hoodie every single day. I mean, you guys can believe whatever you want, but I think one of those three are a little bit more uh, likely uh, than the other. But anyways, right, so there's this kid called the Minecraft kid because he wore the Creeper hoodie every single day. And he was a little bit strange. And there's nothing wrong with you being a little bit strange. Like, I'm a little bit strange. I mean, I run an app. I run a YouTube channel, man. I mean, that's that's already putting me in the strange category, unfortunately. But hey, man, I love the YouTube too much to like drop it or anything like that. But sure enough, this all happened one day when the Minecraft kid was in class with Mason. And the Minecraft kid raised his hand. And another thing you need to know about the Minecraft kid is he would take bathroom breaks like six times per class. And I don't know about you, but back in the day, I definitely used to go to the bathroom to like go on my phone or just take a break from the class. However, I would be very like a strategic with it. I wouldn't do it every single day. I do it like every other day. I would make sure that I wasn't away for too, too long, like maybe five minutes max. But this kid, bro, would just abuse the bathroom break button. He was like spamming it, just try to like, I, I don't know, man. But every single day, I'd go to the bathroom, minimum two times, maximum like six times. That's what I'm told at least. And uh, sure enough, uh, you know, once again, one day, the Minecraft kid raises his hand for the third time in class. And this has been going on for months. And I just think at this point, the teacher kind of just snapped. And he looks at the Minecraft kid. He's like, yes. And the Minecraft kid says, hey, can I go to the bathroom? And, it, and here's the thing, right? The teacher should not have reacted in the way that he reacted because maybe this kid has like IBS or something. Maybe he has to go to the bathroom like a ton per day. However, if he did, it was not registered with the nurse or even if it was, the nurse did not communicate that properly to the teacher, um, which she probably should have or he probably should have just because, you know, I, I don't know. If a kid's going to the bathroom seven times per day, that might be a little suspicious to the teacher. However, the teacher was kind of just assuming that the kid was just going in to like go on his phone or whatever. And and that was probably the case, but I mean, you really don't know. But after the Minecraft kid says like, hey, can I go to the bathroom for like the third time? Uh, the teacher's like, y you know what? No, you can't go to the bathroom. And the whole class kind of turns around and is like, wait, whoa, 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 pause. Like, hold up now. Like this kid's been asking to go to the bathroom like seven times a day for the last six months. And now you're saying no? Like what changed, man? And the teacher's like, 
you're gonna have to wait till the end of class. You've been going way too much, way too often. Uh, I think you're missing too much of classwork, right? And the Minecraft kid was not happy to hear this. Uh, for all we know, maybe he actually did have to go to the bathroom, but Mason, to be fair, right? Mason has gone to the bathroom. He's the subscriber who submitted this story. He's gone to the bathroom t at times when the Minecraft kid has been th in there. And Mason can hear the volume from his iPhone up all the way. The Minecraft kid is in there playing like Flappy Bird or watching TikToks or whatever, man. He's just going on his phone. Maybe he also has to go to the bathroom, but the Minecraft kid obviously definitely was kind of like, most likely was abusing it just to go to the bathroom. But sure enough, the Minecraft kid raises his hand again. He's like, I gotta go. And the teacher says, like Minecraft kid, you've gone like six times during class, every single day for the last six months. You're missing out on class time. Please try and like conserve your like bathroom breaks. I will let you go, but just give it a second. I, I just can't let you go and disrupt the class like a thousand times every single day. And the Minecraft kid was getting kind of angry and he didn't say anything. He wasn't like, no, I really gotta go. And the Minecraft kid also didn't just stand up. Unfortunately, I think the Minecraft kid watched a little bit too much uh, South Park. If you guys know what I'm talking about, there's an episode of South Park, which is a TV show, kind of aimed for adults, so I wouldn't go search this up if you're too young, but there's this kid named Cartman. And one time, Cartman needed to uh, basically go to the principal's office, so he decided to do number two on the desk of a teacher. And I think the Minecraft kid got a little bit too inspired by Cartman, because the Minecraft kid is like, you're gonna want, like... I need to go to the bathroom and you're gonna regret it if you don't let me. And the teacher kind of turns around kind of sharply and looks at him and says like, you shouldn't be threatening people. Like that's, that's a very bad thing to do. Like you shouldn't be doing that. He said, you know what? Just because you're threatening me and said in such a threatening voice, you're not allowed to go to the bathroom for the rest of the class. And this only made the Minecraft kid even more upset. And Mason is just sitting here watching this back and forth. And Mason kind of feels a little bit for the Minecraft kid because maybe he really needs to go. Maybe the first two times, yeah, I mean, it is kind of karma if you were just going to the bathroom six times per day just to go on your phone. However, right, I mean, maybe he really has to go, man. It's kind of cruel to like not let someone go to the bathroom when they really need to. But he did just go like five minutes ago and 10 minutes before that. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, right. You know, Mason was sitting there. And the Minecraft kid raises his hand for a final time and says, you're going to let me grow, go or you're going to regret this. And once again, the, Minecraft, the teacher is like, if you threaten me again, you're not going to be allowed to go to the bathroom ever again when you're in my class. And at this point, the whole class is like, oh. I don't know if they're actually like hyping up like that, but things were getting legit and they could feel it for sure. They're like, oh, dang, dude, like stuff's getting real, right? And sure enough, the Minecraft kid says, very well, have it your way. The teacher kind of like has a little bit of a smile, but quickly brushes it off, probably because he felt like he won that discussion. Like, all right, well, this kid who's been abusing the bathroom system has lost and I won as a teacher and I asserted my dominance. However, right, dominance was not asserted. In fact, uh, it, I don't even know how to explain what's about to happen, so I'm going to do my best. Uh, bear with me. Because the Minecraft kid, it, he, 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 he kind of like stands up. And the teacher is currently facing the board, so the teacher doesn't notice the Minecraft kid stand up. However, Mason, the subscriber who submitted this story, as well as a bunch of other people, by the way, Mason submitted this to my Instagram. It's in the description. You should go follow it, even if you're not going to go submit stories. Uh, give me a big number and make me feel good. Anyways, Mason is watching this whole thing go down, and he sees that the Minecraft kid stands up from his desk. And then the Minecraft kid stands on his chair. And then, then the Minecraft kid stands on his desk. And at this point, almost half the class has turned around watching the Minecraft kid because he's making enough of a commotion. And the next, uh, YouTube, please be nice. YouTube, YouTube man, I'm going to describe the next thing without making you mad. Uh, so the Minecraft kid, well, he drops his pants. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, he drops his pants. And he says, teacher, and the teacher turns around and is about to be like Minecraft kid for the last time. And he turns around and is like, what? <sighs> what the, uh, huh? And the Minecraft kid is like, teacher, I told you, you, I told you, you would regret not letting me go to the bathroom. And uh, just to put it very, uh, just to be point blank, just to be straight up, just, like, just getting right to the point. Uh, yeah, he just, n number two uh, 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 on the desk, man.
it, it wasn't like anything crazy, right? It was pretty, just a little bit, but yeah. Um, and everyone in the class starts like screaming. Like some of the girls are like, ah! some of the guys are like, yo, what? That's disgusting, dude. And the teacher's like, Minecraft kid. What on earth are you doing? And the Minecraft kid's like, I told you, you should let me go to the bathroom, dude. Now you're just paying the consequences. The Minecraft kid was like feeling all full of himself. And the teacher was like, D -d -d go to the principal's office now. And I don't think the Minecraft kid totally like, you know, realized what was going on. And the Minecraft kid starts to panic. And the Minecraft kid looks to his left and looks to his right. And when the Minecraft kid looks to his right, you know who he sees? He sees the subscriber. He sees Mason. And he makes eye contact with Mason. And Mason is looking directly at the Minecraft kid and is thinking to himself, oh my God, oh my God, what? wow. But then he's like, wait, why is this kid making eye contact with me? And he's like, Mason made me do it. He dared me. And the teacher's like, Mason, Mason's just like, dude, I swear I was just sitting here. What do you mean? And, and the teacher's like, you know what? No, what? You know what? Minecraft kid, Mason, and anyone else involved, go to the principal's office right now. And Mason is just like, why, why, why? So he gets up and because he's not going to like fight with his teacher when the teacher's literally going through a massive rage moment. And, uh, you know, he starts walking up and he walks up to the Minecraft kid. He's like, dude, I don't even know who you are. The Minecraft kid's like, just doesn't say anything. So he walks up to the principal's office and he sits down and the principal's off. The principal's like, what happened? And Mason explains the side of the story that he was just a, like a bystander sitting there. And then, you know, eventually the Minecraft kid walks in because uh, he had to, I mean, it wasn't like he could, okay, I'm not going to explain why it took him longer, but he got there, right? And sure enough, the principal's like, Minecraft kid, why would you do that? And the Minecraft kid's like, explains aside, and then she's like, and why is Mason here? And the Minecraft kid, who kind of panic blamed him to kind of like lesser the punishment on him, is like, um, Mason dared me to do it. And Mason's like, dude, I don't even know who you are. You're just in my class. And the principal's like, I don't know, Mason, why would he lie about this? Like, there's literally nothing for him to gain. And Mason's like, dude, I don't know. Uh, real quick, comment Minecraft down below if you want to harden your comment. That will be the secret word of the day. And I'll try and harden as many of those comments as possible. And also, if you want to help us get to 600,000 faster, uh, binge watch the videos. YouTube really likes promoting my channels when you guys like binge watch a bunch of my videos. So after this video, or when you have the time to sit down and watch a bunch of videos, I've made playlists. You can just like go to my channel page and let me know in the comments when you do this so I can heart it and say thank you and just give a little bit of appreciation for you guys really helping me out and I really do appreciate it. Anyways, the story gets even more insane, so stay tuned. So anyways, right, back to the story. Mason is in a position where he was just dragged into this. Honestly, Mason to this day doesn't totally understand why the Minecraft kid even singled him out. Mason and the Minecraft kid weren't close friends. They didn't even really know each other. And Mason just assumes that he randomly looked around and picked someone who he just happened to remember the name of and blamed them just to kind of like lesser the punishment on him. In his mind, or I guess in his panic, the idea was like, oh, if I blame someone else and say that they forced me to do it, my punishment will be lesser, right? Which is like, bro, why? Why would you do that? But anyways, sure enough, the principal, unfortunately, is not believing Mason because Mason is explaining that he doesn't even know this kid and he has no idea why he would lie. And uh, the principal kind of doesn't believe him because he's like, Mason, like, if like, why would the Minecraft kid lie about this, right? It just doesn't make any sense. And the principal's like, well, I guess I just have to make a judgment call in this situation and Mason, I'm sorry, but you know, I'm going to have to give you a punishment too because I don't believe you. And Mason is just like, what? Are, are you serious? And then Mason said, even if I did like dare him to do something ridiculous, it's still up to him. Like I didn't for the record. And I stand by that because I don't even know this kid. But if someone was to, why, why would that even matter? And the principal's like, so you're admitting it. And Mason's like, no, I'm just saying it'd be stupid even if I did. But it's double stupid because I didn't even do it. And the principal's like, don't say stupid to me. Mason's like, I'm in fourth grade. And also this is double stupid. What can I say? So eventually, right, the principal's like, all right, well, I'm going to have to call both your mothers and explain what happened. And Mason's just like, dude, this is the most ridiculous day of my life. 
So sure enough, the principal calls up both their mothers saying, hey, both your sons got in trouble. If you're not busy, can you please come in? And the Minecraft kid's mom was busy at the time, but Mason's mom kind of either had the day off or for some reason wasn't really needing to like be wherever she was. And she said, yeah, I'll come in right away. Maybe she was busy and she thought that this was a good idea to go see like what happened to her son. So Mason's mom comes in and she's like, looks at Mason with this look of like, what have you done? And Mason looks at her with these like eyes of like, bro, I don't know what's going on, confusion, whatever, right? And the principal is like, all right, hi, Miss Mason's mom, or, you know, whatever. Uh, well, I'm so glad you could come. And the principal explains what happened. And then she kind of explains how she doesn't believe Mason. And Mason's mom started with a look of concern, and then she almost got a look of like annoyance. And the look of annoyance grew and grew the more the principal told the story. And Mason was looking at this and was like, okay, is my mom on my side or is the look of annoyance because she's so annoyed with me? Either way, ah, uh, this, is, this, this is just the worst situation ever. So sure enough, right, you know, by the end of the story, Mason's mom's like, uh, why am I here? And the principal's like, well, didn't you hear like your son, uh, you know, uh, uh, supposedly dared him to do it. And Mason's mom, like, first of all, my son disagrees with that statement. You don't really have any proof, but let's say he even did. Why would that matter? And the principal kind of was a little shocked. And Mason's mom's like, you know, isn't it like a, like a cliche saying for parents to be like, if your friend jumped off a bridge, would you as well? Like, are you really just supposed to do whatever the popular kid does? And then Mason's mom's like, even if my son did, which I'm not convinced he did, dared him to do what he did on the desk, right? Why is that my son's fault? Is this kid not, like, able to function by himself? What, you know, like, is the blame 100% not on, you know, the Minecraft kid anymore? Is any of the blame really supposed to be on my son? And the principal's like, well, I'm sorry you feel this way, but I've made up my mind. Like, your son's going to be suspended for the day. He can come back tomorrow, but he can't be, he can't come back today. And the, and the Mason's mom is like, are you serious? Like, Really? And she's like, yeah. And then Mason's mom's like, all right, what punishment did the Minecraft kid get? And the principal said, well, we're doing equal punishment. And Mason's mom's like, you can't be serious, man. You can't be serious. And the principal's like, I'm sorry you disagree, but this is the punishment. So Mason's mom's like, Mason, come with me. And Mason's like, oh, I can't tell if my mom's mad or not. So Mason gets up kind of all scared or whatever, and he sits in the car. And Mason's mom's like, well, this was unexpected, but uh, Mason... Today, you got a day off. It is your vacation day because that punishment is ridiculous. And then she, and Mason's like, okay, she's on my side. And Mason's mom is like, Mason, please be honest. Did you even, did you, did you dare him to do it? And Mason's like, mom, pro I promise. Since, uh, look, it looks like you're not angry at me either way. Why would I lie about this? Because and I didn't do it. I don't even know who this kid is. Why would I dare him to do something so ridiculous? Mason's mom's like, yeah, that's what I thought. But even if you did, like, who cares? And this punishment's ridiculous. So you and I, we're going to get ice cream. Because today, you learned a very good lesson. Sometimes there are rules that are ridiculous, and you'll be punished. But stay true to your convictions, man. Stay true to your convictions. So Mason and his mom went and got ice cream. And uh, I don't think the Minecraft's my kid, the Minecraft kid's mom was as excited <laughs> or, is, or is pleased with her son. But click on the video man. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Buckle up, strap in, because today I have probably one of the weirdest camp stories I've ever received that involves a very creepy Minecraft girl that threatens to literally consume, like eat, like nom nom munch time, the subscriber. Yeah, it makes literally no sense. It's super weird. So yeah, strap in, uh, subscribe if you like stories. Let's call today's subscriber who submitted this story. Let's call him Jimmy. So this all happened over the summer, and this was Jimmy's first time ever going to a sleepaway camp. And this specific sleepaway camp was like a wilderness-themed sleepaway camp. They're very popular if you've never been to sleepaway camp, where basically you go and you learn how to kind of like survive on your own. I mean, not really, but it's like kind of like you're cosplaying as someone who would survive on their own, but you're not really. Anyway, so this all happens about on the first, second day of sleepaway camp. Because the first day, you know, Jimmy's mom dropped him off and it's like introductions and all that good stuff. But on the second day, what they did at this camp is they just like threw you, they threw you right into it, right? So on the second day of camp, uh, they kind of divided you up into mini groups randomly, not by your cabin. They wanted to mix you up like with people that you don't see normally. And this was your camp group. And basically on that second day, you were to go and you were to like bring all the camping like equipment 
equipment, not go too far away from the campsite, but uh, go basically into the woods, which they've kind of spotted out before to make sure it's like a viable place. And you go into the woods and you set up camp and you stay the night, kind of just to throw you right into it. So anyways, Jimmy hears his name read aloud and then he hears the name of a bunch of other people that he doesn't re- that he just doesn't recognize because, you know, he's new to the camp and basically everyone there is going alone. And so he walks over because they're all in this big field, right? And he walks over to meet his group and he meets up with his group and he kind of like scans around and everyone looks pretty normal except there's this one girl who Jimmy really didn't think much of, but she had this creeper sweatshirt on and she also had in her backpack a foam diamond pickaxe. Like, you know how like in Minecraft there's a diamond pickaxe? Uh, Basically, you can buy like a replica of that that's like foam and plastic or whatever. And that was the two kind of like weird weird things, right? And she also had, like, some other stuff, like, she had some crazy socks on, she had the, like, the black boots, but that's kind of standard. What really set her apart was the fact that she was wearing the creeper hoodie and had the big Minecraft fake diamond pickaxe in her back pocket, right? Or in her backpack. And that wasn't what made her weird, but that's why we're calling her the Minecraft girl, because, you know, she wore the creeper hoodie or whatever. And so anyways, right, uh, they're walking, so they start walking towards the campsite, or the the wilderness, right? Uh, So they walk over to the wilderness, and the first thing that they do is, since it's kind of getting close to the middle of the day, is they've all brought, like, a big, like, uh, some kind of, like, portable tent with them. They were given one before they left, and then they were to kind of carry it over there. It was kind of difficult to carry, but that was kind of part of the whole, that was kind of the part of the whole shebang. And so sure enough, right, eventually they get to the campsite and uh, the instructor's like, all right, guys, try and find a clearing that is, uh, you know, pretty, that is clear, find a, find a clearing that's clear, but uh, try and find an area that's not too, you know, mucked up with uh, sticks and rocks and stones and brush and stuff that would make it difficult to have your five foot by five foot campsite kind of like your, or your tent, like be able to you know, be placed, basically find a place that's good for your tent is what I'm trying to say with a billion words instead of two. Um, and so sure enough, you know, Jimmy finds a spot and there's kind of like a big opening or kind of not a big opening, but there's kind of a clearing where it is still covered more or less by the forest. However, it is good to put some tents down. So Jimmy uh, kind of like puts his tent down there. There's only really about enough space for another tent. And so the Minecraft girl immediately rushes over and puts her stuff down before anyone else could. And there was a few other people kind of casually, nonchalantly walking over to that site. But the Minecraft girl was very insistent that she was the one that put her uh, her tent down. And Jimmy thought that was a little weird. But then again, Jimmy kind of just brushed it off as like, oh, whatever, like... I mean, that's probably pretty normal. She saw a site that she wanted, so she wanted to claim it, and she knew other people were going for it. Little did Jimmy know that the Minecraft girl did not care that there was an 